Welcome back, everybody, to Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts. I'm from Grandpa Gaming, and this is episode two of our Japanese Empire livestream campaign. So I get a few minutes early because I see a few of you guys in chat. Riley, Hank, Josh, Rainey. How are we all doing this evening? What are you guys all been chatting about behind my back over here? Everybody in my fleet's got scurvy because I don't issue lemon rations, only give whiskey. <laughs> All right, we'll give it uh, three more minutes before we get this going, see if anybody else wants to join us. About to put the screws to a freighter and... Oh, you're playing some U-boat right now. Okay. <laughs> So I haven't tried that game. I really don't think it's my would be my cup of tea. Hopefully you have a successful hunt going on. All right, so uh, last episode, we've only advanced to 1897, and we are still at war with the Soviet Union, and we just started a war with Spain, or they started one with us. can't remember which. <laughs> it's been a week, and I didn't write anything down. So my handwriting gets kind of sloppy the later these uh, streams go, if you understand. All right, we have... Two active light cruisers, 56 torpedo boats, one building, light cruiser, two more torpedo boats building, two in repair, and three light cruisers in repair. Okay. Take a look at the fleet real fast. So the Marilyn Monroe, the Kathy Ireland, and the Betty White are all repairing. And the Voluptuous 2 is being built to replace the Lost Voluptuous. All right. A bit more arcadey than you're used to, but that can be mitigated. Uh, most is it, So it's kind of like uh, some of the uh, earlier uh, earlier U-Boat uh, games that came out. We do have a battle here. What we got? The Jenna Jameson... Light cruiser against the uh, heavy cruiser San Cristobal, which is the same weight as Jenna Jameson, so this should be uh, pretty easy. <laughs> Sonar ball, how are we doing this evening? Let's go jump into this one real fast. Nice little light fight to get the evening going. Time to pour some battle brew. Tonight's selection is Angel's Envy finished rye. I like myself some uh, straight rye. Ooh, that's got a very sweet smell to it. Hopefully it's as good as it smells considering it's a $90 bottle. Doing fine now. I'm out of work. Blew off some stress playing some Crusader Kings, conquering Ireland. I just gotta let this uh, rye air for a minute before I give it a sip. What do I have this arm with? Five inches and three inch casemates. Okay. I 
was enough to never be done. Do all the calculations for a torpedo is a click of a button. Huh. Apple Grove finally left the hospitality ship. I had to be fished out of the war after having too much whiskey. <laughs> A little too stern the Vec. I haven't played that game in forever. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the last update just came out, so it's going to be a while before the mods catch up. X5, where are you? This way, apparently. I tell you what, I'm enjoying the new uh, the Legends DLC. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, the Legends is a whole new system, so I'm not sure how much they'd have to change. I, I'm not a modder, so... We're near each other, but where the hell is he? I hope we don't sail past each other. On a clear day like this, but everybody's got old ships, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, we might not find them. Because we popped down to X5, now we're back up to X10, so we passed each other, I think. I'm going to be pissed if our first battle we don't actually engage. Yeah, we went past each other. Rainy day again coming with the memberships. Thank you. You were too too generous, my friend. Brian Corkill, the Wing to Sar, Mackenzie Boyd. I don't know what <laughs> what I doing in uh, Yi Chen Lee. Welcome to the grunts. I swear, Rainy Day, you make it rain memberships every stream. Yeah, we went right past each other at some point. Where is he? This is what happens until you get RDF. You gotta do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> oh god. Oh, you too, sonar ball. <laughs> yeah, we kinda sailed past each other. Yeah, we'll end this. We're not gonna find each other. We'll just end that. Get an Ursa drunk. <laughs> Thank you, Sonar Ball. You too. Van 83, the meat cutter, Opal, Kawiki, Zalas Stash. Welcome to the Grunts. And uh, Sven Venker and Van 83. I think we've actually just handed out more memberships than people are viewing right now. <laughs> Time to take a sip of this rye. Hmm. Smells sweet. Definitely got a taste of a Caribbean cask on it. 
a little spicy. Yeah, I could definitely taste a little bit of rum in there. That's that's really good. Randy makes it. Oh God! <laughs> it's ready to get from the six twenty first Suvorov order red banner ground attack. <laughs> it looks like it's it for this turn. Anybody else looking to go? Nobody else is looking to go to war with us, thankfully, except for maybe Italy for some reason. China again. All right, let's advance these turns. I got to get this war score up with Russia so I can at least grab one of the Sakhalins. We don't have the tonnage to invade because I only have to light cruisers until 1900. Getting ready for EU five. Actually, I'm not. I've never really been a big fan of the uh, of that game series, to be honest with you. Would you like to order two Nintendo class torpedo boats? Yes, I'll sell those to you. How much is now? We might be able to grab it right now. It'd be nice if we can grab both South and North Sakhalin. Korsakov's a big port. Petrovlovsk, that's also a big port. And Kamchatka is worth more right now, though the Sakhalin Islands become way more valuable later on. Krieg, how are we doing this evening? Oh, we didn't get too crazy last time. We we haven't got we really haven't gotten into the holes where I can get uh crazy while I'm drunk. Kind of stuck with the other uh, early designs still. Yeah, I understand them. I just was never really able to get into them to be honest. It was just they just never were for me. And I love grand strategy games. I was just never into them. Everything's rebuilt. Where do I actually have my two fleets based out of? So Sabo and I gotta write this down. Too many notes on my desk. All right, IJN ports. So Sabo. Well, Naha is going to have the main fleet. Second fleet. Yes, a Sabo. All right. So I don't forget where I have everything. And I was sober when I put those together, Josh. I don't, I'm happy with that heavy cruiser. That thing is, no one else is fielding a heavy cruiser like that right now. That thing is going to be dangerous when it hits the water. Well, with this, with this series, uh, whatever you throw out there, I'll put in. Uh, right now, the light cruisers are all named after voluptuous actresses. Uh, but if you want to name one of the torpedo boats right now, I can give you that one of those. And the uh, the new series is Nintendo Class. True, but it's better to see them live. Might look as I'm playing Warhammer 3 with a bunch of cool dudes. Okay. Can't play... Can't play those games anymore. They've gotten a 
little too arcadey for me. Yeah, that thing's a pocket battleship, Josh. That's exactly what it is. So this is the next turn, and I'm gonna go out hunting these Russian ships. We do have a convoy action, okay. Where's my chat at? There we go, that should fix that. I knew I was missing some comments. It went for some reason it was that top chat again instead of live chat. Christine Jorgensen. I'll add her to the list. This is a voluptuous class names. I got like 10 sheets of yellow sticky pad notes here, all for different things. There it is. All right. Masses of dissatisfied pacifists. Yeah, we're just going to disperse them. And Greece would like to order two Crayon Eater class torpedo boats. There's your class of ships, Riley. <laughs> People are still ordering those. And that convoy mission went away. Okay. Another five memberships rainy day? Come on, man. <laughs> I think you can wait till a little later and stream. <laughs> Thank you very much. SRW Gamer. Uh, no idea what language that is. Straight to 1235. Pablo Vera, Andrew A. Welcome to the grunts. This is this is why I wait to the end of the month to update the uh the credits for channel memberships. Otherwise, I'd be changing it every damn day. <laughs> You're both the nice ones, Sonarball. It's 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 not it's not a <laughs> it's not a competition. Jeez. Thank you, Sonarball. Mazza Adza, Koi Tron, Christoph, Connor, Merciful Scotch. Ooh, I like that name. Welcome to the Grunts. We get Okay, guys, you can, you can ease up on the gas now. You, you've handed out more memberships than we actually have people watching right now. <laughs> we got 10 people watching right now. And you guys have handed out 20 memberships. <laughs> now let's see if we can catch this fleet. Oh, they're heading out to over here. Let's see if we can catch them with the Betty White, Kathy Island, and the Marilyn Monroe. Oh, they're moving everybody over there. This may not be a good idea on my part. Now it's a torpedo boat. Two battleships, five heavy cruisers, five light cruisers, five torpedo boats. Okay, I got to move the Naha fleet up there too. I'm only sending the light cruisers in. I'm not sending any of the torpedo boats. <laughs> excuse to excuse to support your favorite YouTuber. Thank you for that. Pedal to the metal, full gas. Speaking of which, I didn't bring this up during any of my weekly videos. If you're a returning viewer and you've not yet subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button. My returning viewers are now reaching almost 50%. So 
So uh, if you're coming back for uh, seconds on the videos, uh, think about hitting that subscribe button. Might be, I should be doing something right if you're coming back. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe I should have brought some torpedo boats with me. Ooh, yeah, I, I should have brought some of the torpedo boats. Five CLs against two battleships, six heavy, five heavy cruisers, five lights, and a number of their torpedo boats. Ah, fuck it, we're going in. <laughs> I also still have the Spanish Navy loitering off to my south somewhere around the Philippines I have to worry about too. Okay, man, how are we doing this evening? Well, we're not fighting Japan right now. We're fighting the Soviet Union and we're fighting the Spanish Empire or what's left of it. I have not fought. Let's put everybody into just one big division. Flank speed, and we're going to head due north. This might be an I or an L. Oh, there they are. I, I've won against bigger fleets with just two with just two light cruisers. I think we'll be fine. Though it's still like early, early technology. Yeah, the Spanish picked a fight with us. I think I'm liking this ride just a little too much. I might have to switch to something else. Uh, because they still control the Philippines at this time, Kim. This, we're still in uh, 1897, so they are still in the Philippines uh, for another... What, five years? Wide. Yeah, I think I would have went over to Fighter Squadron first until I learned how to replay that game. A ground attack in that game it can be a little rough. But you can decide who to give memberships to. Seems like any account. Uh, the way it works is. Uh, YouTube hands out the memberships to subscribers of the channel, even if they're not currently watching. Focus here, and then Jameson, you focus there. Marilyn Monroe, you focus there. Oh, and they are low fuel, too. Last two, Kathy Ireland and Mae West, focus on this ship as it closes the distance. Actually, our aim's not bad right now. Really not too bad. Let's uh, drop down to full speed. Make that aim even better. Have oh, you gone from a rental to home accommodations? Nice.
Figured why not, it'll be more accurate to the Soviet experience if you have no clue and what I'm doing in Crash. Oh, God. <laughs> It wasn't exactly that the U.S. wanted the Philippines. It actually didn't. From the moment the U.S. took over the Philippines, it actually, uh, outside of the southern islands, which were an uprising the whole time, they were trying to release the main islands to their own government, and they didn't want their own government. Like, uh, I can't remember the name of the politician, but there was a Philippine politician who said the, the Filipinos are their own worst enemies because they don't want to have their own government. They, they actually preferred having the Americans in charge. So it wasn't until after World War II they finally decided to have their own government. Yeah, I'd like to see it go to everybody's regularly in my chat, but I don't control that. Yep, and they took it with the Spanish-American War, and... It's one of those things, like I said, the U.S. government didn't want it. You have to remember, this is still a time period where ship captains had as much power as the governments did. So a ship captain showed up like, hey, we just conquered the Philippines and told the government about it. And it's like, uh, crap, we have it now. They tried giving it back and they didn't want it back. They tried giving it to the people of the Philippines and they didn't want it. <laughs> we are ripping these people apart. These are all much, much older designs. And here I was worried about taking only light cruisers into this fight. Hey, Betty White, I'm going to start focusing on this back ship. Really, considering, like I said, the American the American government tried creating a Filipino government to hand it over, and the Filipinos didn't want it. They let them vote on it several times, and they kept voting to stay uh, territory. I mean, we're, one, we're one of the few countries that, when it takes territory, tries to give it away, because we don't want it. Well, yeah, they finally decided after World War II, because America, like America, shows like, yeah, we can't like watch over everything. We're just wrecking this fleet. Like, we're sinking these ships before we even identify them. If we identified that right before it went down, we haven't even identified this one. Could be a heavy ore battleship. They got two battleships in the fleet. That's probably both their battleships. I got it on live chat. So you should be seeing everything unless you have your own filter turned on. Unless you're typing something in YouTube doesn't like. I don't have full control of that. Well, this is the Russian fleet. So these are probably all 1890 designs. Even though these are 1895 designs, they're still better than what the Russians are uh, fielding.
Didn't take us too much longer to finish this fleet off. Because they're all low fuel, too, so they're slow. And we're just able to basically wipe them. Yeah, the Admiralty wanted them. Well, even the Spanish ships in the time period <coughs> were drastically, drastically in poor condition. They had almost, they didn't have enough sailors to man them. They were all in very bad condition. A lot of them didn't even have ammunition. That's over here, torpedo boat. I would very poor range. We'll just get in between them. Speaking of which, let's focus down that torpedo boat before we get close to it. Jenna Jameson, focus there. Marilyn Monroe, focus there. At the Ireland, focus back there. May West, focus over there. What is their torpedo range? Or even shorter than mine, I don't even have a long range on it. They didn't. I mean, at the time it was blamed on them, but explosions like that happened on ships all the time. Because uh, coal would catch fire naturally due to oxygen if it wasn't stored correctly. So. You know, everybody after the war decided, hey, it was probably an accident, but it was a good excuse to go to war. Well, Spain and Austria-Hungary, even though Austria-Hungary was still a new country, I mean, they formed in, what, 1868 they formed? But they never really, like, became anything. He's about to drop on us. Maybe not. Oh, Betty White, focus your fire. Fire in both directions. Crap. There's that torpedo. I knew it was coming. I turn into them. Good shot. Uh, Betty White's about to eat two of them. Just one. Just missed that one barely. What do you get for not paying attention? Well, by the time World War One came around, that the nation was what thirty years old. There's another one. Let's turn away. Speed. We're already moving slow, so there that just that just brought us to a dead stop. I'm not used to seeing that. That's how slow we were moving. Turn those engines back on. That is not someone used to see. Betty White's taking on enough water where she just came to a dead stop. Succession. Focus on the Empress Maria. Uh, we're taking some heavy flooding.
everybody's going downhill right now. Everybody is. I live in New York City, and it's like being back in the 80s all over again right now. It's bad. Seems any government that's run by liberals is turning to crap holes. It's Neptune. I'm not worried about sinking these uh, torpedo boats. I mean, these main ships. We gotta get this battleship. This is what our wars for over 100,000 with the Russians. I'll go for a peace deal with them and focus on the Spanish. Oof. Right over the top. If those volleys had landed, that would have just disintegrated the Betty White. The original Alabama, jeez. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But uh, I think it's time uh, we get off the politics. I do try to keep it off the channel. Taking some hits. And you know what? Jenna Jameson, focus on this torpedo boat. I want that thing gone. It's like someone else without identifying it. Focus on her. Marilyn, you're already focused on the battleship, and the other two can do what they want. Okay, okay. Just the politics changing. The different politics keep changing the dates and everything. Exactly, rainy day fuck politics. Well, these are old battleships. They're older than my light cruisers. Even their heavy cruisers were the same tonnage as these light cruisers. So this is just an old fleet that's facing us. I doubt they even have rangefinders. We're having a hard time seeing this one. We sank the other one with no issue. This one does not want to go down, though. I mean, this is a gunboat light cruiser here. That's an old design. That's an actual gunboat. That's this is basically a mon this is like the modernized monitor class ship is what we're looking at right there. And this battleship's not much bigger than uh It's got eleven point five inch guns. But they're shortened barrels. That explains a lot on her targeting. They shortened the barrels on them. That's kind of an odd choice. Jenna Jameson took an engine hit. I hear somebody cooking off. I don't see somebody cooking off. There goes the Imperata. Or the uh, Empress Maria. The 
this out like cruiser, so we got this one left back here, and that should be it. Let's speed this along. That's another gunboat like cruiser. I mean, they've done some damage. It just took them, they had to get close. And for the time period that's accurate, you still had to get very close to each other in this time period. I'm not too sure, Josh. I'm not, uh, I'm not fully boned up on naval history. That gave us 55,782 points. We just shot... Well, I think we just shot to 150,000 victory points or damn near. Wow. So that's two battleships, five heavy cruisers, five lights, and five torpedo boats down to the bottom. And we didn't even take, even though we took some damage on the uh, Jenna Jameson and the Betty, it really didn't, it still shows his light damage over here. So it didn't take too much structural damage. Uh, Kim, that's actually what I'm thinking right now. I think that came out of the Baltic. Because I already I, I already sank most of their Pacific fleet. So that, I think that came out of the Baltic or the North Sea. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the Angel's Envy aside for right now. Because this is just too good to get drunk on during a stream. I'm going to have that's a similar flavor. Oh, you know what? I picked up a new bottle of Japanese whiskey I need to try out. That'll be next. Oh, you've had it before, Krieg. I've kind of held off on buying it because it's a straight rye, and for the price, I'm like, eh. I finally decided to uh, try it out, though, because I do love a good rye. There's another one I really like that's a small distiller out in Pennsylvania. I can't remember the name of it, but you have to go to the distiller himself to buy it. i got to find him again. Let's put you guys back in the port and get repaired. That put us at 143,290 with the Soviets, so I'm going to request a piece with them. They still have 91 ships in their fleet. I, mean, I could really run up the war score, but they're at a negative GDP growth right now. And they're at eight, very content, but they're about to go. They just had a revolution four, turn, four or five turns ago where they became the Soviet Union. So I guess they're going to have the democratic government next. Or the democratic flag, even though it says the government's a democracy, it's probably the democratic flag next. Let's go for a peace treaty. They might just take it. Their GDP growth's in the negative right now. So they want to get out of this war, I guarantee it. Yeah, go straight for go ahead for it. Uh if you can't post it up on the uh into the live chat, uh you can drop it into the uh Discord. Actually, let me post that up. So if anybody's interested and you're not a member yet, you can join the Discord community.
We have some good fun in there, just like on the streams. The type where I have driven, I destroyed their navy so badly, the population went nuts and kicked the czar out early. Graham, how are we doing this evening? Let's see if they take that peace deal. Hopefully they do, and I can grab the Sacklin Islands from them, north and south. Yeah, this is some very, very good whiskey. I'm not going to get drunk on this for the stream. Though I do have a bottle of Oban for tomorrow night. So I picked up a bottle of Oban 14 for tomorrow. Uh, one of my nephews. I got a bunch of them over and they're in the next room playing uh, one of those multiplayer games. They did not take the peace deal, really. Do I have to make them go into another revolution? One month on repairs and develop to his, to his commissioning. That Winnie 15, that's good. Unable to accept the invite for the Discord. Huh. I got one niece, six nephews, and one great nephew now. Can't believe they did not take that peace deal. Okay. We got down here. Battleship three, heavy cruisers, 13 lights, but they're moving out of the region. Spanish moving older. Okay, that the CL's coming in, but this is leaving and this is leaving. What are they doing? What we got here? Two more battleships, six heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, and eight torpedo boats. I gotta, I gotta intercept this fleet next turn when uh, my ships are repaired. I mean, if the if the Soviets are gonna allow me to run the score up to over two hundred thousand, they're gonna lose anything that's not part of their mainland. I'm taking it all. I mean, that shouldn't have anything to do with it. I mean, you, you should be able to join with now an issue unless uh, the invites. No, it's a permanent invite that should not be old. You old know, so how many kids your mom last year? Because how long? Yeah, I get that. I get that for my family every once in a while. We do not negotiate with our enemies. Uh, now they now they want a peace deal. All right, ships at Sasebo. Where'd they go? Okay, that fleet moved out of region. They went up to Vladivostok, so I'm gonna send my light cruisers up to Vladivostok. See if we can't engage them. And I'm not sure what the range. 
on these ships are. So they might make it to Southern Formosa next turn, and then I can hit them with the uh, torpedo boats out of Naha. Actually, I do have one more light cruiser ready to go. The love choice is ready to go, so let's have her join the other light cruisers. That's how I view them, Rainy. <laughs> And we have a piece. All right, we're not getting that fleet of Valley of Ostock. All right. What? North Sackland, yep. Yeah. Okay, can't get North Sackland, and so we'll take South Sackland. I thought I had a high enough war score to get both of them. Where do I grab Kamchatka? The F 109's got hands, they got you quick. <laughs> yeah, I understand that, Greek. Yeah, Kamchatka. And I'm thinking the same thing and then grab the 284 million. Let's see if they give it to us. They gave it to us. So we grab Kamchaka, an extra 284 million into the bank. Very good. Now we need to close the war with the Spanish as quickly as we can. Their GDP is in a negative now too. They're half a percent negative on their GDP now. Mine's only growing slightly. So we need to finish this war and get our economy running again. Yeah, I got to try that one. I like, I, I, I prefer my scotch is smoky. You know, that's actually, taking uh, Kamchatka works because this now rings in. The well, problem is it does give us a land territory with the Russians, so I probably should have taken one of the Sakhalins. But, yeah, we kind of we kind of ring in all their ports now strategically. All right, so the three newest ships go to Naha, or the three oldest go to Naha. Jenna Jameson, May West, and Marilyn Monroe. And then the other three will go back to Sasebo. The link has expired. Okay, that link should have not expired. Okay, I'll have to make a new one. Let's see here. I got to try and remember how to do that. All right, here's a fresh link that should be good to go.
I mean, there's whiskeys that I just straight down, you know, my regular drinking whiskeys, but uh, I do like my expensive ones with good taste. All right, now the rest of you go back to Sasebo. Greg, you see me, you, you you guys have heard me on here. I drink entire bottles on this stream. That's why I'm putting the angel wings aside. I don't want to chug that bottle down tonight. It's too good. All right, so I'm going to go set my light cruisers after they get refueled. I'm going to set them off Manila and Deval. See if we can't start hitting the uh, Spanish shipping fleet and see if they come out to engage us. I used to drink vodka straight. I don't drink vodka anymore. It goes down too much like water. Why did you guys not move into port? And how's your fuel look? 78. Gonna have to sit there a few turns, okay. Yeah, I mean, I got to the point with uh, vodka... Uh, especially after my uh, my last deployment, I was drinking so much of it that I kept buying cheaper and cheaper vodka just so I could feel a burn. And I kept buying the cheapest stuff you could find. I mean, plastic bottle stuff. That's just how bad of a drinker I was at the time. How's the fuel look? 100% fueled already. Okay. So let's move the entire fleet down off of Manila. And these guys should be fueled next turn. So I totally your regards to the fact my first attempt at a ground attack saw me captured by the Germans like three days into the push for Stalingrad right time to be a fighter pilot. <laughs> Don't blame you. You gotta learn you gotta learn the controls of the game. Seals up to 5,000 tons. Stereoscopic range finder one. Nice. Greece would like to order two voluptuous class cruisers. I will sell you those. Mexico wants three of the crayon eaters. All construction, 13 months, improved stiffening. Yeah, I don't have to focus on any one thing right now. It'll all be done before the next refit. 100% fueled up. Let's go get you guys off at the vow. Yeah, my uh, my brother-in-law's the same way. He's a stoner, not a drinker. Suffice to say, he's not allowed to drink with me anymore, according to uh, my sister, his wife. He gets into, uh, I, I kind of put him under the table for a few days after he hangs out with me. Now, I'm hoping we can end this war with the Spanish quickly. I don't have the tonnage for an invasion. Greece would like to buy another three Voluptuous class. Yes, I will sell you those. One convoy here. Off of my coast. TB on TB will auto resolve that. And it's a draw. 
they got 59 victory points out of that. So I guess they damaged my TB and got one of the transports. Why have we did not get one of theirs? They should have a lot of transports coming out of these areas. So straight up invade. Everything hits different for everybody. That's why, like, I'm not a beer drinker. It doesn't hit. It really doesn't hit me at all. I usually end up getting full before I'm even getting a buzz. And they got no transports coming out of either of these ports. That seems a little odd. Uh, torpedo boats out of Matsuyama. Come sit off of Saipan. We got, we got to catch some of their transports. And the seal's just sitting there. What's our fuel look like? Oh, God. We are horrible with fuel. All right. I'm going to move the light cruisers down to engage this one if we can. Torpedo boats in place. They had ships in the region. Now they're all gone. They got nothing at any of these ports. Yeah, it's, but it, it does become liquid bread, especially for me, because I was a big Guinness drinker at one point. This spins about the fire their head of Admiralty. Let's go with like another crayon eater. Okay. Building nine ships, none of them are mine. And they did not want to engage us, really. We're right on top of them. We're both in each other's combat circle, and we're not getting an engagement. Now, they are moving away. So Where are you guys? No, you're moving. No, you're staying in the area, so... Down and start peeling the label off this Kikori. Has anybody had a Kikori Japanese whiskey before? Let's tab on this plastic. Not ready for it yet, just prepping it. Yeah, if you haven't had any Japanese whiskeys, you should try them. They are really, really good. Right now, I'm trying to find a Japanese whiskey that's going to combine well with the 69th whiskey. I'm trying to make an anniversary drink. Because the, uh, the 69th did not fight in the European theater during World War II. They fought in the Pacific theater. Everybody talks about the Marines of Pacific Theater, but it's actually the Army provided most of the, most of the fighting men in the Pacific Theater. It's just the Marines got all the credit because that's basically their area of operations. 
Okay, the Spanish do not want to fight. And I'm going to run these guys back for fuel soon. I'm not moving these ones around, so they're good on fuel. We're on invade, but we're not attacking their port. That's kind of pissing me off. The port's in range. All right, Krieg, enjoy. Saki's good, just have to have the right Saki. What's really good is Soju. That's fun. That's that's a fun drink also. This guy be drunk warm. Oh, there's a few of them. Uh, there's a Sakura, which I really enjoy. There's another one I tried on the stream before. I I wasn't crazy about it. But uh, some of you all might like it. It's called Toki. Which is uh, some Tori whiskey. I wasn't too crazy about it. I think it had a little too much spice in it. Uh, you also had... Uh, uh, what was that coffee mill whiskey? I can't remember the name of that one. Damn it. Oh, wait. I still have the bottle. Never mind. I highly recommend uh, Nika coffee grain whiskey. That's a very, very good one. And I'll let you know how the uh, Kikori is when I... Get Pop the bottle open. Just wanna, I was just sipping out this angel's wing right now. As soon as I finish sipping out this, I go clean the glass out so I don't get the flavors mixed up. Yeah, the Spanish are not fighting me. Let's see if I can just improve relations with them. And I cannot. Hmm. I need a peace deal with them. My economy's dying because they don't they're not fighting us. My economy's dying because we've been at war for too long. <sighs> now, let's get you guys back for fuel. torpedo boats. We're not getting any of their transports. So it's just a waste for them to be sitting out there costing me money. Got yours from a store in Taiwan and thought it was beer. Yeah, you probably got some really gut-wrenching stuff then. <laughs> what, it come in like a six-pack or like a 40-ounce bottle or something that it looked like a beer? Which so are like two Nintendo class torpedo boats, okay. Now they got two CLs here. Where are they going? Yeah, it's the two same two CLs that would not engage us. I can't improve relations with them at all. I 
My relations with China keep going down. I don't want to go back to war with China anytime soon. So I can't improve relations with them. Ohishi and Onokishi are two brands you can find there. I haven't had those two. Brown bottle and a crate named... So was it... <laughs> so they just had it in a crate that was labeled beer. Yeah, that, that'll do it. That'll do it. Got there. Those are the two CLs leaving. That torpedo boat's leaving. Do they have anything on the way here? No, that's heading to the North Sea. That heavy cruiser looks like it's coming our way. Okay, it looks like they're moving some ships. Are... No, they're ignoring us completely, so I'm stuck at war with Spain. And they have no ships in the Pacific to guard their possessions, but I'm still not attacking their shipping either, which is kind of pissing me off. Twenty percent volume. Yeah, Japanese whiskey's become very, very big lately. I highly recommend the Nika coffee. The uh, the coffee the coffee grain one, the coffee mill one. I highly recommend that. It's very good. I guess we gotta wait for a Spanish fleet to show up and let my economy die in the process. You know what? You're not wrong, Ruinous. You're not wrong. When it comes to uh, some of the uh, storefronts in the Asian area, it can get a little shady. You're not sending anything this way. And we're in 1899 now. And I have not been building up my shipyards because we're only bringing in 9 million a month even at war because our economy's trashing. I need to start building my shipyards up again. So I'll do that with the 1900 refit. Ever cruises up to 9,000 tons. Very good. Anything that's going to take more than a year. Engines, yes. And that's the only thing that's going to take more than a year to do. Okay, so I don't think I'll put money into. So we should have quite a few technologies unlocked. Spanish Empire's got 52 light cruisers in there. Who's this? Where are you sailing out of? Truck. They are sending every... I think they're sending everything to the Caribbean right now. Yeah, they are actually sending everything to the Caribbean. Are they are war with the U.S.? They are not, but they're coming close. They are war with Britain, but that, 
They shouldn't be moving to the Caribbean to fight that war. Unless they're trying to push a... Unless they're trying to push a war with the U.S., which they could be doing. I do have historical moves turned on. So it looks like we're, the uh, Spanish-American War is about to kick off. That's why they're not in the region anymore. Yep, that's exactly it. I highly recommend that bottle. So we're in a war with Spain and they're not going to fight us. Do I send my fleets to the Caribbean after the refit? I get some heavy cruisers. Do I send my ships to the put out to the Caribbean too and uh play third wheel to the uh date that's going to be happening over here? I think that's what I do. We'll be low on fuel. It's going to be a tough fight, but I think we go to the Caribbean and join the party. What do you all think? Yeah, I just don't have... The, if I had the tonnage to launch a naval invasion, I would do it. I just don't have the tonnage for a naval invasion. So I'm doing my normal slow buildup of the fleet. Actually, we'll wait for the refits, for the 1900 refits, and then I should have the tonnage to take all these tiny islands from Spain. I won't have the tonnage to invade the Philippines, but I can start taking these tiny islands, run up the war score, and hopefully get a peace deal with Spain. Oh, yeah, I love Drac uh, Draconiffle. I think that's how he pronounces it. <laughs> the Voyage of the Damned. I think everybody calls it the Voyage of the Damned. <laughs> yeah, after the refit, we're going, we're going, we're going to the Caribbean, boys. We are going to the Caribbean. I'm going to try. I'm going to wait till after the refits. Because those are coming up in January of 1900. So I'll refit all my ships. Because Spain's busy right now. So I got I got the time. I'll get all my ships refit. And then I'll send them down there. Research anything that's still small guns. Let's get that. What is that going to give us? Mark two four. Ah, you know, I'll take the money out of that. I don't use four inches. That's what's coming up. Control station six months. We'll get that knocked out. Small towers two for the destroyers. Yes. Turn of Admiral Grumpa's Caribbean Retirement Home Empire. Yep. <laughs> I still can't believe we basically turned the Caribbean into a Chinese lake. That was hilarious. I'm really hoping. I am really hoping to do a, a landing on the U.S. at some point. But that takes a lot of tonnage. That's a late game thing. 
So I don't know if we'll get there, but I sure as hell want to try. So I think someone else pointed it out, and when they pointed it out, I went looking around. No, no other YouTuber has launched a land inv a naval invasion of the U.S., so I want to see if I can get it done and beat all the guys who have been doing this game for years to the punch. No, the YouTubers only been doing this game for two months. Beats out the guys have been doing it for years. It's something they haven't even tried. I'll take that accolade. Engines are one month. Turn that off. Explosives. What is this going to give us? Better contacts on the torpedoes. Yes, let's dump money into there. Shells. Count point ballistic cap. Yes, I want those. Pump money into that. More Scandinavians. I, <laughs> I think most of my viewers are European. <laughs> Latvia wants three. Latvia? What? Okay. I did not know I had an alliance with Latvia. What minor nations am I allied with now? Chile? Greece? Mexico? And now Latvia. When did they join us? <laughs> Well, Alaska, you can actually grab up in a peace deal because it's not part of the continental U.S. Even though it's a state of the U.S., uh, though it wasn't yet in this time period. At this time period, it's still a territory. So you can actually grab that up in a peace deal for pretty cheap. Which isn't a bad idea. You know, for when they uh, discover oil, that's actually a big boon. The two things you want to grab... Or the one thing you really want to grab early in the game, if you go to war with the U.S., the one thing you want to grab is Panama. You got to grab that before 1914 because then its value explodes once the Panama Canal opens in 1914. Might as well get the small guns knocked out. And let's see if we can't rush down to destroyer holes. But I don't think we'll make it in time. Boilers. As an advanced beam funnels, I can live without those. Uh, no, the, the canal is automatically built by the game. It just magically appears in 1914, which is the year it opened. Arizona. I, I hate to say it, I've only been there once and I was on a layover for a flight, so I really can't even say I've been there. Actually, is... No, Arizona's not on the Lincoln Highway, so I'm not going to be passing through this summer. Hmm. Explosives are done. All right, we'll drop the money into boilers. Not sure how much my people, my people are reliable, especially when they're drunk. They become more reliable. <laughs>
Panama, if not Alaska, then go for it to throw it at New York. Yep. I mean, in this game, it's the uh, Eastern U.S. So that's that's bad labeling. That's bad labeling. I mean, this is the Eastern Seaboard, but from New York North right here, this should be cut off into a separate province of New England. Basically, over here should be cut off as New England up into Maine. Yeah, right here, right here along the Hudson, which is, this is how the Hudson looks like. That's the state border from New York all from up here all the way down to there. That's the border of New York. This is the eastern seaboard there, and this is New England. So this should actually be cut down over here as a separate province. I mean, they have Maine as its own state. And look how big they made the Gulf Coast region. They do have to do some work on this map, but I mean, it does the job for, wh for what this game is. It does the job that it needs to do. Can't be a little too nitpicky. <laughs> Born in Colorado, lived in Texas, visited Oregon. Now you're living in the old Sunscorch state. <laughs> You know, I'm actually surprised I've never even been to, for all my for all my years in the military. I've never even been to Texas, and everybody in the military heads to Texas at some point. I I never went. I think I actually have more time in overseas bases than I do on stateside bases. <laughs> You're not wrong, Brunus. <laughs> Personal theory settlers want some sort of home, so they brought names with them. But they did in a lot of cases. I mean, uh, if you look at Florida, there's a there's a Greek there's a name of a Greek city there. So, uh, smart. Smyrna, which is over here in southern Turkey and was predominantly a Greek city until the 1900s. Uh, a lot of those people actually moved down here to Florida. Actually, right over here at Cape Canaveral. This is Cape Canaveral right here. And there's a town of there's a town of New Smyrna that was there. That was mostly Greek settlers when it was founded. I got to jump on this party in the Caribbean. All their fleets are here. Yeah, if we can't naval invade those islands, we're going to the Caribbean. So two more turns until we refit. And destroyers will not be done in time. Up oh, two months. There we go. Okay, we might have a destroyer design for Uber Warfare. What do we get from that? Yeah, we live without that. <laughs> where did i spend most of my time um i mean between the middle east uh, i was stationed in italy for three and a half years uh almost six months in australia i did i did a lot of traveling but i didn't i really didn't spend a lot of time in any of the big military bases which was kind of weird now that i think about it like all the big places like most of the military travels through i actually kind of avoided yeah Australia Japan Thailand obviously the Middle East didn't do the Egypt mission and I retired right before they went there so I, I, I spent a lot of time in a lot of smaller places believe it or not and it's not like I do a specialized job or anything Like we're in the middle of nowhere, at least we're in New England and not far from Boston. 
<laughs> if I can pronounce that correctly, you buy me a drink. I'll hold you to that when I visit. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'd probably butcher that if I try, but, uh. Ilfosnas? No, I just butchered that. It's, it's the, I don't know how to use that pronunciation above the A's. I don't know how to use that. Tell you where I'm from, you can't ban me from the channel. Why would I? Everybody's welcome. With me, everybody's welcome. I'm trying to think about how to pronounce that, and I'm kind of distracting me now. <laughs> Tell you what, I actually wouldn't mind living in Ireland. Out, outside of Dublin, once you're outside the major cities, Ireland's a very beautiful country. I wouldn't mind living there. Yeah, I knew I'd mess that one up. It's it's a it's the that pronunciation over the A's. I'm not sure how to use those. Now that I've actually given it a shot, I'm gonna just cheat and look it up and see how far off I was. Okay, now I'm getting some of these. Okay. So my first guess would have been right, but I thought it was wrong. You got to be kidding me. That, that that's that's what I was just thinking. I just listened to the pronunciation of it, and my first guess was correct. I just thought it would be wrong, so I should have went my I should have went my first guess, and I would have been correct. <laughs>
Yeah, it's like I, 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 if I just went with my first guess, I would have had it right. <laughs> I just looked it up on my phone and listened to it. I'm like, that's exactly how I was going to say it the first time, but I thought I was wrong. Oh, it's January, so time for the ship refits. All right. Crayon Eater gets its third refit. Ele Fosnas. Or however it sounds in my uh, New York lingo. <laughs> I can't even say coffee correctly. You know what? That's usually how I go, Ank, but I didn't think I was going to be correct. No, no, I got it wrong the first time. I got it wrong the first time, so don't worry. If, if I ever visit, we're going to spend a whole night at the bar, so don't worry. We'll be buying each other drinks all night. <laughs> right, so we're using coal, induced boilers. We got steam expansion, one engines, cat ballistic shells, cat. So got balsite propellant, gun cotton, advanced hydraulic on the guns. 17-inch torpedoes. We're not going to give these mind-sweeping capabilities. 250 to 275. Can I get you up to 29 knots now? No, I cannot. Damn it. We're wasting 25 tons, but there's nothing I can do about that. No. All right, I got to go see what's got my dog set off. Excuse I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Next door is having food delivered, and my dogs were uh, set off by it for some reason. All right, let's save this design. Push and roll still suck on this thing, but uh, nothing we can do about that. To your American brain, that is. <laughs> But I tell you what, the American language, I mean, I give props to anybody who learns it. Because when you look at the American language, we get one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. We got three different ways of saying there. Base and bass are two different things, but it's the same word when you spell it out. And we use words from several different languages in our language. So, I mean, I give props to anybody who learns the English, the English language and especially American English, because our language is weird as all hell. All right, Crayon, you got third refit. Nintendo class gets its first refit.
I mean, honestly, rainy day, a good example of that is actually going to like Italy because right now they, there's one national Italian language, but that didn't exist until the nineties. Until the 1990s, there were five different Italian languages used in Italy. And still used today by the older folks. Between C and Z? Uh, how, how do you mean? You'd have, you'd have to uh, put up an example. Right. Better, better engine. Torpedoes. There is a differentiation. There are two different letters. Can we get the 30 knots? Not three knots. Four tons too heavy. Where can I shave four tons off? Uh, decreasing the length of two inches does not do it. Okay. So 29 knots it is. And can I increase her range? 494, 500, better range. Same speed, better torpedoes. We'll take it. Is in American English about 50 different English languages? Josh, American English, once you, once, like any country in the world, you got different ways of saying things in different parts of the country. Uh... America, I think, breaks down to five very distinct sub-vocabularies, and then those can be broken down even further. Uh, like the Northeast, like New York City and Boston and fall into the same vocabulary area, but we have two very, very distinct ways of speaking and use of wordage or a verbiage. C and Z do not sound exactly the same. Not to me. All right, now we get ourselves a new. Did we unlock the destroyer hole? Or did we miss that by a month? I got distracted by my dogs. I mean, that's how the letters form when you speak in it. And you have to remember, especially in, especially in the English language, the pronunciation of a C, a Z, or any, any first letter in a word, the pronunciation of it's affected by the following letter. Did not build too many of these, did we? All, right, all the torpedo boat refits are going to take a month. We actually lost tonnage on the one. Now the voluptuous class gets its first refit. Okay. Explain this one to me. Explain this one to me. We just went from full turrets on these five inches to shell turret to uh, not full turrets. Explain that upgrade to me. And these guns. We're not going to get good placement on the tower with these guns. But what I can do. Now it's not let me put the tower back down. Let's take those off for right now. Let's go back to those fives. 
I want to drop my fives off. Now, can I rotate this and still make it work? Yes and no. Okay. So we lose some angle of fire, but I don't lose the guns. I'm happy with that. We don't lose the guns. We lose some range of fire, but we don't lose the guns. Okay. Well, at rainy day, there are 50 different accents in the U.S., if, if not even more than that. So the engine. Keep the balanced rudder. We have Harvey Steel now. Very good. Double hull. Reforced bulkheads. Your citadel. Catalytic. Capped. Still using balsite. Yep. And gun cotton. We need picric acid. That's what we need. 17 inch torpedoes. 3,924. Seroscopic rangefinder. 3,929. We're not going to give her mines. I'm not going to get any more ranger speed out of her, so let's just up the armor. We only go 2.5 of the main belt, so what about main deck? Nope. 1.1 on the main deck. Pitch is under control, but roll still sucks. I'd hate to be on this thing at sea, but still better on serving on one of my torpedo boats. I think we'll roll with that. Yeah, I think uh, English is one of the few languages that makes a very distinct differentiation between the two. I can tell the difference between a C and a Z. It's two different pronunciations. All right, let's refit that ship. Yeah, C sounds like C, and Z sounds like Z. Let's get these voluptuouses refit. How long is this going to take? One month. Perfect. All my refits are one month. All right, now we get to design ourselves a new light cruiser. I don't want to use the semi-armored cruiser hull. How much tonnage can we put on? Up to 5,200 tons. This max is at 35. What about the belted three mast? Yeah, I think I, I like this hull. I like the way this looks. I like the way this hole looks. All right, so the last CL was the Voluptuous class. So we need a new class name for the light cruisers. All right, who was first in chat tonight? I don't think I can go back that far in chat. Actually, Rainy Day, give me a class name. Give me a class name.
That's why I like it. It's different. This is a new hull. This is new. There's a three-mast cruiser, but this is a belted three-mast cruiser. This is a new hull. I have not seen this one yet. This is from the recent update. Hey, you know, rainy day, what's Swedish for warrior or for sailor? <laughs> you? Okay. We'll call this the rainy day class. We'll call this the rainy day class. TMNT class? Okay. So these are all going to have Swedish names. So uh, throw up some uh, Swedish names for me. What speed does this hole get? Let that range down real fast. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle class. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the meme names are for the destroyers. You know that, Rainy Day. Come on, you know that. The meme names are for the destroyers. Oh, crap. We forgot to sign a new destroyer. Let's exit out of here. We got to do destroyer first. So that'll be the Teenage Mutant Ninja class. I think we talked about this last stream, too. Eh, time to pop them the Kikori. Ooh, that sounded good. Not much of an aroma to it. Uh, now I'm a little leery. Not much of an aroma. So I forgot, we skipped over doing a design for the new destroyers. So we actually did unlock destroyer one hole. So this will be the TMNT because all the torpedo boats and destroyers get the meme names. We build them up to 850. Yeah, it's 35 knots on the hull. So let's give her 30. I don't think we're going to get... Whoa. I don't think we're going to get 35 out of her. We'll see. Keep with the two inch guns. Because that's all we need for this time period. That did not look centered. There we go. Why did that not put down? Yeah, we're way overweight already. Let's knock her down to 30 knots. 741, there we go. Reduce boilers. Steam engine. Oh yeah, those were those are obviously gonna be the first names. So I'm gonna build five of these. So the first one's a TMNT, because that's officially the class name. Uh, 
Donatello, the Raphael. Angelo. Engine. Turrets. Balanced rudders for now. I'm, I'm thinking about switching to unbalanced rudders for most of my ship designs to see if we can't get some tighter turning, but you, you take a lot of negatives when you use those. Actually, I'm going to give them the fast torpedoes. Shorter range, but there should be less avoidance on them. Stereoscopic one. We'll give these mines and mine sweepers because they're going to be rolling with the fleet. 738 of 850. Okay. Over standard quarters and increased range. I get her up to 31 knots. 840 of 850. We're getting somewhere. Spacious quarters. Not too much. A little more range. Still too much. All right. So she's going to sit at 840 ton of 850. Pitch and roll still suck, but it's still better than serving on one of my torpedo boats. Which I think I'm gonna have to start press ganging prisoners to uh, crew because they're so bad. There we go. I kind of like her. She looks sane. <laughs> we can say that she looks sane. Actually, yeah, I'm going to need 10 names. Because five of these are going to each fleet. So, Splinter. I can't remember all the names from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's been so long. Okay, I left this whiskey air, and it's still not giving me an aroma. I'm a little worried now. Oh, April O'Neil. So I'm going to build 10 of these. Casey Jones, I was about to ask about that guy's name, too. I can remember it. And Krang. There we go. There's the ten names. So five of these will be going to each fleet. I'm going to build all these at one port. Where's our biggest port? Ah, so Sable's our biggest port. So these are going to go to Yokosuka as my construction port. I'm going to, I'm going to have to move the fleet out of Sasebo because that's going to have to become my construction port because it's got the most tonnage space. All right, now we can do a new light cruiser. Let 
Actually, give me one minute here. I'll be right back. I'll take a bio break. Right, my husky followed me back into the room. I think he thinks I'm hiding pizza in here again. <laughs> if you weren't here for the last stream, he uh, snuck in while my back was turned and uh, stole my slice of pizza from me. All right, so this is going to be... Kreiger class, okay. Nineteen point five, so we'll give her twenty. Knock down that range. Time for the rainy sonar class. <laughs> you know what? That'll be the heavy cruiser class. That'll be the heavy cruiser that we're going to design right after this. Actually, this is kind of weird. It's so it's a three master. Wow, that is so Italian. That is so Italian. Okay, this is looking weird. <laughs> Have a good night, Kim. All right, why can't I move this? So it's not a three mass cruiser, it's more of a five mass cruiser. I'm definitely not fitting sevens on there. Can I fit sixes? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe? No. Let's go with fives. How many fives can I shove on here? I can't get them into the forward position, so that's fine. Oh, uh, what's going on in my game? Why are you not moving? Why are you not moving? Okay, I'm not liking this whole design so much anymore. It's giving me some issues. And I'm not dropping her down to four inch guns. Can't put fives up there? Really? Let's 
Okay, I'm liking this design less and less now. It looks cool. But it's not letting me do what I want. Well, that's exactly the... I, that's why I looked at this hole. I'm like, I can do a lot with this. And not so much anymore. I don't want to mix the main battery armament. Like, I put four ups there. But I don't want to mix a four and fives. The fours are basically useless on the light cruiser design going forward. Uh, you know what? You're not... I think it's the new hull design. I don't know. That's just... Should be able to put fives there. Like those should sit there facing that way, but it's not let me sit them. And now, yeah, you know what? Let's save this real fast. I'm going to reset the game. Uh, this is taking forever to load. I may have to do a hard reset. There we go. All right, let's save this real fast and then reset the game. I can change the gun's calibers. But the way that it's playing around right now and there, I want to see... I think that might be a problem with the whole design. Screen's going to go blank here for a minute while I uh, restart the game. But I don't think the computer likes that whole design or the game doesn't like it. Feels more like a BC and a heavy cruiser. Okay, we'll hold off until uh, we get battle cruisers. Plus, I haven't seen uh, her in chat in a minute. I guess she's really tied into that Iltu Sturmovic game. This really has no fucking flavor. What the hell? What is this made from? Oh, that explains it. It's a rice whiskey. That explains that. Okay. What I'm going to do now, this actually might work for what I want to try here. Because, like I said, my unit fought in the Pacific Theater, and we have our own whiskey to fight in 69, so I was trying to do a blend of Japanese whiskey and the fight in 69 to find out what really works well. So I'm thinking this flavor is light enough where they should play well together. Let's try this out. Let's get an equal amount of 69 in there. game load in while I do this. <laughs> and I don't have anything to mix with right now. Eh, pen will work. Now that's an interesting smell with those two mixed together. 
That's interesting. Yeah, it's really very lightly flavored, like dangerously so. I just mixed it. I just blended it with the, the Fighting 69. I've been looking to do a blend for a few years now, trying to find the right, whis right Japanese whiskey to go with it. No, that does not blend well at all. Smells good, but does not blend well at all. And on to the next experiment. That's why I bought the Kikori. I wanted to try it. See if it blended. Nope. Actually, I think this might be an older bottle, 69. Yeah, this is actually an older bottling. This is an original blend. Yeah, this is, an, this is one of the older bottles. We don't make this blend anymore. Huh. I just bought it and they're selling one of the older blend bottles. That's kind of weird. All right, let's try this again. I'm just thinking the game doesn't like this design. I got some free movement here, okay. Let's throw the guns on first. It's not going to let me put those up there. So the fives just won't go up there at all. I can't put barbettes on here. Okay, so... Yeah, let's throw the floors on there. We'll run them up to as big as we can get them. So, let's see here. Let's run them up to 4.9. Game says they'll sit. Game says they'll sit. Okay. Tower work up there. Secondary. Will actually fit there. Does it interfere with their... Yes, it does. Okay, that's better. But we can put you over here. This is such an odd design. This is such a weird design. One very big funnel. I can put casemates on here. I can put three inch casemates on here. Okay. And we still got tonnage to play with. Oh, I didn't run the tonnage up. And this is actually going to be the... Where the hell is that name? Every class. 20 knots of speed. Okay. Range now. Now we'll get everything else on. Wait, I missed a gun position. I did, huh? Yeah, this thing's going to be dangerous. We got tonnage to play with, so we should be able to armor her up pretty well, too. Ooh, I'm liking this.
I don't like I can't put five inches on her. I, I couldn't put fives, but not have a full coverage. But I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. Max HE, very good. Capitalistic. Capped. Balasite. Cotton. Hydraulic turrets. Reload. Stereoscopic rangefinder. No mines on my light cruisers. We still almost have a thousand tons to play with. What's our max armor on the belt? I could put five inches of belt armor on this thing? What? One inch on the decks, 4,927. Quarter inch on that. Actually, let's go spacious quarters. 4,982, 5,000, okay. Increase the length on the three inch casemates. I can't believe this is let me. How much can. Wait, how much armor can we put on? It can go up to 5.5. We're good. We're fine with five inches. Five inches is a lot for a light cruiser. How many different whiskeys are you drinking tonight, Rainy Day? You're on the bow more now? A little more range out of her. No, that's too much. 5,131. We'll drop off some of the armor from the belt. Because we'll be able to armor up again once we get the croup armor. 4,980 of 5,000. More deck armor then. Nope. Too much. Con Tower's already got 2.6. Four weight offset's a little high, so let's start on the F belt if we can. There we go. I want to use every ton we can. 4,995. Wait, why did... There we go. 4,995. Oh, I didn't add torpedoes. Shit. He's only got the four launchers. And it's going to be control problems again. Yeah, I don't think the game likes this design. Only got the four launchers on it. That sucks. That puts us a little overweight. But I'm willing to strip more off the belt again. 4.1 inches, 4,985 tons. Get a little bit more to the aft belt again. Because that four weight went off as soon as we put those torpedoes in there. There we go. 4,998 of 5,000 tons. <laughs> uh, the Takori. I think I've seen it, but I haven't tried it yet. I think that's coming to the next one I buy. All right. I think we're... I'm happy with this design. Why does it tell me it's overweight now? Yeah. This is a new hole they added, and I don't think the game really likes it. Wow, you're going through the gamut of them tonight, Rainy Day. <laughs> oh, wait, wait till I get the uh, Ruinous. Wait till I get the uh, Crip Armor unlocked. Because this, thing, this thing's going to be around. So it gets two more refits. So this thing's going to be around until about 1915, 1920. Just on refits. Wait till we get the lighter armor and see how much see how much I armor these things up. Me and Tex, I don't know if you got any of you guys watch Tex from the Black Pants Legion, but me and him kind of have a similar play style. All or nothing armor schemes and a lot of torpedo boats. Alright, I'm going to build one of these for now. To slowly start replacing... The voluptuous class. Did 
that's only costing me two million to build, or two million a month to build. That's actually pretty friggin' cheap. I mean, six million more expensive than the voluptuous, but still cheap. All right, now do I get that cruiser hole that I get my Jap my uh, Italian plate through? I don't think we do. I think that's an Italian only hull. Yeah, fuck. That's an Italian only hull. Then again, it's still early game. Still early game. I'm in the 1905 refit in that playthrough. Actually. What the hell am I looking at here? I think we go Armored Cruiser 3 hull. Let's increase the beam all the way. Can I use this hull with a full... This no, that's too much with a full beam on it. That's too much. 7% beam. Can I get the 9,000 tons? Okay, I can get it with the 7... 7% beam, okay. Good speed's 21.5, so let's give her 22. Knock down that range real fast. Go to spacious quarters. I know we can't put bar bets on this thing. Yep, nope. Main guns. 11 inches, please. Oh, I can put that really far back there. She's going to have a beautiful firing arm. Too bad I can't have a barbette. I'd be able to double mount back there. If I could only have a barbette. Grim Wolf. <laughs> How are we doing this evening? Ooh, I can get the five inches, but not up here. I'll leave those five inches on there. Those five inch casemates. Now we're getting into the what the fuck designs. <laughs> All right, 8,448 and 9,000 tons, okay. Boilers. Let's get expansion, auxiliary engine. You showed up just in time for my first what the fuck was I thinking design. And actually, it's not that bad. Putting those five inches back there really helped with the four weight offset, to be honest. Still underweight. Okay. We got a few hundred tons to play with here. Let's armor up that belt. Actually, the light cruiser has more armor than this thing does, honestly. <laughs> yep. The light cruiser actually has more armor. This has a 3.9 main belt. What, what the light cruiser have? A 4 or 4.1? Actually, I want to knock this down to 3. I want to extend the length on the 5 inches. Uh, 
There we go. Main deck. Eight thousand nine ninety six and nine thousand tons. Got to make a destroyer hunter light cruiser covered in secondaries called the Porcupine. <laughs> That's basically what we just designed. You just missed it. We're going to take a look at that whole design. All right, what are we call in this class. Four inches of armor is fine for the time period. It's perfectly fine for the time period. Especially when their ships are still not shooting straight. I like it. I'm not even drunk yet, and I like it. The drunken grunt, the hangover. Well, we're not drunk yet. I guess we can call it the hangover. But I got to get really drunk and make a new Josh said it was good class. <laughs> Because how drunk was I and what time in the morning was that? <laughs> On what, like a, a nine hour stream? Okay, I'm building four of these. So I need four of you guys to give me the drink that gave you your worst hangover. Because that's what these ships are going to be named after. Whatever gave you your worst drunk, put that in the chat, and that's going to be the four names I need for these, uh, or three names I need for the cruisers. The first one's the hangover, so I need three more names. Well, it's got to be whatever gave you your worst drunk ever. Or your worst hangover. It's a hangover class. It's got whatever whatever gave you the worst hangover you can remember. So I need three names. Twenty month build time. Oh, I got to be over on my tonnage now. Yeah, I'm over on my tonnage. It's like for me, my 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 worst my worst hangover ever was red wine. The only reason that was the worst hangover ever is cuz I woke up my Licorice shots. Oh, God, yes. That's a perfect name for one of these things. A deep eddy. What is that? You know what? Snake bites. Oh yeah, we only got 63,000 ton yards. Shit. I am way behind on my yard tonnage. Way behind. 25 million deficit, but we got a billion dollars to play with. We can eat that for a while. Ha <laughs> ha. 
next turn. You you, you gotta tell, you gotta explain what a deep eddy is. And an Irish trash can. I've never heard of that one. The hangover lasted two days. Oh, dear Lord. No, France wants to support us. Nice. Let's go once through the Nintendo classes. Yes, I'll sell those to you. Jeff, thank you for subscribing. Old English. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You know what? It's been a long time, but Zima, that gave me a goddamn hell of a hangover with all that sugar in it. Any of you guys remember that stuff? All right. My refits get delayed. Yeah. Take a shot of everything you have combined with a shot of bail. Oh, jungle juice, basically. And you just add Baileys to it. It's like taking a shot of the four horsemen. Austria-Hungary has taken over all Albania. They have moved into the Balkans. That's never a good idea. All right, everybody should be done refitting. All right, everybody's done refitting. So let's go see if I have enough tonnage. We'll start with Peleliu. We'll start with Peleliu, see if we have enough tonnage for there, and then move on to the other smaller islands. Kahlua B-52s. You know, I've never had a hangover of tequila rainy day, but I've had such a horrible drunk on it. Just the smell of that stuff makes me want to puke nowadays. I mean, yeah, tequila just messes your world up. All right, do I have enough tonnage there to start a naval invasion? I do not. That is not enough tonnage to start a naval invasion. All right, back to port. We got to wait for the heavy cruisers. They're about a year away from being done. That is not enough tonnage. Even for Peleliu, that's not enough tonnage. You gotta be kidding me. But Old English, I haven't thought of that stuff in a while. Is that even made anymore? People are still buying the crayon eaters, amazingly.
the hard drive wipe. Vodka. And, oh no, 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 no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> uh, kamikazes aren't that bad. Unless they're aimed at you. Wake up and have salt. Yeah. <laughs> if you got to chase it with salt and uh, a bite of a lemon, you shouldn't be drinking it. So nine more months on the heavy cruisers. Hopefully the heavy cruisers will give us the tonnage. Latvia wants to buy three of the hangovers. Latvia, what are you planning? That's a tiny nation to be buying three heavy cruisers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not repeating that one out loud. <laughs> Makes you talk to your body. <laughs> Basically, any alcohol do that so you've drank enough of it. And you do what you do every night, grumpy, trying to take over Russia. <laughs> One of the best drinks you ever made was Ogre's Brew. Cherry vodka with black spiced rum, Jack Daniel's honey whiskey, and finally bullet rye bourbon. I'm going to have to take your word for that one, Ruinous. I'm going to take your word for that one. That sounds like too much to me. I don't, that doesn't... <laughs> What, what was the final flavor like on that? That that seems like a bit much. I have triple shot Jack and Cokes in 30 Yeah. Surprised you weren't puking your guts up between the Jack and all that sugar. Jesus. And we're still sitting at nine turns because I agreed to build these fucking heavy cruisers. My dumbass. Ah. Can't remember having made in years. Okay. So you just remember it tasting good. But you don't know if it tasted good. How drunk were you when you made it? It's going. It's going. I just realized how small my shipyards were.
So my four new heavy cruisers are going to take, yeah, it, they're over a year to build because I didn't have enough tonnage and I agreed to build three more of them for another nation, which delayed my build time. Like a dumbass, I should have looked first. Yeah, I'm going to keep drinking this Kikori just because I bought the damn thing, but I'm not going to be mixing with anything else. Plus, it's got no flavor, so we might get into some interesting things tonight. Yeah, you're doing the, uh, you, you said it was a four player event? Slow drinking all day, and then you came up with that. So, yeah, you probably had no taste buds left at that point, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, the only time I get hangovers anymore is when I go to my military reunions, like I am in June. It's a week. It's a week of hanging out with Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghan vets just drinking. It gets bad. I got no taste buds left like a week afterwards. Uh, and who, oh, it was uh, Krieg who had the four-person event. That's right. I'm liking right now, we have very advanced technology. Still, like my max shipyard size sucks. But we have very advanced technology, which I generally don't have in any of my campaigns. Waterloo campaign as a French versus AI. Okay, on a what game are you doing that on? Well, you should have saved the old bond for next week, because that's why I'm popping open my bot uh, for tomorrow night, because that's why I'm popping my bottle open. Still had them, they decided to shut the bed and leave the airport. <laughs> WDS Waterloo, okay. Our bed anti flash three, we definitely need that. Now we get the pickwick acid. After I do my refits, we get the pickwick acid. God damn it. Four more turns. So five more turns with the breakout crews. Six turns and we'll see if we can do an invasion of the islands. I need to end this war with Spain. It's killing my economy. I hate this. It's going turns and turns with nothing happening. The Spanish are not here. Hey guys, I'm telling you straight up right now, you do anything. Like I told Sonar Ball, you do anything, you do your own streams, you do stuff on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that, post it up in the Discord. Tell everybody about it. 
You know, I'm not I'm not worried about you guys stealing anything from me. I would like to order two Krigari class like cruisers. Yes, I'll sell those to you. But he made some cinnamon moonshine with sliced ca what? I don't even think I should take a nip of that. I think the smell would sear my nostrils. He was still bombing. Him. And he ages it for, I think, six months with a ginseng, with a full ginseng root in the bottle of vodka. And it tastes, it literally tastes like dirt. But boy, does it wake your ass up. Like, you've been hanging out all night, you're starting to feel a little down. You take a shot of that, and you are good until the next day. It's like ripping a line. Oh, once CL finished the building. So I'm going to build another Kurgati. What are we going to name this one? You know what? Pull this one to half down. Adam, how are we doing this evening? Again, it tastes like dirty potatoes. You have to have... <laughs> I can't even drink, Jack. It's, it smells and tastes like turpentine to me. Yokosuka. Okay, so which is my oldest light cruiser? Jenna Jameson is my oldest light cruiser at Sasebo. So Kragari's going to Sasebo. Oh, and the destroyers are done too. So Kragari and five. Nope. Gotta start at the bottom. TMT, Splinter. Shredder. Should be Tim T. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael. They are going to Sasebo. Jenna Jameson is actually going to get moved to Petropavlovsk. Petropavlovsk. My bad. Really fucked it up the first time. So I'm not going to get rid of my light cruisers. I actually am going to start disbanding. Actually, I should do that now while they are. I'm actually just going to mothball all my torpedo boats right now. I love how they added a mothball button. So you don't have to go through ship by ship anymore. So these are all mothballed. We'll sell those off to my allies. And that'll save us a bunch of money, because now we're bringing. Now we're starting to build destroyers. We don't need the torpedo boats anymore. Oh, you know I'm gonna be here for a long time, Grim. It's only uh, well, I've been going two and a half hours. That's nothing. You know how long I go. Oh, and the heavy cruisers just finished also, so they are now fitting out. Awesome. We do not negotiate. I don't know how we have prisoners to exchange when me and the Spanish have actually not even fought yet. Except for like the one torpedo boat fight. Chili would like to buy. Yep. This is why you mothball them. Everybody wants to buy them. You got to get rid of the torpedo boats and sell them off before the design goes out of date. Then they won't buy them. 
All right, commissioning, how long is that going to take? A two-month commission time, really? Okay. That's a pretty long time for a cruiser, or a heavy cruiser at this time period. Yeah, disperse the crowd. Now the Spanish want a peace treaty. Now they want one. Yes, I'll agree. But let's see if my government agrees. Me saying yes doesn't mean anything because I don't run the government. I only run the Navy. ships is the United States building. And they actually took the peace deal. Okay, we get a million dollars out of it. Woohoo. That costs us more in our economy. That costs us more with our economy going negative. Now we have a chance to recover. Too easy to go to sets. Oh, wait, uh, crap. So, ch -ch 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 -ch. the hangover and liquid shots go to Sasebo. And everything else goes to Naha. Now, let's see if my economy starts to recover. No, we are not giving you money because I have nothing to give away. I got less than a billion dollars to play with. So you go to Naha. Alright, so that's everything out of Yokosuko. Everything goes to Fleet and Being. Save us some more money. Alright, we're now growing at 6% a year again. Good. So right now it's just us and the British with the most advanced technology. We're actually even ahead of the Americans right now, which is good. So, because the Spanish weren't playing here, they're out in the Caribbean at war with the U.S. and possibly France. Nate, whoa, Italy has no ships. What? What happened to their fleet? 
Holy shit. I've never seen that. They have no fleet. Wow. Spain's down to 20. Yeah, so Spain is at war with the U.S. They lost most of their fleet. They lost it all in the Caribbean. It's now down at the bottom. Resting there with all the pirates. So, uh, our next biggest thing is actually the French. We're actually on very, very good terms with the English right now. So, I think we start, uh, sending our ambassadors to the French embassy to steal their croissants and piss them off at us. So, that we can start taking over French Indochina. So how big is their fleet? One hundred and fifty-three ships. So they'll definitely send something to fight us. So yeah, let's start pissing off the French. We only have positive thirty-one with us, so it shouldn't take too much. They only gave us a negative six. Yeah. The Spanish just bought ships from us for more than they're worth. I've never actually had that happen before. And never had a major power buy any of our ships before. But I mean, if they're willing to pay more than their actual value, I'll sell them to them. I could have 33 million now. Back over a billion dollars because everybody's buying the mothballs, but we're still spending 33 a month. Yep, now we're down to negative 20 million a month, okay. I'm getting under control, but that's about to explode because I got to put more money into my dockyards again. They are desperate. They had like 27 ships left. But generally, the major powers don't buy ships from you. Yeah, so yeah, they didn't do it that time around. We got to get our tonnage up. The fact I could not get my heavy cruisers built in time speaks volumes. I got thirty-five million a month. <sighs> Piss off the French again. It's been long enough. If you do it every other turn, the effects aren't as good if you wait three to four turns. With diplomacy. Like, one of the things I noticed in this game, like, it, you have to, diplomacy only acts like every other turn can you do something with a nation, but if you do it every other turn, the effects aren't as good as if you wait three to four turns to do it. Morris Plaza has been caught in the Soviet Union, but he managed to escape, bring to us valuable secret information. Intelligence service suggests publicly celebrating a successful event, but your approval is needed.
Yeah, fuck it. Let's celebrate it. It's the Soviets. I don't care about the Soviets. We're Imperial Japan. We're Imperial Japan. I don't care about the Soviets. They killed their emperor. We have an emperor. We don't need that shit spreading to our island. Let's piss them off. Why is Mongolia colored red? I just noticed that. Greece just ordered three of the heavy cruisers. When did I get Mongolia? Someone explain this to me. I did not take that in a piece. Oh, wait. Yes, I did. I forgot. We took that from China. Why the fuck did I take Mongolia from China? Josh. Josh. This is your fault. You let me do something stupid again. Yeah, don't talk like that, Rainy. Enjoy the lay down. You're not allowed to have the good night until after I visit, okay? So next year. Possibly. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I need a war with somebody. I'm going broke. What I have up this time? You let me take Mongolia in a peace deal with China, which is no connection whatsoever to my nation. Why did you let me do this? Why did you let me do that? At a press conference, the journalist asked if you consider the Italian Empire a possible enemy for the future. Um, I don't believe there'd be a war with... I don't want to piss off the Italians. They don't. Ha they literally have no ships. Going to war with Italy does nothing for me. Yeah, I'll take the prestige. I got plenty of it. Greece wants two Nintendo classes. Mexico would like three. Latvia would like to buy a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle class. Okay.
Doesn't matter, Josh. You're always going to get the blame. It's always going to be on you. <laughs> Runus, I run a military hierarchy here. When shit goes wrong, shit rolls downhill. <laughs> and Josh let me build a really bad ship design. So he gets to blame for everything. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. I'm actually like, what the hell is going on? Italy has no fleet. And they have African colonies. Does Mongolia get oil? If Mongolia gets oil, there's there's no blame on you, Josh, and I'm happy. If Mongolia gets oil, you get no blame. <laughs> That'd take a while to get the French to go to war with us. Actually, Soviet Union does have 100 ships again. Their army logistics are 35. My army logistics are at 14%. Yeah, their army would kick our ass. I mean, a war you know, between Japan and Russia, you're talking human wave attacks against suicide attacks. It's... Uh, yeah. You know, imagine this in your head. If Russia actually fought Japan in World War II, you know, fought a two-front war like the rest of us were, imagine how bloody that would have been. <laughs> Jesus. Anything to help my GDP? Yes, I'll make, fr I'll make friends with the Spanish for now. I'll make friends with the Spanish. If it lets me get a higher GDP and a higher naval budget, I will take that. And I'm running out of money fast. I need to piss off the French quicker. But a quickliness. And they're actually, according to politics, they are the most powerful nation right now, too. <laughs> I probably should be pissing off the Russians. They'll go to war with me sooner. Josh, you say that like I don't have any shame. I mean, I mean, go ahead and post them. Well, you saying that actually just reminded me, Josh. I, I just couldn't get it out of my head for a second. I was just laughing internally. Uh, you posting that just reminded me of that Family Guy episode when they first visit the White House and they're talking about all the hidden shit in the basement. Piss off the Russians.
And also that Family Guy episode where he got pictures of him in bed with uh, a bunch of people. I just ordered that one, too. Both good TV shows. Oh, he was saying you were in charge of me when I made the stupid peace deal and I took Mongolia. <laughs> what are you watching a show with your little sis and listening to us on the side or something <laughs> China is offering a trade agreement which it turns out to be yeah no fuck you China Richmond complained they are getting harassed by Soviet Union. I really can't afford to do this, but negative time relations with the Soviet Union? Yeah, let's send the fleet. All right, who are we going to war with first? Yeah, let's just keep pissing off the Russians. We'll go back to war with them. But we'll piss off the French at the same time. Let's piss off the most powerful navy in the world right now. But uh, we'll go to war with Russia first anyway. Maybe we can grab the Sakhalin Islands this time. I was about to say, you're probably sitting there watching with her, but you're so bored with it, you just had your phone on and a headphone listening to me talk. I don't know. <laughs> Spanish Empire increases its Navy budget considerably. How should we respond? No, I don't want to mess with our GDP. I don't want to mess with my budget. Yeah, I, I can afford negative five on the rest. Negative five on prestige, I can afford the on the rest. I'm not happy with. I want to try and keep us imperial for as long as I can. Spanish Empire sent us old domain demanding financial compensation for our discovered acts of espionage. Government is interested in your opinion. Refuse. Fuck them. We fought a cold war with them for how long? It destroyed my economy because they didn't want to fight us. So, screw them. <laughs> nice one, Rainy. Okay, this fucking Kokori is dangerous. No, that is true. They would have gotten a better peace deal out of Russia than they would have gotten out of the U.S. Then again, imagine imagine what a peace deal with Russia would have been like for them. As far as far as, as far as everybody's concerned, Japan got the best peace deal of any any of the belligerents in World War II. They got the best peace deal of all. Imagine what Japan would be like today 
if it had fallen under the Russian sphere of influence at the time or the Soviet influence. Let's piss them off a little bit more. It's 1902, so I don't think we can say anything about Stalin. I think we can talk about Lenin, though. Honestly, I don't think you would have seen all the technological advancements that came out of Japan, especially in the 80s. I mean, like, come around to the 80s, only 40 years after the war, and you're looking at, like, everybody's looking at Japan like it's going to be taking over the world again. That would have never happened if the Soviets had gotten their hands into it. And then we probably wouldn't have manga and anime and all the rest of the good stuff that comes out of there either. Ring of Red. I don't remember that one. I do not remember that game. PS2 game called Ring. I'm looking that up right now because I do not remember that. It's actually a strategy game, too. Ooh. Oh, that's why I don't remember it. I joined the army when it came. <laughs> I joined the army the year it came out. That's why I don't know about this game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That is interesting. I'm, I'm going to read this out loud. The game is based on an alternate history theory that after the defeat of Nazi Germany and fascist Italy near the end of World War II, Japan was conquered and occupied by both Soviet and American forces rather than solely by the U.S. as an actual history. The occupation created two countries, consisting of the North governed by a pro-communist government and the South by a pro-democracy government with Hokkaido occupied Soviet forces. Tensions between the two Japans were at an all-time high during the Cold War with the Japanese War. Similar in course to the actual Korean War taking place with armored fighting walkers, giant walking mechs. Oh, yeah, of course, it's ja yeah, it's a Japanese game, so it's got to have mechs. I want to play this. I can't get this on the computer, can I? Because I would stream this. God, I hate you for bringing it up now. I hate you for bringing it up. I want to play that so bad right now. Jeremy, how we doing this evening? No, no, no. Don't worry, Riley. Your honor was never in question. American. Yeah, that's a <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so that's the premise of it, but it's got mechs. So, yeah, I, I, I really want to play it. <laughs> Space Cruiser, thank you for subscribing. A PS2 emulator. So, I'm not sure what that is. I'll have, to find, I'll have to look it up. I 
I mean, that's that is really interesting. It, it's kind of like a North Korea, South Korea, but it's more like an East West Germany thing. Korea only got split after the war started. So it's more of, it's less of a Korean thing and more of like an East-West German thing and a North-South Japan thing. So to me, that's very interesting. That's a, a really good what if. God, I want to play that now. Josh, you, you now have something else to be blamed on you. You now have something else to be blamed on you. Bringing up a game. <laughs> I want to play it and I want to stream it. Because that sounds so frigging interesting. Oh. All right, let's piss off the French again. Well, I'm hoping you're enjoying my content space. Uh, I'm I'm one of the I'm basically the, like one of the newest YouTubers onto the scene with this, but uh, I hope you enjoy what I do. I'm just a little more vulgar than everybody else who does it. PS2 emulators are PC programs that make... Pl okay. Okay, yeah. Ooh. Maybe I will be playing this game on the channel after all. Well, I'm still sober. I got to write this down. Now, it's not something I will get in trouble with with Sony for using, I hope. Very good. Pissed off France again. Now, let's piss off the Russians again. Wait, 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 wait. What happened here? <laughs> okay, so we beat the shit out of Soviet Union. And now they're the third most powerful fleet. They're the third most powerful nation, even though we kicked their ass in the last war. What happened? How are they rated higher than the UK? And China is rated higher than the UK. What is going on in this timeline? What the hell is going on right now? Fuck it, let's piss them off again. I want to take the Sakhalin Islands this time, at least one of them.
Oh, and uh, Space Cruiser, if you're interested, uh, here's a link to my uh, Discord channel if you're interested in joining. Uh, we have a lot of fun here in the chat, but uh, we get crazy in the Discord also. Uh, yeah, they, uh, so you have the full campaign release now. I know guys have been doing this for this, uh, game for years when there was no campaign. Uh, the campaign's very, you know, there's really no good way of going about it, wrong way of going about it. It's fun to play. Uh, you know, since there is a campaign, you're just not making these random battles up. So I think it's worth buying. I mean, I wait for it to go on sale, which it does generally, because even it was out on early access for how many years you can get it on sale, you know, on early access. So, uh, uh, the one, the one thing I like about the campaign mode is you are not the overall national leader. That's one thing this game does. It's you're not the leader of the nation. You are the head of the Admiralty, and that is it. You can influence national policy, but you don't set national policy. You have no control of the Army. You have no control of the Air Force. You have no control of national policy. You can influence it, and that's it. So that's actually one of the, probably one of the most interesting things about this game is you don't have full control of it. You have your own plans. Your government has their own plans, and you're... Army has its really, really stupid plans sometimes. You know, when you're playing as Austria, Hungary, or Italy, and they decide to invade the Balkans like morons. But I think it's worth I it I love this game. Yeah, how is the dog doing? Well, they don't sign naval treaties like the Washington Naval Treaty and stuff doesn't exist in this game. But like you're at war with somebody, you're you're winning. And like winning devastatingly, and then all of a sudden, like your nations will have peace with each other, even though you like you didn't want it. You'll say, No, don't do a peace deal, and your nation will still do a peace deal. I didn't even realize we had I didn't even know we had an alliance with the British. That this is this is stuff that goes on in the game. Our alliance with the British Empire is broken. I didn't even know we had an alliance. <laughs> Nice repotty trains okay with people. So that that to me, Jeremy, that sounds like a very fast recovery that he's going through. Sounds like he's actually working. Sounds like he's getting along faster than most would. Now let's piss off the Russians again. We're almost at war with the Russians again. I need to send more Soviet infidels to the bottom of the ocean. Dogs are still a problem. He shakes with large. Okay, that's understandable. But I mean, from what from what you originally posted to now, I mean, it sounds like he's recovering pretty quickly.
Well, yeah, but that alliance doesn't exist in this game off the start. So this game starts, uh, the campaign starts in 1890. So that alliance does not exist. This is basically at a time period where Japan just kicked out all the Europeans. Now it's in the Soviet system. I'm saying the poor drunk snakes to David. What's the difference? <laughs> All right, we're at negative 29 million while building three ships. So our economy is recovering. And thankfully, people are buying our ships, which means we have we're over a billion dollars again because they've been buying our ships. Increase tensions with the French. Hopefully, we can finish the war with the Soviets before we go to war with the French. Get a year of recovery and then fight the French. And hopefully take Indochina from them. And then we're going to start working over to Chinese. Uh, only major nations exist as playables. Which really sucks. Because I want to play as the Ottomans. Which, which I think it's bullshit they left them out. Yeah, they didn't have a large navy. But Ottoman was still a major power in the time period. Especially in 1890, at the start, at the, if you go to the earliest start date, Ottoman Empire is still a, it's a major player. It's a major player until the 1920s. War with the Soviets. All right, there's a fleet here that's not moving, so the Naha fleet. Go engage them. The so Sabo fleet, move up to Vladivostok. And hopefully engage that battleship. This time I want Sakhalin Island. We need to take Sakhalin Island. They're, I don't think they're ever going to release a DLC for this game. Yeah, honestly, the a game like this, I'd rather play a minor nation like I like Austria, which is you know a major power at the time, is still considered basically a minor nation, and you see how hard that campaign was. So I would love to play. As like Korea, Sumatra. There, there's tons of other nations I would love to play as. Just to start from the bottom. Honestly, Greece should be, even though it's not a major power at the time, was actually a very big naval power at the time. I mean, Greece in this time period is still basically a new nation just broke away from the Ottoman Empire, but they had a powerful navy at the time. So I, as far as I'm concerned, Greece and the Ottoman Empire should both be represented as major powers in the 1890 campaign. Yeah, it was just an arms race. There was no actual like fighting between them. And actually, uh, <laughs> it was pretty well represented. Uh, if you might, if you look at my Austrian campaign, which ended early because the uh, the last game update broke the save files, I was actually like, my my nation was building those battleships for them. Chile, Argentina, and Brazil were buying all their battleships from me, <laughs> so they all had the same exact battleships, and they're buying them like three or four at a time. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was during the stream they released the patch. It was during the stream that the patch came out. 
That's why the China campaign ended when it did. That's why the Austrian campaign ended. The, it literally came out during the stream. <laughs> if I had known about it, I probably would have. I probably would have skipped the stream that night and done uh, War Tales or something. Ooh, we have a meeting engagement. I am not allying with the Austro-Hungarians. That just sounds like a bad deal. Good, we caught this fleet. Two battleships, a heavy cruiser, and three light cruisers. Our two new heavy cruisers are in the field, too. And they're still using their old heavy cruisers. Let's jump into this one. I'm going to step away real fast while this is loading. I'll be right back. It's already loaded, but I'll be right back. Hold on. And I'm back. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I actually am aware of that. I would actually love to visit it. Let's put the light cruisers in a battle line with the heavy cruisers. Or old destroyers. So I don't know if you guys noticed during my main campaign, the destroyers and the light cruisers were acting weird. So, I'm going to put the destroyers on scout for now, and I'm going to see if they do the same exact damn thing again where they charge into the enemy fleet instead of scouting. It looks weird, but I still like the design of this heavy cruiser. Let's go find us some Soviets. And actually, uh, Space Cruiser also, uh, if you're interested in naval history, uh, no. I Yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about a time period where that's really come to an end. Oops, we're firing. Would the light cruisers close in the battle line with us? 
Hopefully they will. They got some catching up to do. <laughs> what are we firing at here? Wait, uh, have they been buying French ships? Why am I looking at a fucking floating hotel? But uh, if you're really interested in naval history, uh, actually here in the U.S., we actually do have one of the older, one of the old protected class cruisers or light cruisers down in Philadelphia. Which is, uh, I think that that might be the last one of that class also. And that's a cruiser from, that's the protecteds or before the armors. But yeah, I've actually seen that ship brought up several times in multiple videos. I still haven't seen an image of it in any of those videos, but it gets brought up, brought up a lot. So I'd love to visit it. Well, yeah, because they bought most of their stuff from the French. Well, yeah, because World War II, everything became aircraft carriers. Except here in America, because we kept the uh, Missouri and... We kept one battleship in use into the 90s. I mean, the battleship Missouri, which is a World War II pre-World War II battleship, was in service through the Gulf War. I think people forget about that. Oh, you mean the uh, designs that could have been and thank God were never built? <laughs> That's a, a lot of ships fall into that category. Looks cool on paper, but uh, should not be built. So I'm, I'm guessing you're a huge fan of uh, Dracniffle's channel. I'm not even sure these things are refits. No, that's just uh, the guys running the USS Texas and the USS New Jersey because they both have their own uh, YouTube channels. That's them just like trying to garner views. That's all that really is. It's more expensive to run a battleship than it is to run what, uh, than an aircraft carrier, to be honest with you. They'd have to do a total refit. They'd have to take out the oil-burning engines, have to throw in nuclear engines. It, it's, it's too expensive a prospect. Running those things on oil, that's never going to happen. So as far as I'm concerned, every time you hear something about that, ooh, hello. That's just them just drumming up trying to drum up views. Yeah, but she was active reserve. Which basically means like she was just sitting in dry dock for years and years and years. Not even dry dock, she was just rusting away in a harbor. Have you seen the ships? in the active reserve you don't understand where I'm coming from the ships in the active reserve look worse than mothballs
What? You were coming in close. What the hell? Oh, look, so my destroyers are out here. Not scouting anything. But at least they're not charging into the enemy fleet this time. So let's put them on screen and see what happens. Well, that's also just like uh, in Iraq, we actually had to bring back Vietnam War veterans to show us how to do river patrols. She was coming in on a torque run, damn it. Turn away, turn away, drop speed. Rifle rudder. We are not in a good position right now. This ship has forced us completely out of position. And our lights still haven't even caught up to us. Put us in the goddamn bottom so we can turn back around on our heavies, please. That was not a good hit for 11 inch batteries. No, exactly. They they look good. I love those designs too because they look good on paper. But you, you, sometimes you got to think. Thank God these things were never built. They're great designs. I mean, they're they're fun to speculate over. To be honest with you, that's the best part about them, especially over the what could have been. I put the DDs on screen. They're actually going to engage this fleet. Nice. Oh, she's done. Let's turn back around. So our light cruisers are actually crossing the T right now. Problem is with this game, like most of these shots. So even though they're hitting the deck, the way the armor penetration works in this game, they're not going to go through the deck and down through the hole like they should. Like they would in real life. They model it as best they can, but they can only do so much with the modeling. Okay, my DDs are actually doing a proper job of screening right now. You guys just fire HE, please. I'd love to know what the CA Rosia was thinking. She was completely out of the battle line. And charging in at us. I've never seen that. It does, but there's only so much you can do with all the uh, with the hulls. There's only so much you can do. Most of your designs end up looking the same after a point, because you know what a hull can handle, what it can't handle. Unless I'm sitting here doing it drunk, and then you see some weird shit show up.
Like the Mo Guns design. Or the Josh said it was good design. But like if you want to see some people do like true experimentation with this game, I would have to suggest you go look at Stealth 17, Brother Monroe, uh, Payroon. Uh, Payroon doesn't really do this too much anymore, but he's another good one. Or if you're just looking for like weird, stupid designs, you look at Mean Tex. Or the Black Pants Legion. Oh, it's a possibility. But that that heavy cruiser was running in a separate division. The two battleships are in their own division. Well, we sank a ship at the back. Okay. And their fire is concentrated on my light cruisers right now. I'm happy about that. This battle's going on in a different directions for me than it normally does. But yeah, when it comes to this game, you want to see the wild and crazy during a mainstream campaign, you watch me and Tex from the Black Pants Legion. You kind of want to see standardization, you watch Stealth 17, Brother Monroe. Unless you're looking at the, uh, the Shipyard Champions type of stuff, which I, I, I'm not involved in that and all, but they come up with some wacky stuff for that. I've been watching Stealth for years. I love his channel. Well, the Deep Eddy right now is the lead ship of the division, so she's controlling the entire division. I can control every ship individually, but they're going to follow her. I can change their targeting, but they're going to follow her unless I break her from the division like this. So I just broke the snake bite off the division. Now she's going to sail separately. Now if I add her back into the division, she's going to try to become the trail ship. So now she's going to try to move to the back of the battle line. Which is... Actually, probably not a bad idea having the heavy at the front of the battle line and the heavy at the back of the battle line. That's actually not a bad idea. I should probably do that a lot more than I do. <laughs> now that I think about it. So yeah, whichever the lead ship of that division is, they're going to follow that lead ship. And now Splinter's damaged, so she's going to fall back from lead and the O'Neill's probably going to take lead. Which one took the lead? Splinter stone lead, even with damage. Okay. But this is something else. So I have this division under AI control, and now they're sailing through my main battle line division. That's a problem with this game. The AI making stupid decisions. Anime AI does very well. Your friendly AI can be your own worst enemy. I can see right now my deep Eddie. I, I'm letting her target her own ships right now. She's targeting two separate ships. She has the mains on the throne, but in the and her secondaries on the Suvorov. Oh yeah, my, my my general rule is the meme classes are the destroyers and torpedo boats. So the new class are like cruisers and I actually don't have any in this fleet right now. 
Now we still have, we have three voluptuouses in this fleet. Uh, yeah, so that's basically, that's, uh, so we have a head formation and a breast formation. So a breast formation is basically the diamond or the uh, wedge. You can use that formation if you want to, but uh, battle line is basically the best way to go. Especially at this point in the game, because everything's still very close range engagements. As you go on in years, the engagements come, they get out to the horizon. Because of where we are in the game, we're not even at 1900 yet, we're still right on top of each other, as it as it would have been in the time period. But as the game progresses towards past 1920, the engagement range goes out to the horizon. Yeah, I, I have rules until I'm drunk. Then when, once I'm drunk, you know the rules go out the window. I reload on these 11. 61 seconds. That's actually not bad with a trained crew. But uh, let's get the Eddie focus on the Niper and finish her off, please. D double D and <laughs> I mean, this is a small engagement for this game. So, which campaign? I think it was my aborted American campaign. Where I had, what, like 50 torpedo boats in one battle against a fleet of like 30 Spanish ships. And it was so many ships on the battlefield that like the game was lagging and I had to retreat away half of them. That was a, that was a friggin' cool fight though. It's still stuck in my head because it was an evening fight. There was fog and all the explosions and the cook-offs. The screen was just bright pink and red. We haven't had that yet this, this stream. Hopefully we'll get that. I'm surprised that battleship's actually not taking too much in the way of damage. Snake bite. Who are you firing at? No. Focus on the battleship, please. Kathy, you already focused on the battleship. Voluptuous, focus on the battleship. And Betty, focus on the battleship also and send them out the sweet curses that you always send out in all your commercials. I can hear Betty White standing on the bridge of the Betty White and that sweet grandmother voice of hers dropping deadpan curse lines. Well, you, you, you can you can wear watermelons. Depends on how drunk you are. Never underestimate the power of alcohol and fruit. <laughs> this fucking kikori is dangerous. The only there's no flavor. The only thing I'm getting is a slight burn at the back of my throat. This stuff is dangerous. Like I said, I'm going to drink the bottle, but I'm never going to buy it again. This is dangerous. <laughs> Jeez. 
She's listing. Have a good night, Jeff. Happy hangovers. Ooh, good hit. There's a sniper. Alright, finish off the Immersky, and then we'll finish the battleship off if the rest of the ships can't do it. No, she's about done. When it comes to Betty White, I don't think they're bloopers. <laughs> She comes off as a sweet old lady with a goddamn razor sharp mind. I'll send you for a whirl. I was glad you can join us, Space. Yeah, so, uh, my regular videos come out, uh, I do four standard videos a week, two GTCW, two of uh, your, of uh, Ultimate Admirals, and I stream Ultimate Admiral every Friday. Uh, time changes depending on what I got going on. I do uh, GTCW every Saturday, and every Sunday or so I do uh, War Tales. So, uh, stop on by in any game if they're interested in you, and I might be adding Crusader Kings into the live stream lot sometime during the week. I'm not sure yet. But, uh, have a good night and uh, happy hangovers to you. And with that, we ended the battle. Perfect timing. We lost eight crewmen. <laughs> they lost 3,100. Almost 3,200 crew. They got no hits on us. These guys probably had too much from the whiskey ration and fell overboard during the fightings. That's what happened. We got 26,892 victory points to their five. Sank two battleships, a heavy cruiser, and three light cruisers. <laughs> that is very good for a day's work. And uh, don't forget to join the Discord. If you uh, have not done so yet. We always got something going on in there. And I also put out announcements about live streams and uh, regular videos. If I do a surprise live stream, I just do put it up in there first. So, uh. Join the community. Have some fun. We're a little crazy, but we're all good people. Yeah, those eight falling, that basically works out to like one man per ship had too much to drink and fell off. <laughs> and they already want a peace. Fuck you, no. I went to Sacklin Islands. No peace. No peace until I have Sacklin Island. At least one half of it. Let's move up here now. This fleet didn't fight us. Let's see if we can get these two fleets into a combat and then see with the new heavy cruisers. See if we actually have enough tonnage to uh, start an invasion. We got to build another Kragari class. And the last one was the Half Dan. So we'll call this one the uh, Seagull Snake and I. The Yokosuka. I gotta send the Half Dan out yet, yeah, but we'll wait until these fleet actions are done. Fill a one gallon jug would have ever clear two or three packets of cherry Kool Aid and six ten. Oh, God. I'm afraid to know what that tastes like, 
but it sounds so good at the same time. Jokingly called them cherry bombs. <laughs> I, they, that actually sounds really good. I want to try that. You know, I'm writing that down right now. I got I got to do that. I got to make that. Now, do you chill it while it's pickling or do you just leave it in a dark space? I am definitely going to make that. Like I said, do you, do you chill it while it's pickling or do you just leave it in, a, in a, like a cool, dry place in the dark? I am definitely going to make that. That sounds really good. They're an acquired taste. Okay, so yeah, so just throw them in the pantry. Perfect. I just got to put it in the high pantry where my nephews can't find it. Because they'll think they're fucking dull pickles and try to eat them. All right. I'm going to try making that. And we do have another meeting engagement. Nice. And one fleet against a battleship and a torpedo boat. <laughs> oh God, let's let's go sink this thing. It's an acquired taste. I still want to try it. I still want to try making that. You guys get in here. No, I don't. I did not want the destroyers in there. God damn it. You put a scout. Break off the two CAs and start the back now. There we go. Just before one to five inch long, two inch thick cucumber will get most people drunk because you have to remember every clear. Yeah. Well, honestly, the first the first thought that went through my head was all the girls I know who are going to try to eat those things. That's exactly why I'm going to make it. Because <laughs> they're going to try and show off their skills while they eat it. And I'm looking forward to it. And where the fuck are my destroyers going? Uh, 
Yeah, you guys keep doing what you're doing. That's fine. As long as you're out of the way. <laughs> as long as you're out of the way. Let's speed this along because we're at far engagement range. Is that going to... It is going after the destroyers. Wait, this is an Austro-Hungarian design. This is an Austro-Hungarian ship. This is the ship I didn't like when I designed it. But worked at... Oh, the Russians didn't build this. They took it from the Austrians in a fucking peace deal. Because this is actually a hole that I like. I thought I was going to hate it, but I ended up loving it. But it's no good past 1900. Oh no, they're just like... If you, if you saw my video with friends like these... This, this is an AI glitch. They're just steaming off in one direction. If I order them to turn around... And they're not going to turn around. Watch. Oh, they are. Because somehow they're on battle line. That makes sense. Even though I told them to scout. I just realized they're on battle line. I, I gave them scout orders and they're on battle line. Okay, let's see if they actually come back to the fight. Like I said, if you saw if you saw the friends like these video and you watched that chapter, it, it, it's like the AI, my own AI, that my my side's AI was trying to fuck me throughout the entire battle, and not in a fun, pleasurable way either. Winnifield Scott gives me better reach arounds than I got in that fight. No hits, let's get in closer. Captain, get us close enough for boarding hooks and sabers. Let's go. take a picture for the thumbnail of the last stream. I gotta get one this stream. It's not the ship we want to hit. Am 
My DDs are doing something. Well, you're doing something, boys. Keep it up. Keep it up. This fire coming in, nothing's hitting. Probably because we have too much fire coming in. Alright. Like cruisers, let's play you off. Have you move away. I think we got there's too much fire going at the one ship. So their splashes are interfering with each other. There we go. That's better. Now we're hitting. Still waiting for a cook-off. We haven't had a cook-off in the stream yet. But they've become rarer since the update. So, we gotta keep a watch out for one. We hear something cooking off, we gotta go look at it. Tell you what, well, this Japanese whiskey I'm drinking right now, the Kikori, kind of, it's kind of got that Everclear feel to it. It's like there's no taste. All you feel is a burn. Kind of like drinking Grey Goose now. I think about it. Zero percent chance to hit my elevens. Yeah, we have we have not had a single cook off this stream yet. Don't worry, night's still young. Well, it's a whiskey made from rice, so it's kind of weird. Yeah, literally the only two ingredients it mentions are rice and water. So it's kind of interesting. And here come my destroyers. Crossing the T on my battle line. On my battle line. So now they're going to move in front of my heavy cruisers. They're going to block my shots. You guys get the fuck out of here, please. Let's go back to retreat.
Once the destroyers start moving in past your heavy line, they, the heavies won't fire. Hey, you know what? No, as long as they're here, fuck it. They got torpedoes. Let's go. Let's go. I think it's going to take a while to sink this thing, so let's go use the torpedoes. They're here. Torpedo run! And they got 30 knots of speed, which is pretty decent against this hull. And I gave them the fast launch torpedoes. They don't have long range, but the torpedoes travel fast. An aggressive launch. I'll let you know in a second. Duds. All fucking duds. Leonardo. Launch. Warps out. Retreat. All three good hits. No big explosions, though. I'm a little surprised by that. Barely any flooding. MNT, give me an aggressive. All three out. Get out of there. Three more good hits. For a ship her age, she should not be taking hits like this. Angelo. Right, we're about to eat one. Give me an aggressive launch. Detach. Get out. Raphael. She's taking more hits than she should be. Uh, they did nerf the. They uh, kind of nerfed the torpedo boats and destroyers a little bit because of. Uh, I guess they were watching me and Tex. I don't. Probably watching Tex, not me. Texas is a big fish in the ocean. I'm a tiny fish. So they're probably watching Tex doing what I was doing. Because we both love the uh, torpedo boat strategy. So uh, the last update really nerfed the uh, torpedoes and torpedo boats and destroyers.
Yeah, that's kind of what, like in my Italian campaign, you saw me get away from it very fast, where I would have kept it going a lot longer. I got rid of my torpedo boats right away because of that nerf. It's they're they're useless now. But you saw at the beginning of the campaign where I'd normally wreck house, where like you said, you give me ten torpedo boats against ten enemy ships, I'm gonna single ten of those enemy ships. My fleet was destroyed. They they totally nerfed what they could do. So my early game strategy just went out the window. So it's like going forward with the way I build my fleets up, you might see me not build torpedo boats first year and just build like four light cruisers and go, yeah, I don't have to hit the torpedo boats, but I got four light cruisers. They're not hitting shit, but they still do more damage than torpedo boats do now. How is this thing still afloat after taking all of those torpedoes? It's got 2% float and it's getting it back after how many torpedo hits? Yeah, it took a lot of the excitement of the early game away. Like those those early battles with my torpedo runs, those are so much fun. And it, that the last update just took that away. While we wait for this thing to go down, the age of this bottle of whiskey. No date on it. Got a batch number and approval stamp, but no year. Give us another 8 to 100 victory point. That took longer than it really should have. That took a lot longer than it should have. But Taya Trotza took longer to sink. The amount of torpedoes that ship ate should have broken her back. Well, Ang, that, that very design. Actually, that, that's got to be a Russian design because for the Austrians, that's a heavy cruiser design, which I used very effectively for a long time in my Austrian campaign. I love that hull. But I never had it as a battleship hull. For me, that was a heavy cruiser hull. It might have been a battleship hull because I but because of how long I wait before doing battleships, I might have never just had the chance to use it. No, the AI spends an order amount of time pump giving uh new pumps to every goddamn section of a ship that we don't get in our own ships. No, no, no. They're overboard because they've been drinking before the battle. All right, let's move both of these fleets. I still don't think I'm going to have the tonnage for this, especially for the Sacklins. Let's move off Sac South Sacklin and see if I can't start an amphibious invasion. I know I don't have the tonnage for this. You know, 32 and 35. Yeah. We got 67,000 tons. We're not going to have the tonnage for it. We're going to try, though. We're going to see.
And honestly, Josh, if I say, if I stop handing out whiskey to my crew, they would stop joining my fleet. To be honest with you, I'd have to I'd have to press gang people out of prison. All right, let's see. Do we have the tonnage? Nope, we do not. Fucking knew it. What's in this fleet? Betty White, Captain. Nope. Yeah, so you guys go back to Sasebo. No, you guys are in the half fleet. Yeah, you guys go back to Sasebo. Where are you going? You're leaving. A battleship and a light cruiser got away. Now, if I actually had the tonnage to take Sacklin Island, that means I'd have the tonnage to take Georgia. So I'd land on Sacklin Island and then shift my fleet to the Baltic to land in Georgia. Tonnage guns are now Mark III. Nice. In 1940, it was discovered. And when was it discovered in northern China, by chance? Because northern China already has oil. So does northeast China. So I'm not sure if to follow the timeline on oil discoveries in this game. Why do the Soviets have a fleet off of Western North America? What's going on there? Okay, that's odd. So the Soviets and the Americans have an issue because of Soviet naval strength off of Western U.S., but there's no Soviet fleet here. And they hold no Pacific Islands. Interesting. Speaking of which, politics. Let's go piss off the French a little more. Tell them that Napoleon was a tiny man that everybody pissed on. Which is pretty much true, though. Though he wasn't a tiny man. That's his fucking... That's complete bullshit, but yeah, the tiny man thing was part of pissing on him. Really? 1907. Okay. So it's discovered a few years early then because uh, it's 1903 and they already have it. And there are no more Soviet fleets in the area. This battleship's leaving. Ah, this might have been a bad idea. Because we actually don't have a high enough war score to grab anything. Now, is my army doing something nice and like invading southern Siberia from Kamchatka? No, it's not. My army can invade southern Siberia or eastern Siberia at its will, but it is not. Thirty-one percent army logistics. We have yeah, we'd still lose, but they, my army could at least be doing something. 
you know, besides waiting on the Imperial Japanese Navy to do something, you know, like. Never mind, that's kind of real life is actually now that I think about it. No, the army would be doing its own thing. Navy would be doing its own thing because they both hated each other. The thing is, 1903 was still kind of moving out of feudal Japan at this point. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the world map the way I haven't, you, you you kind of forget it's 1903, and we're seeing shit happen right now that didn't happen for another 40 fucking years, or in this case, shit that never happened. But at least Spain's still alive. In most of my campaigns, Spain is kind of dead at this point. No, I am not becoming allies with Austro-Hungarians. We are not doing that. I do not need the Habsburg chin in the Japanese royal family. All right, it's now January of 1904, so it's time to start looking at the research. What's going to take hull protection? Yes, I want that. Range finders... New destroyer design. Move those along before the year is over. Because we're coming up on the 1905 refit pretty quickly here. And the Soviets need to send me something to sink. They got manpower. They can throw it away. I think in the next generation, Japan will have enough manpower to throw away like it did in real life. Oh, shit. Ank, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go on to, like, uh, the AI website. Uh, now you brought that up. <laughs> the AI website that Rainy Day brought up uh, a stream or two ago. And put he X for a picture of Hirohito with the Habsburg chin. And then put that up in Discord. I need to see what that looks like. <laughs> I got too many I got too many programs running right now to do that, but I need to see that. Germany with torpedoes is reliable as a long lance in 19... Imagine America had torpedoes that were that reliable in 1943. <sighs> Come on. Imagine anybody had torpedoes that reliable besides Japan.
Uh, I think it's called Crayola. I wrote it down. Hold on a second. Hopefully I did not throw it away. Hold on. I think that's what it's called. I got a problem. Like I got so many notes from so many different campaigns. I clean my desk off every week and sometimes I throw away notes that I shouldn't. I swear you, I don't know how you guys do, but some of you guys remember my campaigns better than I do. And I'm running the damn things. Because uh, I think that's the site where he did the uh, the picture. Yeah, there's a, if you go into Oldman General Chat, oh, that's probably where I can find it. Hold on. Yeah, it's crayon.com. Hold on. That's it. I just found it in the Discord. Four months, one month, one month. Okay. Right to the end, no peace with Soviets. Until I have enough high, high enough war score, at least. Real politic here. Real politic. Oop, what do we got here? Torpedo boat. Yeah, we'll let that go. We'll let that go. That's not worth it. It'll cost me more money to hunt that damn thing down and sink it than it's actually worth. Engines, control station, what gun layout next? What does that give us? Four center line. Eh. Might be useful. Working things use, thankfully. Everybody likes us for being at war with them, except for the Spanish. Speaking of which, let's piss off the French again. Tell them croissants are not a real food. As much as I love croissants, you gotta tell them something sucks. Besides their cooking, everybody knows their cooking sucks. Except for croissants, which are really good. So I gotta say, when I visited France, I went to France for... Uh, 
was in France for the 60th anniversary of D-Day. Spent a long weekend there. Had a lot of fun. I, I, I had a total blast. The food fucking sucked, though. I hated the food. But I did get treated very well when I was there. Is that, yeah, is that a torpedo boat? Uh, put up a picture in the Discord of the closest thing you could find. AI's got to know what a Habsburg chin is. Everybody, that is such a search term on Google, it's not even funny. Crips are on Eric's <laughs> No disagreement. Like I, said, I, I had a great time in France, like my time in Normandy. I, I, I know I got better treatment than most people would have gotten. You know, I'm, I'm there on the 60th anniversary of D-Day with my buddy, uh, Andy Ledoux. Uh, no relation to the singer. And we're both from the 173rd. We're stationed down in Italy. We didn't get picked for the anniversary jump into D-Day. So we both put in for a pass to go to Normandy. You approved it like tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to Normandy. You just went a long weekend. No, we went like, I'm I'm a big history nut. I'm like, I'm going to Normandy. He's a big history nut. We're going to Normandy. We couldn't find any hotels. We couldn't find any campsites. So me and him just literally jumped on a train from fucking Vicenza, Italy to fucking St. Mary Glee. <laughs> it was just a long fucking train ride. And uh, we just planned on sleeping in hedgerows. Thankfully, his uncle, who was a master sergeant in the army at the time, was uh, at Normandy at the same time. And he actually got a campground. There's a campground literally right outside the town square of Carentan. And it was like three euro a night. Five euro if you wanted milk and bread in the morning, which was fucking awesome. So five euro and you got three euro a night to sleep. Five euro if you wanted to, if you wanted to eat. It's like pff, goddamn cheap as hell. It's like seven dollars American at the time. And uh, every day we were there, just because we were, we were American power troopers, like we ate in somebody's house for dinner every night. People just in. Come over here, talk with us, come have dinner with us, come here and have lunch with us. I had such a great experience in Normandy. Greatest experience I'd had in Europe. Except for the food. <laughs> the food was horrible. Otherwise, the people are great. Outside of outside of Paris, people in France are great. Great people. Parisians suck. And if I have any Parisian viewers. Yeah, I don't I don't apologize. I've I've never had a good I've never had a good experience in Paris. But I suggest if you never if you never been to France, I'm gonna say it. Go to Paris, hit the big sites because you got to. But Normandy coast is a must hit. Once you're outside of Paris, it is so great. You got to visit.
Well, yeah, like I, th- I think uh, most Parisians' problems with Americans is that they're actually the, the children of Americans, and they don't like to admit that. You got to remember, in two world wars, the population, the male population of France was wiped out, and Americans came through in both wars. So, uh, yeah, most of them are Americans and just don't want to admit it, and they hate us for it. Even though grandma was doing what she had to do to survive. And after World War II, they're basically half German and half American. I don't think it's nothing against a woman who did that. I, I hold nothing. I I know something got treated badly, you know. Something got treated very badly, especially girls who took up with German women, uh, with German men, but uh, they did what they had to do. You do what you got to do to survive. I hold, I hold that against nobody. Some people do. Some people are ideologues. People don't understand that you have to do some things to survive. Okay, Russians, send me a fleet to sink, please. You're moving away. You're moving away. You're just sitting in the med. You're just sitting in the med. You're sitting in the baby skate. Where are you going? You're moving south. To join this fleet. Torpedo boat, where are you going? You're just sitting there. So it looks like the Russians are building a fleet in the North Atlantic. They're consolidating here. Where they're going to go, that's another question. Who else are they at war with? Us, the French, and the fucking Austrians. So we're the sideshow. We're the sideshow. Great. Just like when we're fighting the Spanish. We're a fucking sideshow. Welcome back, Jeremy. You know what? I should have designed a couple of battleships in the last fucking refit just to have tonnage. That's what I should have done. CL's done, so time to build another one. So we have the half dance, secret snake in the eye. This one will be Ivar the Boneless. We're going to Yokosuka. Speaking of which, I gotta move the two that are in Yokosuka out. So, what are you going to Sasebo? And the two Sasebo, we're moving one to Wakanai. That'll be, no, not the Kragari. Marilyn Monroe. And the other one is going to move her on. And that is the May West.
Yeah, that's just Hirohito in his fucking 90s. Yeah, you're right. The EIA does not know what a Habsburg chin is. That's just him in his fucking 90s. Literally, that's just him in his 90s. I, yeah, okay. They didn't poop so 15 minutes. Before. <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, he didn't stay in a bad location then, but like it, my personal experience, you spend two, three days in Paris at the most, hit the major sites and move the fuck on. And honestly, you don't even want to fly in and out of the Paris airport. The Charles de Gaulle airport is literally the worst airport I've ever flown in and out of. I've flown through third world country airports that are better. But actually, like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking a little biasedly against that airport. I'm sure it's really not that bad. But uh, at the times I was flying through it when I was stationed in Italy, you're talking about Iraq and Afghanistan are going on. The French people were very against what we were doing. Like they had no problem with Afghanistan, but they had a problem with Iraq, and I understand why. But when they saw like American soldiers fly through with our like our our baggage, they would lose our baggage. And you get flown halfway around the world before it got to where it needed to be. So our baggage is always lost, but never lost, if you know what I mean. And Greece would like to order two TMT, and yes, I'll sell those to you. And then there was that time the entire, you know, then there's that one time the entire uh, hangar collapsed. Uh, yeah. That happened when I was there too, so yeah. I don't have any good memories of that airport at all. Literally down the street from the Alpha Tower, the really music part was that the, he and the oldest granddaughter had a relationship for that summer. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, things like that happen. Sounds like a great time, though. I got to get back to Europe one of these years. I used to go. I used to visit Europe every two years until the pandemic. And then the pandemic set in. I gotta renew my passport and get the fuck back over there. Starting with a visit to Rainy Day. I gotta get him out to a bar and get him drunk with me. No, we are not doing a piece with them, as far as I'm concerned. You had time grabbing the AI couldn't do hands and food or both the same. Well, it can, if the AI can be racist. Like it like it was a few months ago, it can do shit like that. Programmers are more worried about AI being inclusive. You know, excluding everybody that's not white. And uh, yeah, so AI can do what it needs to do. It's just on the programmers.
She was part of the resistance and ran a whorehouse above the family's bakery that specialized in servicing an SS officers. Whenever, oh my god, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, basically, the, all these pictures I'm looking at Discord right now, they're just like Hirohito in his 90s. That's all they are. You know what's funny? We all, we all think about like, when we think about like the greatest generation and stuff like that, we, we hold them on such a high pedestal. But I swear to God, they were more sexually deviant than their kids in the 70s. I swear by, I swear by everything holy. They were more deviant than the kids in the 70s. It was just more accepted back then. And you'll never convince me otherwise. We all like to, we all like to hold our grandparents and the greatest generation on this fucking pedestal. But they knew how to have fun. Better than we do. No Russian fleets. Oh, it's January of 1905. Hey, boys, guess what? It's time to refit. All right, Crayon Eaters had three refits, so we're going to delete that design. It's not going to any refits because we actually don't even have them anymore. Which also means the Nintendos are going away because we got rid of them. It's not that they did what they had to. They just knew how to have to have fun better than we do, to be honest with you. They really did. All right, so the Voluptuous, no, nope, we got to start with the Destroyer. So the TMNT gets its first refit. All right, ready to drop some tonnage right there. 822 of 850. Get the better brothers. Steam expansion engine three, yes. Electric steering. Corp one armor, very good. I I what like I'm so busy chatting. I'm not even looking at what's being unlocked. This is why I love doing these streams. I I just love chatting with everybody. Cat ballistic. There we go. You didn't get the better propellant. We unlock Pickwick two. Ooh, we get to skip Pickrick 1. We go straight to Pickrick 2. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> we might start seeing some cook-offs, boys. Eighteen inch torpedoes. All right. Winston's 2 rangefinder. Radios. Layer 4. Hunter. Ooh. 843 of 850. Let's just go. We go 0.5 on the armor on this. All around. Nope. Eight forty nine of eight fifty on the reap fit. And she got a lot of goodies added in. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> you're not wrong the story is my like one of the things that a lot of my uh my mom and her siblings were pissed off about 
not my mom particularly, but like her siblings were pissed off about, like especially her male siblings. My grandfather never talked about the war. Because he, he did World War II and Korea. He never talked about either to them. And then I came along. The army, the only army veteran in a generation. He talked to me. He told me some fucking stories. And I was just I was at his house down in Florida, sitting at the kitchen table with him. We're just we're both we're just telling funny stories back and forth to each other. Not none of the real shit. We're just telling we're just telling the funny stories back and forth to each other. And my uncle was in the other room and he was about to walk into the kitchen when he heard us talking. And he sat there and he just stopped and listened. And he pulled me aside afterward. He was angry. He's like, my dad has never told us any of that. I'm like, well, me and him are more, we, me and him are brothers. We're not father, son. We're both veterans of the army. We have both been there, done that. We seen the stupid, we seen the worst of it. And we seen the funniest of it. And we were just telling the funny stories, but what we find funny, you'd probably find offensive anyway. <laughs> Graham, welcome back. No, we did unlock the double torpedo tubes. I don't I don't put double torpedo tubes on refit designs. They'll go on new designs, they don't go on refits. Because they actually jumped the weight up a lot. So I don't use them on a refit. God, I miss those conversations. They were so much fun. But you gotta understand, it's like when once you know the people who've been there, done that, you understand. It's like even if you look at like some some of the biographies that people write, like people read the stuff, and it's all in there. People just gloss over it. A lot of those biographies in World War II, people don't hold back. They say exactly what they did and what they've done, and they don't hold back at all. But people just tend to gloss over and try to forget the details. All right, so now we get to, because I delete, got rid of the torpedo boats. We do a new destroyer. I think we can go up to 1,050 tons now. No, we can go to 1,000. I thought we had 1,050. And because of this conversation, I know the exact class the ship is going to be named. To the ladies of Paris. And all the good work they did for the years. And the memories they provided. And it's not meant in a bad way. She gets 35, but let's do 33 for right now. Cramp the quarters, drop the range down. Main tower, get advanced tower 4. Still have the same destroyer funnel. We'll do a dual funnel again. Secondary tower, we still have armed tower, so that control key to get switched around facing backwards, so we get that uh free barbette. Let's drop you back. I don't want more than 
two funnels on here. Small bar bed up front. And we're going to go three inch guns on this one instead of the two inchers. Because we can still put that up in the tower. And there's the dualies. One stern. Come on, do what I tell you to do. One stern. Six torpedoes. 974 of a thousand tons. Let's start adding all the goodies. Somebody's got to over in Europe in the time period. A couple of years. Just insane. He was a test driver for F1 cars while he was there. One of the really good ones is that he ended up becoming really good friends with one of the German drivers that the guy's family was SS and his friend found a bunch of his grandfather's records from the war. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right, that's all the externals. Let's do all the internals now. Still underweight. Very good. To go more underweight. 956 of a thousand. Little hull. Reverse bulkheads. Anti flood. Puts us overweight, but we'll deal with that. I can just drop the speed a little bit. So using ballastite propellant. I'm a little put off by that. We should be beyond ballastite at this point. Fast propulsion, once it's two, advanced radio, minus four. 1,102, 1,000 tons. And we can solve that by, I think, dropping two knots off her speed. Yep, two knots exactly. 991 and 1,000. Belt armor's all the way up, so main deck. 998 to 1,000. Pitch and roll still suck. I think I'm still going to be taking guys out of prison to serve on these things, but uh, she is looking like a very modern destroyer for her time period. Going through them before signing the war corpse was interesting to see. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to read half those records. I think a lot of that shit's still classified, even to this day. I love when Google doesn't say what you say about the war, so you must be wrong or lying. Yeah. That's why I own books. That's why I own books. And that's why you go to the direct websites that have the things digitized, such as government web. I hate to say, sometimes government websites are more tr are more trustworthy because they can't keep track of the millions and millions and millions of pages of documents they put online. So you're going to find something that government thought like, yeah, nobody knows anything about this. Like, hey, I found this document. You guys published it. It's not secret. Greg, welcome back. All right, we're going to build five Ladies of Paris class. I don't know what names we would give them. But I think the class name is enough for the remembrance. I want to build four. I got to build one more.
Oh, you know what? I have a feeling if I look up Parisian brothel names from World War II, there's going to be a fucking list of them. I guarantee it. I'm going to look that up right now. Actually, I need to save the tab with Ring of Red. Start a new tab. I fucking call that there's a list. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> oh, my God. I goddamn called it. All right. La Chabonese, which I think probably means the chambers. The Sphinx. Monte What was the name of the other one? Where'd it go? The one two two. That's literally the name of it. Lay one two two. <laughs> The one, two, two, the number of the building. <laughs> I knew there was a list. <laughs> and these are all World War II brothels, except for Ladies of Paris. <laughs> No, you're right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you just go onto the websites. They don't even know what they, they don't even know what they have published sometimes. They really don't. I don't discuss my service time with my family whatsoever. I tell the funny stories and that's it. That's it. Made a mistake of talk, talking about, uh, I was talking to my cousin while drunk when I made a mistake of talking about him when I had a parachute malfunction and fell 600 feet without a parachute and survived. And my mom overheard it, so I've never talked about it again with anybody, even when I'm drunk. It's not the brothel class, it's the ladies of, the ladies of Paris class. Well, it's something they should have done from the beginning, Krieg. Rubbers have been around since the 1700s. So. It would be, but uh, say that out loud as an American. Let's leave the potty jokes behind. <laughs> That's why I sp that's why I spelt it out in English.
Ooh, no, 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 no. I like that for a Battleship series. We're going to do another harem class. But we'll name it after all those big girls you fantasize about, Josh. Winniefield Scott, Jeffersonia Davis, all those lovely ladies you fantasize about. I'll name an entire series of ships after them just for you. I mean, Kree, dying from sexual diseases has been around for Lord knows how long. One man's toes. <laughs> You're not wrong in that statement. You're not. <laughs> All right. So we got to redesign. The Voluptuous gets his third refit. <laughs> do the five inches still fit? Yes, they do. Perfect. So we already dropped weight off of her. Steam expansion two engine, storm auxiliary one, electric one engine steering, crypt one armor. There goes another hundred tons. Corvette three. Took you half of that back. Any flood two. Yeah, blister one on the AP shells. I can't believe we're still using Balsite, but we got Pickwick 2 now. We are setting some fires. We're going to make those boys... We're going to be setting so many fires, it's going to feel like it spent the night in one of them clubs. This is to Rangefinder. Advanced Radio. No mines, because it's a cruiser. I don't use them for mining. Spacious quarters, 3,841 to 4,000 tons. Max armor. Oh, it's already at max at 2.5. Max out her 1.5 on a deck, 3,929. Increase range. All right, let's take off weight that from the deck then. There we go. 3,995 or 4,000 tons. Refit of one month. Cost of 19 million. 19.5 million. That's not bad. I hate to say it. That's how long I've been part of military industrial complex in my life. 19.5 million. That's fucking cheap. <laughs> That's fucking pennies. Specs to American soldier. 19.5 million. That's one of our fucking missiles. And we'll fire 10 of those bitches at a time. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can only look at so many sexual diseases before it totally disgusts your ass out anyway. I've seen a few of them. Never had any, but I've seen a few. No, oh, thank you. Ninety point five million, nineteen oh. You know what? I'm going to look that up right now because that's actually a good question. Well, this is also in chat. We'll look it up in U.S. dollars, just to have an idea.
God, I don't want to calculate that. $1 in 1905 is worth $35.26 today. So let's get the calculator out. Uh, yeah, so as far as the U.S. is concerned, that's still cheap. That's actually really fucking cheap as far as the U.S. is concerned. God damn. No, I fully feel you on that one, Greg. I fully feel you. The the asshole side of me would come out and go, dumbass. At least with guys, I'd be more, I'd be a little more understanding with women when it comes to guys. I'd fucking lay into them, like they deserve. And then the new baby, which we haven't fought yet. That's what I'm saying, Inc. Six hundred and eight million, that's that's nothing. Six health talks do a lot more. Yo, Greek if I had to look at that shit daily. I've seen pictures of that. I've seen pictures of the sexual I've seen pictures of sexual diseases. I've seen my guys showing me their sexual diseases if, and asking me, do I need to go to a doctor? And I go, yes. And yeah, dealing with bodies is a lot easier. In whatever form, whether they're chummed, chopped, or brisque, is easier to deal with than looking at a sexual disease. And Gregari gets his first refit, so she's already dropped down about 200 tons. Expansion 2. I have a feeling YouTube's going to peg me for the conversation we're having right now, but it's actually a lot of fun, too. It's informative. But we're not doctors, so they're not going to like us to talk about it. But fuck YouTube. That or someone's going to listen to this uh, stream later on and hear all this stuff and go, shit, I need to report them. Oh, no mines. 4,750, 5,000 tons. Already got spacious quarters. 20 knots. Can I get you to 21? No, I cannot. So 20 knots of speed. Seven fifty. So let's, yeah, let's armor her to fuck up. How much armor can I put on? Oh, overweight at five point three inches of belt. Put her overweight. Five point two is a four thousand nine seventy eight. 
Can I get a little F belt weight on there? Yes. Get that four weight down. 4,997 to 5,000 tons of one month of refit. Pitches good. Roll sucks a little bit. So you can fire a broadside of 10 five inch guns in either direction. We haven't fought her yet. I'm looking forward to fighting her. <laughs> BB 12 inch, 12 super firing and 10. No, 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 no. I did that already, V-Man. I hate that design. Look at my talent campaign. Look at my talent campaign. I hate that fucking design. I did it. I tried it. I want to sink it myself. Because it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't work in the medical field, but I've been, especially, especially as <laughs> an NC on the military, you see, you, you get to see some weird shit, especially when your young soldiers come up to you and go, hey, so I go to the hospital and they go, yes, yes, you should. And then you have to have several meetings with them after that because you had to inform the chain of command. It gets really fucking disturbing. No, that's not too different. That's a correlation I never put together. Because I've had to deal with both. To me, in my mind, they're two separate things. Two separate things altogether. One's food, one's not. People have called me fucked up for saying that, but it's an absolute truth. How do you think most people live for... Up, and up, up until the 21st century, that's how people thought. I'm a little old school in my thinking. Put you, no, I did not put them in for refit. Well, some days it just keeps coming and it don't stop. I understand that. You, there's just days like that. And you just go, what the fuck's going on in the world today? All right, show... They got their refit, so we get to design a new light cruiser. I'm not doing another three master. I'm not doing another three master. Though I like how much armor it gets. You know, it's having to deal with that stuff. I hate to say it. Some things are easier to deal with than other things. I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I will say it out loud. I'm, I'm sure there's some medical practitioners who agree with me. It's easier to deal with a torn up body than a complete body. Because you look at a torn up body, you know what you need to do as soon as you look at it. You get a person that has nothing but internal injuries. Where the fuck do you start? I get an injured person. And I've seen it multiple times. Looks completely healthy, but their insides are com 
Especially in modern combat. Their insides are fucking compressed. Their insides are compressed from overcompression. But externally, it's like you can't tell what the fuck's wrong with them. That's actually hard. For me, that's harder to deal with. Now, I hate to say it, anybody, anybody can be a corpsman, anybody can be a medic, because you, you're, it's the same thing as an ambulance driver. You're dealing with immediate trauma. You get to the scene, you make an immediate evaluation. You're dealing with the big shit right there. It's when you come across the things that you can't deal with, the things you don't know how to deal with. Like I said, you, and it's something, I, it was something I seen in Iraq. Guy, you know, first time I seen it, someone who was hit by a bomb, they, had an overcompression injury. Dead on the scene. Dead on the scene. I had no idea. They looked fine to me. By the time I got them in the hospital, like, yeah, no, they're in. Why'd you bring them here? Why'd you bring them? Because we had no idea the internals were crushed. To me, that is harder to deal with. Because you think you you think you're saving somebody when you're not. When you have a person who's torn apart, you know whether you're going to be able to save them, whether there's a chance to save them, or there's just nothing happening. That's easier to deal with than the one like they look fine, they look fine. Maybe they're knocked out. Let's get them to the hospital and then find out. Yeah, they. Yeah, you should have brought the other person who's more fucked up over here first. Uh, not until 1920. Not until 1920, at least. Because I want to do that design again. I'm dying to do that design again. So, do another? Do I do another belted three mass? Because we haven't fought them yet. Yeah, but as an on-the-ground person, it's harder to deal with than a doctor in a hospital because they're going through all those scans before the doctor. They won't even make it to the doctor. It's the people on the ground that have to deal with that. They're like, yeah, this person's fine. We're going to get them safe. It's like, then you're told, why'd you bring them? That's harder to deal with because you don't know. That's, That's the patient the doctor never sees. Unless they get to those scans and go, oh, shit, this person's still alive. And then you have to deal with all the internal injuries. Ladies and gentlemen, just uh, hold on a minute here. I got to take a bio break real fast. I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. All right, have a good night, Grim. Happy hangovers.
Yeah, but I think we start. I think we need to move on to them. We get into some fucking weird conversations during my streams. We do. I think, uh, we need to switch over to some uh, a little happier subject. <laughs> Increase the beam all the way up. And. Actually, how much is our max weight right now? A semi armored cruiser. We go 6,500. I don't think we can get that high on this hull. You want max beam. No, that comes in light. I want all the tonnage I can get. Light cruiser want... No, let's go to... Shit. I hate this hull. I think we gotta use it. We gotta use this hull. Fuck me. Max beam on a light cruiser. No, we can go 0% on a light cruiser and still fit the guns. <laughs> That's right, you started talking about that last stream. Are you are you actually uh doing the wedding in Spain or are you doing it back in uh where you're living right now? 20.5, so let's go 21. Drop the range, max quarters. We can get the dual large funnels, drop that right in the center. Main gun, seven inches. And a little, those are the best churches. All the way back. You know, it's funny. Like, I, I've never been to Spain myself, but like traveling around Italy. Like the little rural churches are the best ones. Even here in America, the little rural churches are the best ones. Well, here in America, like, little rural churches are the greatest because of their simplicity. I see some rural churches in Italy that are like... have more gold than cathedrals here in America do, but... <laughs> they're, they're, they're the nicest ones. They're smaller and cozy. I hate this fucking hole. But is it a small simplistic chapel or is it like an Italian chapel that's like got more gold than St. Patrick's? Somebody made you don't think he'd make it anyway. <laughs> Oh, those are the best churches then. Those are the best. Their simplicity is what makes them beautiful. 4,800, 6,500 tons. Max range. 5,647. Max belt armor. 6,090, 6,500. Okay. Oh, 
Let's drop that down to 1.5, increase the length of our secondaries. Oh, wait. I only put two inches in my casemates? Really? Shit. Let's get rid of those. Those are supposed to be threes. I think that's where the weight disparagement comes from. There we go. That's that's why we had so much weight to play with. All right. That's why we had so much weight. Had the wrong size guns in there. All right, offs, four weight offsets, not bad. Pitch and roll, they're not great, but it's under control. All right, what are we calling this class? Oh, if it's in two years, maybe they'll fucking party crash. Get your real snookered. Stop in Italy first. Get some grappa from Grappa del Bassano. Oh, you never had grappa unless you had it from the family distillery in Grappa del Bassano. Oh, my God. <sighs> Big reason I used to go to Italy every two years was pick up a few bottles from there. <laughs> no, we had the voluptuous. We... Mm. What do we call this class? Irish grammar's never seen much of the world, so you happy. Happy. <laughs> oh, God. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> I mean, thank God most of my viewers are older, so they'll understand the reference, but still. <laughs> Oh, uh, what do we name this class? Gloriana. We're never naming any class of ship, the old ball and chain in any of my fleets. Get that out of your goddamn head. Doesn't say you, you got to be a certain age, and I think most of my viewers are that age to know what that comes from. It's like bringing up a it's like bringing up a fucking Beavis and Butthead joke. Mm. You know what? I'm thinking eighties hair bands. That's kind of what I'm thinking. It's big, it's ugly, it's gaudy. I think 80s hair bands. <clears throat> At least in my eyes, it's big, ugly, and gaudy. This will be, and I think it fits for my crew in the chat. 
the Motley Crew. So I think that fits. I think the Motley Crew fits all of you perfectly, including myself. I'm going to save that for a battleship, Pontus. I'm saving that for a battleship. We're using it, saving it for a battleship. Which is why I'm surprised my channel is still going. When you look at the conversations we have on my live chat, on my live streams, the fact that my con my, this channel is still going amazes the shit out of me. But it's the fact that the channel's still small. YouTube has not turned its dirty little gaze in our direction. <laughs> this will be the Motley Crew class in commemoration of everybody in my chat. Because we're all we're basically all that old. <laughs> Yeah, because they're not putting advertisements on my channel because I don't have a thousand subscribers. As soon as I go over a thousand subscribers, they're going to start looking. Then I'll just move over to Rumble or something like that. I won't leave you boys behind. I'll go, I'll go somewhere where we won't get mistreated. No, you no, you're right, Josh. You're exactly right. And I'm gonna go, what the fuck did Josh let me do? Again. <laughs> no matter how drunk I get, that's gonna be stuck in my head. What did Josh let me do? <laughs> Let's start building one of those. That's going to take 11 months. That's actually not too bad. But you're an old soul, Krieg. That's why you hang out with us. That and you get all the jokes. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You go, this guy's an asshole and leave. It's just a matter that my channel's small. They don't give a fuck that my members are subscribers and members are not easily offended. They just don't. They're not trying to advertise on my channel just yet. In one month, because I need to earn at least a hundred dollars to get paid by YouTube. YouTube takes thirty percent of everything, so my ninety-nine cent membership, I see sixty-nine cents of. So I literally need 150 members to get paid off every month. And God bless <laughs> Sing single handedly rainy day and someone are still trying to get me paid, but I still actually haven't even earned enough money to get paid yet. <laughs> Josh, this is not a Winnifield Scott stream. <laughs> All right, so now the hangover gets its first refit. You 
You are an old soul, Krieg. You get it. You get us. That's why you hang out with us. All right, let's see how much weight we drop off the bat. Plus well, 200 tons. A little bit of a diet. Better engine. Better steering. Better armor. Orbit 3. Orbit 2. Flood two, still underweight. We will get this ship up to the same amount of armor the light cruiser has at some point. Turrets, eighteen inch torpedoes, two radios. She still has less armor than the light cruiser does. <laughs> Oh, no, no, now she has more. Now she has more on the belt, at least on the belt. Not too much, half the belt. Pitch and roll are coming under control. Wow, my engine efficiency sucks now. That dropped to 63%. But I don't need her to have good engine efficiency. I just need her to hit what she's aiming at. So we'll go with that. The 60s or the 1860s? Everybody tells me I should have been born in the 1860s. Well, now we're about to design a new one. That was a refit. That was a refit of the Hangover. Now we're about to design a new heavy cruiser and design our first battleship. And actually start putting some tonnage in the water. Oh shit, my glass is empty. Fuck me. Actually, I feel like this bottle's messing me up more than it should. Only 41%. But I feel like I'm a little more messed up than I should be. Oh, well. Doesn't, it's not going to stop me. <laughs> Go on refit. Two months on that refit. Two months on the light cruisers. Haven't extended the build time. Oh, no, we did extend the build time on the Ivar and the Motley. And the Ivar's got to go on a refit as soon as she comes out. All right, new heavy cruiser. Uh, what's life without a little risk, Gank? What's life without a little risk? You gotta remember all the shit that's illegal today was still legal back then, so you could have a lot of fun. Right, let's go to the Armored Cruiser 4. How much weight can I put on? We go up to 12,000 tons. And that's what this whole max is at. 60 million, 132. Yeah, I'll save a million dollars by going down one hole. 
I, <laughs> that's fucking pennies, but when you got no money, a million dollars is a lot. All right, so what are we calling this beauty? What are we calling this heavy cruiser? Somebody give me a class name. The Gaper? <laughs> All right. What's our best speed? 21.5, so let's give her 22. Well, not 48, 22. Up that range, spacious quarters, max beam, because you want her to be a big old fatty. I want her to be a big girl that handles big guns. I want to build another heavy cruiser like I built in my Italian campaign, damn it. They're not giving me the hole for it. The torpedo's gonna put you on you. Ooh, you got a lot of holes to fill, baby. Let's fill them all up. There we go. I know you like that. <laughs> oh, God. I'd be so demonetized if I was monetized. <laughs> I'm just waiting for someone to randomly like fast forward through like the first fucking how many how long have we going now yeah just like randomly fast forward through its first six hours of stream and just hear what I said right then and then report me to YouTube even though we said way worse shit earlier <laughs> Ten thousand three ninety nine twelve thousand. We got plenty of weight to play with. Just the length on those casemates. We can reach out and touch somebody. No, twenty two knots is fine. Max out the range. A little too much, okay. I'm down six thirty two. Belt armor. Four off the bat. Go to five. A little too much. 11,981. Four weights a little off. Not too bad, though. Eleven thousand nine ninety eight to 12,000 tons. Yeah, but I'm working on better engines, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm really not worried about that. I'm I'm actually surprised with the dual funnel that our engine efficiency is that low, but we're still working with uh, Steam Expansion 2. The next engine upgrade, these two stacks would be perfectly fine. Put us over 100%. So, 
I'm on the roll with this. I'm giving it the Josh seal of approval, whether he approves of it or not. Say hello to the gaper. For the U.S. military? No, not at all. For the Japanese military, yeah. Yeah, which just means uh, we'd order like six of those things. That's all that means. Instead of getting 10, we'd get six. And we'd still order 10 of them because we know three of them, at least two to three of them be fucked up and not work. I mean, it's still cheaper than that entire class of littoral combat ships we ordered that don't fucking work. Twenty-one month build time. Oh God. Yeah, my dockyards are only 87,000. Fuck me. Have a good night, Greg. Happy hangovers. Give it the what the fuck drum. <laughs> All right, now we get to design our first battleship. But we only got the one hull, so there's not much we can do. We can't we, we don't have much playroom here. And we don't have a lot of tonnage in our dock space either, so yeah. Exactly. And they're still more expensive than the ship I just designed. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a great concept. Those ships were designed when modularization were a thing, like the military was looking at, and it wasn't a bad idea. Technology, just once again, it's one of those ideas where the technology wasn't there. And still not there. That's why we're moving away from that shit. I mean, even the army looked at modularization when it came to its combat brigades. All right, so we only have the Dreadnought Hole 1 to work with. Max out her tonnage as far as we can. Let's max out her beam. She's going to be a big old baby. There we go. Which means we get her up to 27,470s as big as we can make her. Which is only 52% of the weight, so I can't, because I don't have any more hull designs unlocked, I can't make her any bigger. All right, medium barbette here and here. Wait, I can only do three centerline guns. 
Really? You as far forward as we can get you. You go there. You go far as soon as possible. Get rid of... We can only do three center line guns. That's just fucking... Shit. I don't need to make her this big, but I need the dead weight tonnage is what it comes down to. I need dead weight tonnage. Because we fill her up with secondaries. As many as we can fit. I just already messed up on that. No, let's get rid of these two. And casemates. We can put eight inches on her. This actually ain't too bad. Four weight is way off, though. You back. All right, now let's add all the goodies. No, I'm saving that for a battle cruiser. Seems to be overdesigned and underperforming. Uh, yeah, well, it's 1905, so yeah, that's a thing. It's a thing today, too. Oh, no, you're talking about the littorals. Yeah, yeah. But that was also a thing back then. I mean, back in this time period. Overdesigned and underperforming. That's. That's that's the navy in every nation. That's the navy in every nation. Twenty nine thousand two fifteen to twenty seven four. What can you penetrate at max range? Close range is fourteen inches. Yeah, fourteen point four. What you can do at max? One point three inches. So we can drop this twelve inches of armor on the turrets. Still not enough of a weight offset. Actually, I don't even have her running at best speed either. Let's drop that to 16. She's going to be slow. This is going to be a slow girl. No, drop the range. Let me get you back up to 20. Too much. Let's drop the turrets down to 10. Drop the angels down to 10. Case means down to 10. 
27,855 to 27,470. You don't need more than five inches of armor. All right. You only need enough armor to defeat your own caliber. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Give me 22. Nope. 21. Ah, we're not getting 21. Okay, 20. A little more range. Not getting any more range out of her. All right, main belt armor. And this is the most stable ship I have designed in this campaign so far. 12 inch main belt. Let's give some main deck armor on there. Too much. Engine efficiency still sucks. But she basically has no pitch or roll. This is probably the best designed ship I've put out so far. And it actually doesn't look that bad. There's no way making all three mains at 360. You can get close, but you still got you got the towers, you got the you got the turrets behind you. There's no way of making them a full 360. I mean, this turret can turn a full 360. This turret can their barrels are not going to interfere with each other. None of the barrels will hit anything. So they can turn a full 360 if they want to. Will they? That's a different story. In my fleet, this thing's a fucking hotel. Has next to no pitch and next to no roll. Everybody's going to be clamoring to serve on this fucking thing. I'm not going to say it out loud. Not going to say it out loud. Hopefully nobody reads it either. <laughs> nah, we can't go with that. Oh, ooh, ooh, I got a good name. Oh, shit, what the hell is that called? Uh, I'm not spelling it out, though. Shit. I'll get a medal from my viewers for it, but not from YouTube. <laughs> not unless I put, make it gain, put a woman... You know what? There's so many ways this can go. It could be really good. It could be really bad. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, give, me, give me another Let me look up something else here.
You know what? I'm going to play it safe on this one. We're going to call this the Karashi. Rinkan. Which is a spicy Japanese dish. And it's a, a lotus root stuffed with fiery mustard and miso. Which sounds really good, actually. I'd probably go for that right now. I've put my foot in my mouth so many times because of chat tonight, it doesn't really matter anymore. But uh, there are some lines I got to be... There, there are some... There are a ton of lines I'm willing to cross. There are a ton of lines I'm willing to straddle. Yeah, where I was going, where we were going with the name of this class, e that was pushing a line. Because there are so many conversations that we had tonight where there's enough people present, including myself and the people in the chat that know what the fuck we're talking about. We can go to YouTube and go, yeah, fuck yourself. Naming of this class, not so much. So, uh, Karashi Rankan, it is. We'll build two of these. You know what? Shit. That should have been the second name of the class. I couldn't think of the name, and as soon as I saved, I thought of the fucking name. The first one should have been the Wasabi. But now it'll be the second name of the class. God damn it. That should have been the that should have been the class name. If you don't know what the fuck wasabi is, you've never had your fucking taste buds burned out of your mouth before. All right. Next turn. <laughs> What was that about 40 minutes, 50 to 60? What was that about an hour with all the chatting and me not doing anything? <laughs> like most of this stream. <laughs> it's where you guys killed me sometimes. You know, I, I, I swear, I could sit here like some of these fucking tubers and I could probably put just a live stream of my face on screen and just run a chat and you guys would make me fucking popular. <laughs> that or hated. I don't do spicy anymore. I used to love spicy. You know, you hit a certain age and you just really can't do it anymore. Buster Hungry just lost Czechoslovakia. Really? 
Bohemian Moravia in this game, but it's Czechoslovakia. They just got kicked out of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> what is going on with this game map? And my army's still not doing anything. We actually... No, neither is the Soviet army. We should be attacking each other over here on the border of Kamchatka in eastern Siberia and southern Siberia, but neither one of our armies is doing anything. Holy shit, it's going to take 32 months? It's going to take two years and eight months for my battleships to build? Am I that far behind on my fucking shipyard tonnage? I am that far behind in my shipyard tonnage. Holy shit. But there's nothing I can do about it right now. My economy's at 0.40. I don't want to give up my tech budget. I don't want to give up my true... Cr I'm going broke. Holy shit. Fuck me. Where's the Russian fleet? I need to beat the shit out of the Russian fleet and end the war. They're still forming in the fucking Atlantic. Now you'd see the arrows from where I was looking. Fuck me. We're going broke. I mean, I'll survive it. Because I have enough naval prestige to go broke multiple times and the government will just keep giving me money. But I don't want to play that way. To me, that's a cheat. Yeah, that's why it's there for. I have 602 prestige. I can go bankrupt about 10 times before they kick me out of command. I just don't want to play like that. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Let me let me take a look on the other side of them. They got to get rid of the map crease. They got to get rid of it. Let's take a look at the other side of the map crease. I might control that. I don't know. I'm so busy looking here in the Pacific, and that is part of the Pacific. Well, Austria-Hungary's at war with Soviets. Okay, what's that province name? Oh, that's part of, uh, that's actually part of Eastern Siberia. Yeah, they're not attacking us from there. You know what? The Soviets have been asking us for peace. My economy sucks. I'd rather fight France. Yeah, let's start. They're pushing for a peace treaty. I'll start pushing also. Because I'd rather fight France. I'll kick them out of Indochina. They, they got their hands full with Africa. I'll kick them out of Indochina.
And we signed a peace deal, so we're only going to get money out of this. Yeah, we don't have enough to take anything from this. $262 million. The war cost me more than that, but we'll take the money. I guess I'll sell you a ship. All right, politics, France. It's time to piss in your shitty ass wine. We're in negative 28 with them, so it shouldn't take too long to go war with them. Thing is, do they have, actually have any fleets out? They don't. One white cruiser. There's one fleet at least. One heavy, ten lights, and nine torpedo boats. That's something we can sink. If it stays in the region. Okay. I'm gonna wait to 1906 to start building my ports up again. I am way behind on tonnage right now. My technology is fucking awesome, but we're way behind on tonnage. And now we get the four center line guns. After I build the battleship. Whoa. Wait, what? Soviet Union pushed back France's offensive in Portuguese Guinea? What? We did not increase our tension just... France is up here, 100% army logistics. Soviet Union has 21% army logistics and they won a land battle in French Guinea. Or old Portuguese Guinea. What the fuck? I don't know how many times I can say this in this stream. What the fuck is going on in the world right now? I mean, my Italian campaign map is more sane than this. Austria-Hungary controls Ukraine. They're attacking into eastern Poland. Are they allied with the Germans? They are allied with the Germans. They're not allied with us. I keep telling them no. I, I, I literally think that's what it came down to. I think they only won because of the fucking meat grinder tactics. China controls Afghanistan. That's more 2022 than 1905, but okay. Uh, honestly, the only sane part of the map right now is the Pacific. This is the only sane part of the map. This is the only part of the map that makes sense for 1905. Well, in all my campaigns so far, where America should be the late game boogeyman, it's Germany. Germany's showing up with the 100-ton fucking battleships. And America's like, eh, we don't care. We're not the late-game boogeyman. Leave it to the rest of you.
Normally, in most of my, in all of my campaigns, Spain is usually gone by now. They're normally gone. One of our military ships collide with a destroyer belonging to the Spanish Empire. Journals, in your opinion. Eh, happened because of the Spanish. Fuck them. We'll go back to war with them. I should not... Once my battleships are built, I'll have the tonnage to actually, like, take land from them. And they'll actually have to send their fleet out to defend it. Well, a better way to describe Afghanistan is that there is a central government that none of the tribes listen to. That's probably the best way to describe Afghanistan. The best thing to do in Afghanistan is something I've said since I've been there since, you know, the beginning of the fucking war is actually bring back the fucking king because Afghanistan used to have a king prior to the Soviets. He's still alive. He's living in exile in France. Afghanistan is a very still clan-centric society. Everything happens through marriages and political willing and dealings that Western Europeans don't understand anymore since the demise of, the, of uh, monarchies. You put a fucking king in charge of Afghanistan and shit will get done. You can't do it with elected officials because as far as the clan chiefs are concerned... People can vote all they want, but they turn around to other clans. Don't listen. They don't fucking listen. Democracy don't work in that country. It does not work at all. They're still on the clan system and they will be for the foreseeable future. I mean, historically, I don't think it would be the first time China's gone into Afghanistan. There's a lot of history that we don't understand about that part of the world from certain time periods. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried before and ended up in the graveyard of empires. We just don't know about it. You got to think, if the Mongolians did it, Chinese have done it before them. We did lose one of our minor nation allies. We lost Latvia. Did Latvia go away? Latvia went away. Okay. <laughs> No, you're absolutely correct, but uh, one thing they didn't do was kill the king, and he's still alive. He's in exile. For, uh, actually, probably dead at this point, but his family members are still alive. You put the monarchy back in place, I, I think Afghanistan would run fine. That's my personal view, because that's the way the country's set up. And it's still like that today. And that's one of the biggest, that's one of our biggest failures in Afghanistan was the Western powers, governments, and their fucking, their college graduates with smart ideas did not understand. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't understand how the country worked. You 
You know, they didn't live there. They didn't they didn't spend time on the ground living within the like I did. I lived within the communities when I was there. Especially early years of the war. We didn't have big bases that separated us from the people of the countries. Like we knew how it worked. And it's like, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And they're like, no, we're gonna do A, B, C. I'm like, okay, take take your ass back to college and go learn some ancient history, and then you might understand modern Afghanistan. You read history from 800 years ago? That's modern Afghanistan. They couldn't get that shit through their heads. Afghanistan was saying God made the world and with the left. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that one. Shit. And they still want to ally with us. No, we'll keep thinking about it. I don't want to ally with you. Honestly, I don't want any allies. This is a go it alone and purely campaign. The best part of Afghanistan are the roads that were built to go around it. Because there's nothing there. Great culture, great people, but there's nothing there. There's no reason to be there. Other than other than hubris, there's no reason to be there. Josh, happy hangovers. Right, the Ivar is done building, so she's probably commissioning. No, she's not commissioning, she's done. So you are going to Sasebo, Kragari is going to Naha. Actually, we're also sending all the new uh, new destroyers with you. And the Kragari. Aha. Uh -huh. The destroyers at Naha on the Petrovolask. Yeah, I did move the destroyers with you. All right. Destroyers here are going to Naha. It seems a little convoluted, but all the newest ships, the Sasebo fleet's the newest ships. The second fleet in Naha is the secondary ships, and then I'm farming out everything as they get phased out. Oh, it's January 1906, so let's drop some more money in to building the ports up. God, I'm going to be broke soon. We need to go to war France. We need to take Indochina from them.
Reese would like to order three. Yeah, fuck it. We're already, we're already over time. It's no point not adding more. Might as well earn some money while we're building our four ships. Okay, what the hell is everybody building that's taking so long? There we go. Better engines. And Soviet Union once again defended against France and they're pushing against Portuguese. What the fuck is going on? Spanish are attacking Morocco. That's no big deal. But how the hell are the Soviets hanging on to Portuguese New Guinea? And the French are making another push. Oh, that's why they're losing. They're only attacking with a few thousand men. So France attacked with 87,000 men and lost 35,000 already. Yeah. You guys keep doing that. Not 1914 yet, but uh, keep fighting like it is. America is still staying very pacifist. They haven't taken anything. America is strangely pacifist, actually. They love us. They hate Austria. They hate... Wait. Is that the communist Spain flag? No, that's the constitutional monarchy flag. Okay. Uh... I would like to go to war with America and grab Panama from them before it becomes uh, worth uh, before it becomes worth money, but they actually control the entire neck now, so that's a bad idea. They are doing some enforcement of the Monroe Doctrine. I feel like my campaign is behind right now, but it's only 1906. The world map is just fucking weird right now. I, It's so weird, I feel like I'm falling behind, but I'm actually not. That's the strangest part. It's like, I'm where I should be. The rest of the world's not. <laughs> Germany wants to organize an international regatta to promote the mutual understanding at sea between all countries. As if the government had nothing else better to do. Yeah. I'll take the minus one prestige. Fuck you guys. Fuck government. Foreign journalists approach you asking about a high-ranking person from Austria-Hungary. How do you reply? Refrain from commenting. No effect. Because they do like us. I don't want to piss them off. I don't want to go to war with a country that's going to keep us at war for years, never see their fleet in the area of operations, and our economy suffers. Mark 3 11 inch guns, nice. Oh, 
Christ. Even China, everybody likes us. I think that's our biggest problem right now is everybody kind of likes us. Spain doesn't like us, but I can give a shit less about Spain. I need the French to hate me more. That's how you be. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, this, this world map is insane right now. It's like the countries I need to hate us fucking love us. The countries I could care less about fucking hate us. Spain wants to go to war for a third time, probably for no fucking reason. But now that I have battleships coming in, I should have the tonnage to naval invade them out of the region. So, yeah, good luck, Spain. But I still got to wait for those ships to build because I don't have enough shipyard tonnage. Because I was not building shipyards to save money. Because I wanted technology and trained sailors. <sighs> trade-offs, trade-offs, trade-offs. Well, thank you, V-Man. I don't think I'm a likable type of dude. I think I'm a relatable type of dude is more the thing. I'm relatable. Likable? You never met me in person. I'm a walking anachronism. I'm a chain-smoking, whiskey-swilling American. The only thing I'm missing is a pair of six years from my hip, and you put me back a hundred years, I fit in perfect. Mine is with France. Okay, we're getting somewhere with France. We're starting We're starting to get them into that war zone. Negative tw it's going to take a while yet. They're only at negative 29. Honestly, I think that's why everybody likes us. Because we fought the Soviet. Everybody hates the Soviets. I think we fought the Soviets so often. That everybody likes us because of that. This is what it comes down to. Bremer, how we doing? No, that is the moral. That is the moral. And in between wars, give yourself time to build up. But uh, we're hemorrhaging money. I'm about to go broke. I need a war. No, we are not allying with you. Stop asking. At a press conference, journalists asked you a question about foreign policy of Italian Empire's government. What is your answer? Uh, I don't want to piss off the Italians because the last time I checked, they had no fleet. And I have no, and all their colonies are in Africa, and I have no ambitions there right now. I have no ambitions. Yeah, we'll say they're reasonable. I'll take the prestige hit, but I got 593 prestige. I can afford that. The U.S. failed to gain control of Haiti. That makes sense. Back then, just as now, it's still run by gangs.
Not until the battleships are built. The French at least have a fleet in the region I can get a war score off of. My battleships are two years behind schedule. So I can at least sink French ships and get a war score and grab a colony or two. Speaking of which, how much longer on them? All right, the new CA is commissioning. The battleships are still four months away. Actually, the Motley crew is finished. I didn't even realize that. So let's, let's start building another one of that class. And this one will be the Deaf Leopard. Oh no, that that <laughs> that's one of the best deals America ever made. And it's, it's it's not one of the best deals we ever made. It was actually the best deals for those countries. And when you think about it. Greenland and Iceland don't have their own militaries any they don't have their own militaries. And it fell on the US to protect them. All right, Motley Crew has gotta go to Sasebo, so Half Dan's got to go to Naha, and Kathy Ireland gets moved off. And the Gaper goes next turn. That's fine. Now the Kathy Island goes to Sasebo. And who did I, who did I say was getting moved out of there? Oh, I think I forgot to move somebody. So Motley Crew is on its way to Sasebo. So the half dan's gotta go to Naha. And the Betty White gets moved out also. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm moving them in the wrong direction. That's why I'm fucked up. Motley Crew, you go to Sasebo. Kathy Ireland, you're going to... My Zero. Half Dan, you go to Naha. There we go. All right, have a good night, Inc. Happy hangovers. Hey, no apologies, Bremer, no apologies.
though the amount of Gatling guns and coffee mill guns in that campaign is fucking disgusting. I could barely get myself to do the Monday episodes on Sunday. I skipped it one week because I couldn't get myself to play the game. My head was still hurting from that shit. That's why I skipped the Monday episode two weeks ago. It's like, it, 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 my, I'm like, I just couldn't get myself to play the game. I was so fed up from that sound. I mean, anybody who watched that, like, from the uh, live stream from two weeks ago, you thought it was bad last week. From two weeks ago, that last battle was three hours long. I had to listen to that shit. And watch my army throw away an easy victory at the same time. So I just, I, I couldn't bring myself to do the video the next day for the Monday campaign episode. You guys don't realize I try to keep all my episodes. Ex I don't do pre-recorded episodes. I try to keep my stuff as close to real time as possible to allow you to allow interaction with you guys. Invest in industry, please. I'll take a hit on my naval budget, but we'll earn it back. New heavy cruiser is done. The gaper is finished. Oh no, she's still commissioning. Okay. I can start building a second one. Yosuka. This one will be called... Coco Brown. If you don't know the reference, you're too young. <laughs> Oh shit, we're bankrupt next turn? Fuck. Uh, suspend. And suspend. We'll still be bankrupt next turn. Uh, I don't want to play like this. All right, we're 595. How much am I going to lose? Because it costs you naval prestige if you go bankrupt. I'm just not sure how much naval prestige it is. Bankers and Rupert's bane of any general. <laughs> You're not wrong. No, bankers love generals and admirals. Because they take out loans their government has to pay back. Christian complained they're getting harassed. Eh, 
Fuck Spain. Oh, you want to give me $103 million? I will take it. We're not going bankrupt this turn. We'll go bankrupt in two turns. You know what? No, we'll go bankrupt next turn because I'm going to have them start building these two ships again. Resume. Resume. We'll still be bankrupt in two turns. Okay. I want to see how much prestige we lose on a bankruptcy. Also, speaking of which, let's uh, go steal some more croissants. France does not want to go to war with us. We're tr I'm trying to go to war with France. It's like I can't piss them off enough. I want to take French Indochina from them. Because it's fucking valuable. I want to take French into China before I go to back to war with China. Is that too much to ask? Uh, because we kicked their asses a few times. They they keep picking fights with us, and I never had the tonnage to naval invade them. Now I have the tonnage to naval invade their small island provinces. So uh, yeah, they and France turned the other cheek. Of course they did. As soon as my battleships are in the water, I'll have enough tonnage to start taking all... I, I'm not going to be able to invade the Philippines, but I could take all the islands from them. Yes, let us go broke. How much prestige will I lose? We're at 595 right now. So I took a 5 prestige hit because France ignored my provocation. Yeah, you guys have been without a war for way too long. You know what you need to do, Bremer? You need to follow Al Bundy. You ever watch the TV show uh, Married with Children? This is a serious question. You ever watch that TV show? Because there's a good episode about that. We're now the how the fuck were you negative 131 million? So yeah, it's the TV show's called Married with Children. I highly suggest you watch it. You'd love it. It's on a deadpan comedy. Any Brit would any Brit would love it. It's very dry humor. And there's an episode where he takes a family on vacation to England. And he's an American, gets on a soapbox in the middle of Trafalgar Square and starts shit talking the French. And all the Brits start surrounding him going, Yeah, we've been at we've been at peace with France for too long and shit like that. It, it was hilarious. You gotta watch the episode. You can probably you can probably look it up on YouTube, honestly. Let me check that. Let me see if I can look that up. Actually, it was two episodes for that. Huh. 
But I, I thought it was hilarious because he's a, he's an American on a soapbox in Trafalgar Square, shit talking the French and the British all surround him, going, "Yeah, yeah, we need to do that." <laughs> It was a funny episode. At least I thought it was. Still trying to figure out how the fuck we're spending. No, we got the two battleships commissioning. Might be a part of the expenditure, but it shouldn't be that high. For two battleships? Two pre-dreadnought battleships should not cost me that much money. Well, those transports are mine. That's good to go because we're not warring anybody. Let's piss off the French again. I don't even have to piss off the Spanish. They're they're just they just want to go back to war with me. They want to go to war with everybody. Negative seventy two and me. Negative seventy one Britain at war with France. Second Spanish-American War is about to kick off. They might go to war with Italy and Austria. But they're friendly with the Germans and they like the Soviets and everybody hates the Soviets right now. So that's a big part of their problem. Okay. All right. You tell me we're going to go bankrupt again. Are you going to give me free money or are you actually going to let me go bankrupt? I was at 570 when I hit the next turn. I'm now 565 point. If I'm only losing five prestige for going bankrupt. That's a joke. I lose 25 naval prestige for $213 million in fund. I can keep this up for years. That's way overpowered. That 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 prestige hit needs to be larger. That prestige that needs to be much larger than it is. It was, no, it's actually minus 25. The negative five was from a diplomatic action. So they took 25 away. So we lost 25 prestige for $200 million. It was still going to be broke again next turn. And France ignored my provocations. I can keep that up. For a long time. Yeah, I'm bankrupt again. Give me more money. I'm famous, bitch. Give me money. That's what it comes down to. I have so much prestige. I am too famous to fail. That's what that is. I'm literally too famous to fail. The government cannot let me fail. If I fail, the government collapses. That is literally what it comes down to. Great. Let's keep pushing France to war. Fuck it. We're only still at negative 29. They, they 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 don't want to go to war with us. They want to keep us happy. Actually, the two battleships should be done. 
and they are the new light cruiser is six months away to have a cruiser all right oh and i forgot to move the gaper out So the Karashi Rankan, you're going to Sasebo. Wasabi. You're going to Naha. Gaper, you are going to Sasebo. And the hangover is actually getting mothballed. That's all off to one of my allies. We actually haven't had any cook-offs during this campaign stream. I need to get in there. I need a war with France. And I need to fucking get some cook-offs on their ships and make some French fries. Or at least fried frog legs, because French fries is American. Yeah, I need to make some fried frog legs. French fries is an American thing. Any business cooperation with their world countries? Yes, that helps our GDP. I give a crap less about unrest right now. Okay, mass piss off the French by 11 points. Good. Chile will buy the hangover for 21 million, which is... Fucking cheap, but I will sell it. FTF, FTQ. Or FTK now. No, I'm just selling it off because I'm not going to use it anymore. So. I'm keeping the light cruiser. So my strategy has changed since the update because torpedo boats and destroyers are not as strong as they used to be. So my strategy's shifting in line with that. So I'm keeping the older light cruisers in action by spreading them out to smaller ports. But the heavy cruisers, battleships, as soon as I have a replacement, they're gone. Because they're just too expensive to maintain. So the light cruisers stay in action by going to separate ports. And I don't have that many ports right now, so that's actually pretty easy to fill up. Wait, the British attacking. Bangkok, okay. As long as they turn it into the world's bordello, I'm I'm fine with that. As, as long as they turn it into the world's bordello, I'm fine with that. Still in my sphere of influence, but We're only at negative 38 with France after all this fucking time. At 12.30, I'm like, yeah, by 1 o'clock I'll be at war with them. Yeah. That is literally the worst part about this game is you don't control your nation. You're literally the head of the Admiralty. You have no control of what your nation does. You can influence it, but you don't control it. Shit, we might come up on the next refits before we go back to war with anybody. 
Like a word of Spanish. Yeah, they're at negative 70 with us. Fuck them. Let's go back to... I'll go back to work Spanish. Fuck it. French don't want to play. I'll play with the Spanish. We don't have enough tonnage to invade the Philippines, but we can take all the small islands from them. And that'll help our GDP. Because this is all in range of being, uh, being able to protect it. There we go. Actually, how many possessions do they have in the Eastern South Pacific? They have nothing in this direction, do they? No. That'll be an issue. I was actually going to use that as a launch off point for a war against America. They're still out of reach. Oh, I hit nine subscribers? Really? It had happened during the stream, so I can't see the numbers right now. Holy shit. Yes, we're going broke. Take my prestige away from me. Give me money. I'm as powerful as the emperor. Just give me money. You're not kicking me out of my job. So we are 100 away from the 24-hour live stream. If anybody's been hanging around in <laughs> this long into the stream, I haven't announced it at all during the stream. Once we hit 1,000 subs, we will be doing a 24-hour war charity live stream. No money to me. So as soon as we hit 1,000 subs and YouTube gives me the okay to go full monetization, we will be doing a 24-hour live stream for charity, and I'll allow the channel members to vote on a charity it goes to. War between the United States and Soviet Union. It's 1907. It's not 1950s. Yes. <laughs> World War III is already happening. It's only 1907. <laughs> yes, Mexico, I know you'd love a lady from Paris. I'll sell it to you. So I'm not sure which streams give me more uh, subscribers. GTCW and UAD, I think, are tied pretty much hand in hand on what gets on what gets me subscribers. Because I'm the only person that I think live streams either game. Does anybody does anybody else live stream Grand Tactician or this game? The only, I don't think uh, VTH does it. I don't think Chris does it anymore. I know Brother Monroe live streams this game sometimes, but not very often. Barton does, okay. Well, now you mention I'm actually subscribed to his channel, but I haven't seen I haven't seen anything from him come across my stream. That's why I hate YouTube sometimes. He's actually someone I'm subscribed to, but I actually haven't seen any of his videos come across my uh watch list in a while. Korea wants to buy one of my hangovers. Should I be selling one of my 
Yeah, why not? I'll have something newer by the time it matters. Actually, it's 1907. My government has not asked me to invade Korea. Something's wrong. We should be in Southern Korea, at least at this point. We should be in Southern Korea at this point. I think this turn might put us at war with Spain again. Coco Brown is three months off. Def Leopard is done building. I'm not going to build another light cruiser. I mean, we're going broke anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm going to hold off on building new. Sabo. What's that? says Sabo. It's got to get moved. Seagird Snake in the Eye gets moved. Uh huh. And, whoa, I have. I know. I'm looking at the wrong list right there. And the Betty White gets sent off to Port Guard duty. I think you go to Mizuru. Nope. Matsuyama. I'm actually running out of ports to send my ships to because I don't own that much. Yeah, I don't care. Give me money. Yeah, no, Chris only, like, it's something I said before. I don't even know. He only does one video a month on his game channel, which is all you need to do to keep a channel alive. As long as you post one video a month, that channel stays alive. And, and to be on, quite honestly, like I started watching Chris when he was still doing uh ultimate general series. You know, when he started with the original, you know, I started watching when he was doing Gettysburg. That's how long I've been following that guy. Because he was doing the Gettysburg game. And nobody knew who the fuck he was. That's how long I've been with him. I was actually... I think I was his second or third Patreon member. I was either his second or third one. And, you know... You might you might find it as a fair criticism. You might find it as an unfair criticism. I think he tried diverging too much when it comes to his channel. I think he tried doing too many things at one time and it kind of hurt his channel. A lot of people love him. My problem with him is he didn't really settle into... You don't have to settle into one thing. I mean, if you wanted to give up the game channel, give up the game channel. Focus strictly on what, another area. You don't want to go to the game channel. I, I understand that because it's videos. Even if you only post one up a month, it gets several thousand views. That's a lot of money from YouTube. Not not a lot, a lot of money, but it's still it's still money. But, you know, the reaction videos I'm kind of tired of. His tour videos. It, I think if he went full in on his tour videos and actually, like, put work into it, Got the right equipment, got ex, you know, got people on a team, and did it as a team. He would do very well at that. He'd do extremely well. The guy's very personable. He's he's extremely personable. That's why people like him. He's a nice guy. People want to listen to him talk. If he put the time and money into building the tour part of his channel, I think he would do extremely well. 
But that's just me. That's that's my personal opinion. Like, I think he would do well if he teamed up with, like, the American Battlefield Trust. You know, I think he, I think he would do very well if he did that. I mean, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but like I said, it's just my personal opinion. Yeah, fuck Britain. Yeah, it's just one of those things. I'm like, if he went full in on YouTube and put the time and money into it, and he's earned the money from YouTube to do it. Like every dime I, like I'm already buying equipment that YouTube has not paid me money for yet. For things I want to do for the channel. Or actually on a separate side channel. Because, you know, I'm kind of doing what Chris did. Like I'm doing, like I told you guys, it's been, I've been talking about it for a year now. I'm driving the Lincoln Highway. I'm video, video graphing the entire thing. You know, I'm not going to be making stops on the way in because I'm going from the Empire State Building to San Francisco, but I'm going to denote stops along the way to San Francisco because I got to turn around and go back to Reno and then drive back to New York City. I'm going to be following the same route back, so I'll hit all those stops on the way back. So full drive tour, no stops except for fuel and food, and I'll hit all the spots that I think you guys would love to see videos of on the way back. So, like, I, I, I have plans. I'm buying, I've, I've already shuffled out a few hundred dollars on equipment on something that may or may not succeed. I'm just taking the chance at it. One <laughs> case subs is not buying what I bought. It is not. YouTube does not pay out the money that everybody thinks it does. It, it, it does not. It's, I mean, like uh, my my channels monetized through memberships only. And Sonarball and Rainy Day are raining, you know free subscriptions on everybody. And I, God bless them. I thank them for that. But I have to earn at least a hundred dollars to, for you to, to pay me. And I need at least 150 monthly subscribers to earn that. And yeah, I don't have that. I wish 10 K subs would buy a new PC. Like every dime I earn off of this channel, I want I literally want to put back to it. I already have a separate bank account that I set up just for the channel. This way the money from the channel goes to that account and that's the money I use to buy equipment from. And it's already in the negatives. The account itself is not in the negatives, but my my book is in the negatives. And it's gonna take me the rate my channel is growing, unless one of my the side channels I'm setting up explode. I'm always going to be in the red. Uh, is it along the Lincoln Highway route? Let me write that down. So like I said, I'm doing the Lincoln Highway from start to finish. I'm driving it from the Empire State Building to San Francisco. 
And then I'm coming back to Reno for it just worked out that I had a reunion in Reno, which is the big reason I'm doing it. Let me write this down. The monument at why the hell does that sound so familiar, but I can't. I feel like I've seen something about that before. I can't find that always. So this road trip is in July. So I'm going to put out more information as the trip comes up and there's something get you guys want to see along the route. Oh, Bremer. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, anything like if it's along the Lincoln highway and you want to see it, just tell me, I'm not going to do anything on the way to San Francisco, but because I'm doing the return trip anyway. And I have a full week. I have a full week of return trip time. That I got to fill up. So any stop along the Lincoln Highway. That like I think you guys want to see. Or that I may have missed. Or you got, and you guys want to see. Tell me. And I'm, I'm actually probably going to start asking for that stuff next month. Uh, much like uh, for the stories or the uh, historical record with Grand Tactician, where I'm setting up a separate email address for that, I'm going to set up a separate email address for the Lincoln Highway Drive, where you guys can send me, hey, this is this. It's like X amount of miles away or from stuff like that. Yeah, on my return trip, I'll hit all those spots up because I'm going to have a week to kill. You know, I don't need to rush back to New York City. I got a goddamn week to kill from the end of the reunion. <laughs> To get back to New York City. So. That's my plan. And that's also on top of me trying to redo the audiobook channel. Which you guys have been asking me to do for the longest time. I already did, I did an audio of the Boys of Company H. I did not like it. I my my editing just sucked. That's what it really comes down to. My editing of it it just sucked. So I scrapped the entire project, and I'm going to start redoing it probably next week or so. So I want to do the audiobook channel. I want to start to do a travel channel. It's one of those things like 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 I said with Chris is like there's so much you can do. The travel channel is the easiest because I can break that up a lot more easily than anything else. Same with the audio channel with the books. You know, if I do a weekly chapter release, that's easy to knock out. But if you guys want me to do like uh, reaction videos on history books and stuff like that, that's a little different. That's harder to pull off. Gotta get this game moving again. I'm sitting here talking too much. <laughs> Let's piss off Spain again. That should put us to back to war. Okay, I gotta say, either uh, my monologue put a lot of people to sleep, or no one likes my future plans for the channel. Just lost a few viewers there. <laughs> but oh well, I'm gonna keep going. That's 1.40 in the morning here in New York City, so people are just probably falling asleep. But no, that, that that's exactly what it comes down to, Primer. That's exactly what it comes down to. Even even with this channel, sometimes I'm a little hard pressed for time, but I try I try to make it work. I'm lucky, like uh, 
Shit, you don't have a membership, do you? No, you do. So, like, when you see me get the videos out early by, like, a day or two as a channel member, that's a very rare occasion. Well, like I said, you just woke up not, what, an hour ago? <laughs> That's how you guys kept me going on that fucking 12-hour live stream. All the Americans went to sleep and all you Europeans woke up and said, yeah, keep going. The Mountain Meadows Massacre. Okay, I'll look that up. So, same location then. All right. I mean, we had enough of those in New York to fill a goddamn several lifetimes of reading. And let's piss off the French again. We should be at war with Spain next turn, and hopefully I can grab... Yes, I know I'm goddamn broke. They're still unbeaten. Jesus. I'm not going to I'm going to start hearing all the football talk at work soon. I got a lot of Spaniards and uh Portuguese work at my job and they love football, so I'm probably going to start hearing them talk about that more and more often. And not American football. Well, I want both the Phil well, East Philippines has oil right now. I really want the East Philippines. They don't have a government that controls them. What I want to do if we go to war with Spain, I don't have a lot of tonnage, but I should have enough to start grabbing the small islands from them and drive up the war score. Thirteen wins, two draws, and no losses. Uh, they better all start knocking on wood before every goddamn match at this point. Yes, yeah, so let's piss off the French. I'll lose money, but okay. They're still going to give me more. I still have 407 prestige. I'm not going to go broke anytime soon. Let's go. I'd like to buy three voluptuouses. Okay. Negative five with France, but we need to piss off the Spanish one more time. No, they repaired our relations. We're now negative 78. We were lower than that. They repaired relations. These fucking bastards. Nobody wants to go to war with me. All the AI commanders are looking at me go broke every turn. Going, yes, you're going to get rid of fucking grumpy. And yeah, I'm still here. Go to war with me, bitches. That option piss off the French a little more. We might be at war with France and 
Spain at the same fucking time at this rate. My government's driving for a war with France. I'm driving for a war with Spain. Let's see which one comes first or they both come at the same time. Nobody wants a war to sleep with their wives. <laughs> if only that were true. If only that were true. That's not in human nature. Humans love war. We love adversity. We love hard times. When shit goes too well, we naturally fuck it up. That would sound good to an Englishman, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to war with them at basically the same time, it looks like. Well, the drunk, the getting drunk and fornicating at the end of it has to do with the feeling of being alive. It's a mental state. Human emotions are a very, very complex thing. <laughs> we are here to steal your beer, to take your rum at a point of a gun. Alcohol to us will fall Cause we are here to drink your beer Drink, drink, drink <laughs> They just come down to Okay, we should have been at war with Spain that turn, but... Ah, we're just shy. All right. Let's piss off the French again. We're only in the 1910 refits before we go to another war at this rate. I like to fight a war, win a war before the next refit. That shit's going to cost us a lot of money. This is actually harder than my Chinese than my China campaign, believe it or not. This is harder than my China campaign. And that was running tight for the first 10 years. That was a close campaign for the first 10 years. That well, that was my plan. I didn't want to go to war with Spain again. I wanted to go to war with France and they just were saying no. Then Spain started picking a fight with us. So I'm like, okay, we'll start picking a fight with them again. Yeah, we're negative 82 with France now. So unless they start turning the other cheek and ignoring me, we should be at war with them in three to four turns. We should be at war with Spain in the next one to two turns. We're building 17 ships. None of them ours, but that has us at negative 136 million. That does not make sense. Unless I'm building a shit ton of heavy cruisers and I didn't realize it. Which is probably the case. Actually, I, my other heavy cruiser is finished, so I got to move that out. Disband one. 
so busy talking, I'm not really paying attention to what's going on with my fleet. War with Spain, again. I can't remember if this is the third or fourth. Spanish-Japan War. It's probably... I can't remember which one this is now. We've been at war with them so many times. I don't know which one it is. All right, Coco Brown. You go to Sasebo. Look at her shots. Go to Naha. Oh, you should have been there already. All right, we'll mothball the deep eddy. Oh, good morning, Aldolin. Good morning. Not much. It's been a few hours of me trying to get a war going on and nobody wanting to fight me. Because I've spent most of the campaign fighting the Soviet Union and everybody likes me because of it. And I've been going broke for the last few turns. But I have enough prestige to grind through that. I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest, as far as UAD streams go, the conversation's been great. But gameplay-wise, it's been pretty dull. <laughs> I hate to say it. it gameplay-wise, it's been dull. Conversations have been great, though. I'm not plotting no bank robberies. My prestige is higher than the Emperor's. I go broke, I say, fuck you, give me money. Try to fire me. That's how famous I am right now. Oh, now we get a 1,050 ton displays. In 1908, are we behind on tech? No, we're still very advanced, but... Greece will buy the Deep Eddy for $26 million, which is 48% less than what it cost, but fuck it. We should have had better destroyers by now. Why are we working on cruisers? No, we're only in 1908. What the fuck am I saying? Yeah, no, we're actually still very good on technology. All right, so Naha Fleet. We're going to start here in the Marianas. Go come here and sit off of Guam. It's a Sabo Fleet. Come over here and sit off of Saipan. We should have enough tonnage now to start a naval invasion. If we don't, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't. Good afternoon. What part of the world are you in? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, going on 0200 for me. Wait, wait, wait. The U.S. is in Africa now? 
Wait, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, the U.S. has an African colony, and it's not Liberia. You know what? That makes sense. We all want to forget Liberia exists. New Zealand, okay. Can I launch it? Yes, I have the fucking tonnage. Thank you, Guam. Give me Guam. As soon as we have Guam, we'll take North Mariana. You move over to this side of Guam. Bacon Sarnies? I know what bacon is. What the hell is a Sarny? And we are sinking their transports. Good. We didn't lose any. We didn't lose any soldiers. We killed 12 Spaniards. Take three turns. Awesome. We're going to make headway this way, boars. This war is headway. Blah. I was so tongue twisted right there. Bacon sandwich. Okay. Yes, fuck you. Give me money. Well, I really feel like a politician right now. We're broke. Fuck you. Give me money. That's how politicians act. I'm feeling like a politician right now. Not as eloquent as one. Oh, maybe if I drop all the curse words, I could be. I don't know. Marlin steaks. Ooh. Ooh. I have not had that in a long time. Not exactly easy to get a hold of in my part of the country, or my part of the world. More of their transports. All right, we don't have any battles, but we're actually getting somewhere in this war. We have taken Guam. And that only gave us 1,500 victory points. Okay, Saipan is next. One light cruiser moving. Two light cruisers moving away. Spain knows they're not winning. They are moving their fleet out. I might have enough tonnage to take the West Philippines. Let's finish up with. We'll take a uh, Saipan. Move on to Truk Panope. Pelulu after that, West Philippines will be the final objective. I 
I think we might actually get somewhere in the next few turns, which we haven't done this entire stream. <laughs> I tell you what, I gotta get, I've been to Australia, absolutely loved it. I need to get over to New Zealand. All the pictures I've seen in the place, and I love hiking, oh, I need to get over to New Zealand. Now, if you guys have the same tobacco taxes as Australia does, I'm going to have to sneak in my cigarettes. And Spain just fucking collapsed. Are you kidding me? Excuse me a minute. Okay, I think it's out of my system. All right, France. Do you want to fight me and not collapse at the start of the war? I am so fucking pissed right now. Yeah, no, I, I spent six months in Australia. I, I know what the tobacco taxes are like. And thank God between the U.S. and Australian dollar exchange, buying a carton of cigarettes in Australia was still cheaper than buying a carton of cigarettes in New York City. So all the uh, tobacco shop owners that I visited thought I was fucking insane because I'd buy, you know, a carton of fucking Marlboros for, you know, a few hundred Australian. They're like, why? I'm like, uh, still cheaper in New York City. <laughs> it's cheaper than where I live. Yes, war with France. There we go. Spain collapsed. France wants to fight us. Let's go, boys. First stop, Fort Bayard. Sounds so wow. I didn't commission the
motherfucker. That's where those expenses came from. I lost all my minor nation allies. I got more ships than I'm supposed to have. Nico Shirain and Sanosawa. The Neishi, Kisokama, the Kimpu. I mean, two of them are hangover class, so I really don't give a shit, but three of them are newer class, so I want to keep them. I have no idea who Jacinda is. Is she some type of a... I'm going to say TikTok personality. Famous just for being famous. <sighs> well, on top of getting the frogs to fucking fight me. We're now fighting the frogs, but I no longer have any minor nation. Hold on. I know Latvia was taken over. Son of a bitch. Uh, actually, all my minor nation allies have been taken over by somebody. Motherfucker. This has never happened to me before. This has never happened. Oh, shit, her. Okay, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, fuck her. Okay, that was good, Primer. That was good. All right. <laughs> Let's get the no, fleet moving also. Move to the other side of Fort Bayard so you don't get mixed up with the uh, Sabo fleet. Yes, I know we're broke. Shut up about it. Give me money. Well, that's a problem. I don't, like New, New Zealanders roll over and took it over here in America. They're not going to roll over and take that shit. But yeah, I think like the, the population of New Zealand is. Is it smaller than our, the state of Montana? Hold on. I, I'm going to look that up right now. What is the population of New Zealand?
All right, as of 2023, it's 5,228,100 people, which is a borough of New York. Yeah, population-wise, you would be ranked 24th state in the U.S. That's actually not too bad. It would be a lot smaller. You actually have a lot of people living there, believe it. Yeah, you, you actually have more people living there than I thought you did. You would actually rank number 20. If you were a U.S. state, you'd be the 24th largest state. You actually have a lot. I didn't think you had that many people in New Zealand. I thought you had as many people as one of our smallest states. Because like where I live in New York City, I live on I live in the borough of Staten Island. We actually have a larger population in one borough of our city, and we're the smallest borough. We have a larger population than the smallest state in the U.S. And to put that into context, shit, I'm, I'm trying to remember the kilometers to mile ratio. The island I live on is 14 miles long. So that's 22.5 kilometers. And at our widest point, we're 11 kilometers. And we have almost 600,000 people on that fucking thing. It actually might be larger now because we don't even count the immigrants. Colonial conquest. Ungoverned territories, new leaders found support, armed. West Philippines. Uh, yes. We're at war with France, but uh, yes, I will put that on standby to take the West Philippines. That is more valuable to me right now. The head of the Admiralty agrees with the government. Philippines, yes. Well, we're also the most spread out population. We are the most spread out population of the city. Hold on, let me... The last official census of New York City. Let's look at the population of that.
the city of New York has a population, official, official population of 8.26 million. That's New York City's official population. That does not count all the illegals who don't register on the census. But it kind of puts the size of the city into perspective for you when you think about the numbers. Yes, I know our expenses are too high. Give me money. Until my prestige runs out, give me money. I'm more famous than you are. Two million Auckland. That's like a fucking town. (laughs) That's a small that that's a small city in the US. Yeah, population 350,000, that's a town in the US these days. That barely qualifies to have a mayor. Two more turns. We'll have West Philippines. Then I'll turn back to the fucking French. Need to kick him out of Indochina. I want fried frog legs for dinner. As much as I dislike fried frog legs, I got to say it. Well, that, like that's what's happening here in New York. In uh, if you actually look at it, it's it's never been officially recognized. But if you look at a map of the U.S. after sundown, we and England kind of has the same thing going on with London in New York and or the U.S. specifically. We have what's called, and it's officially recognized as a megalopolis. Not New York City. New York City alone is not a megalopolis. But from New York City to Washington, D.C., if you look at a map of the U.S. at night, it's a straight view of light the entire way because there is zero, zero breakage of any considerable amount of land between towns and cities anymore that everything is basically considered one big city and it's known as the East Coast Megalopolis. Now, thank God, all of our politicians are too power hungry to agree to a megalopolis because nobody wants to give up the sphere of influence to anybody else. Navarroia? Uh, I just fucked that up. I know I got the first part right. Navarroia. Am I close at least? Navarroia. Please let me know if I'm close or I'm completely butchering it. Cause I, I was I was given a word I was given a fucking tongue tangler earlier too of a Swedish name.
The next time I'm up in uh, Sweden, I got to buy uh, Rainy Day a drink because I fucked the word up so bad. Now we're over here. It's a, honestly, the, I think the hardest part about pronouncing that word is, yeah, I, I, honestly, I think the hardest part about pronouncing that word is actually my own accent. I think that my, my own accent is actually making it harder for me to pronounce that. And we now have the Philippines. Okay, what do the French have in the area? Torpedo boat. One heavy cruiser. One like They're not going to fight us. All right, Fort Bayard. Next mission. Our own government sidetracked us, but we are moving back to Fort Bayard. Hopefully, we have the tonnage to take it down. That's a $2 billion province, almost $3 billion province. I want it. They already have similarities to Japanese. I can see that, yes. I can very much see that. Like the hard the hardest for like I, I always I pride myself on pronouncing th on pronouncing things properly. Some but like a lot of times my accent is my own worst enemy. And the way like people in New York City speak, like I don't some people can tell I'm from New York City, other people can't, but certain pronunciations it really comes out. All right, can we land invade Fort Bayard? Naval invasion. Ah, uh, shit. You know what? Let's go with Tonkin first, because that takes the least. Where the fuck is Tonkin anyway? We might run into some of their ships on the way there. Let's see. Oh. Harbor if I had Fong, right? Yeah, the Harbor at High Fong. All right. We'll go from the smallest ports to the biggest ports and just rip them down. How can we exchange prisoners if we have not fought? No, we do not exchange. And the Soviets want to go to war with us again. Bring it, bitches. Beat you twice, I'll beat you a third time. Soviet Union is a redheaded stepchild of the Pacific. Yes, I know. I'm fucking broke. All right, I got six too many heavy cruisers. We got to go. I actually have one too many destroyers also. And 
and way too many light cruisers. Okay. No, we're still not going to. All right, Spain's coming back. All right, 100% chance to take Northern Vietnam. All right, so fleet. If it does not have a name I gave it, it goes away. Which even includes the new ships. They all get mothballed right now. We have no minor nation allies, so nobody's going to buy them. So they're going to sit in my ports for now at a reduced cost. Izumi to Yoshiro. Those three do not belong to me. Mothball. And they're voluptuous class, so they're going out anyway. Destroyers. Akebono, Shimone, Yeyo, Kaki, Asago, and Momo. You do not belong to me. Mothball. That's a lot of ships I built for other nations that don't exist anymore. That's a lot. Niko Shirani, Sanasawa, Nishe, Kiko, Kisokomo, Kimpu. Zumi, Yabari, Yoshino. La Chabonet, La Sphinx, Mamate. Nope, those are mine. Akebono, Shinome, Yeyo, Kaki, Asago, and Momo. Yeah, that's a fucking lot of ships I was paying for. Yep. That brought me down to negative 66 million. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now I need some minor nation allies to buy those off of me. And we have none left. Wait, wasn't Mexico one of my buyers? I can't believe all my buyers are gone. That's fucking weird. Yeah, screw you. Give me money. I have to... Shit, I'm running out of prestige, too. Fuck me. Can't believe this shit. This is actually harder than my Chinese campaign. No, we are not going for a peace treaty with you. We are taking everything in Indochina. We don't go to peace with you until we need to. All right, we took Tonkin. Next naval invasion. Cambodia. We may not have enough for that. Move, move, everybody move, everybody keep moving. Port to port to port. Give me everything France owns.
Heinen Island. Where is that? And the Soviets want to go to war with us again. Yeah, fuck you. We'll go to war with you again. Again. Ninety percent chance to succeed. We need seventeen thousand seven eight seven hundred eighty two tons. I have a hundred and sixty one thousand tons, almost one hundred sixty two thousand tons. That only gives me ninety percent chance. Really? Yeah, France doesn't control it, so. Oh, are you talking about here? Yeah. I don't I'm not gonna have the tonnage to invade it. Well, I'm doing as much scorched earth as I can right now because the French fleet's not here. That just changed. We have a port strike and a battle. They're actually sending their ships to fight us. I'll take it. I have had so few battles this stream. V man, oh, <laughs> I don't. I thought you went to bed a while ago. Uh, the old, I'm sending the older cruisers singly to their own ports just to defend those ports, but I don't have a set fleet of older ships. They're just like a cruiser here, a cruiser there, a cruiser here, just to defend the ports and the shipping out of it. And they send a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser off my east coast, but don't send it at my fleet. Okay. Auto resolve. Yep, they got victory points. And we have a battle here. The light cruiser Betty White. Oh, the fucking Soviets declared war on us too. So the Soviets think sending a heavy cruiser that's the same tonnage as my light cruiser is going to be a win. We'll take this fight. We haven't had a fight in what? Three or four hours? I'll be honest. Like, we have not had a fight in three to four hours. If it wasn't for you guys in chat, I would have ran out of shit to talk about hours ago. We actually have something to talk about now. <laughs> Or at least watch. But it's a light cruiser to heavy. We're not near each other because I'm at X30 speed, which means we're not near each other. So we should be sailing directly at each other. Okay, we're down to X10. We're getting closer. Let's see if we actually find each other. Because I had a fight like this earlier, a light cruiser against a heavy cruiser, and we didn't spot each other in the Battle London. Northwest now. We might just sail in a circle. Oh, we're at X5. We're at X5, and we don't see each other. There we go. Betty White, do what you do, bet. Dead pan grandmotherly curses at this ship. Sound like the sweet lady you are at first and dead pan them to death.
Uh, we're coming up on the 1910 refit, I think. I, I stopped paying attention to the year, to be honest with you. It's just been... Nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to fight. Piss somebody off. Hit, hit the next year button. Flank. Hard right. I don't think they're in torpedo range of us, but we can definitely hit them. That heavy cruiser is the same tonnage as the Betty White. So it is not upgraded. There you go. Torpedo out. I doubt we're going to hit, though. We're ripping. Cutter and crew, 89% chance to hit with our 5 inch guns. This heavy does not stand a chance. Here comes the torp. Give me a cook off, baby. And it's going to go right by the bow without hitting. Oh, are you kidding me? Holy shit, it's a fucking gunboat. Are you kidding me? It's a fucking gunboat heavy cruiser. They still have these in service? This is like one step up from a fucking monitor from the American Civil War. Uh, you don't get those in this game. And quite honestly, those things were a bad idea. Actually, uh, Drakniffle did a very good video on that. <laughs> we're, we're way too... Even at full speed, we're too fast for this fucking thing. It's flooding out. Give us a hard turn, slow us down. And she's about to sink. And we haven't even identified her yet. Are you kidding me? Oh, through headphones? You can hear everything in this game. Can't listen to it on speakers. That actually gave us 2,200 victory points. You know what's really sad? One of my destroyers is worth the same amount of points as this heavy cruiser. <laughs> if not more. Yeah, Drachniffle, I love him. His preset videos, he does extremely well. When he does his tour videos, he needs some... And this is just means, like, once again, it's like... Yeah, I have my things with Chris over on VTH, but, like, with Drachniffle, he's been doing it long enough. His set piece videos are fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. When he does his tour videos, he needs to work on that stuff a little bit. Because those could be just as good as his set piece videos. He just doesn't put the uh, time into it. All right, the French are moving ships into the region. We got a light cruiser coming in. Light cruiser, two light cruisers. You're leaving. Heavy cruiser is leaving. Two more moving to this port. 
Oh, they moved. Are you coming or going? They have a fleet here, but they're not fighting either one of our fleets. They're avoiding combat. Which is fucking up my invasion now. We just dropped to a 56 per We're one turn away. And they dropped us to a 56% chance and they're not engaging us. That's bullshit. If you're going to move a fleet into a fucking naval invasion cone. You can't not fight. That's the whole point of the fleet being there. It's supposed to fight. It reduced our chances of winning this invasion from 90% to 56%, but it's not here to fight us. Alexander Clark, I don't know him. French fleet smells like fish, tastes like chicken. No, smells like frog and tastes like fish. We just got dunite charges, good. And we took Cambodia, despite what the fuck they just did to us. Are you going to put together a fleet to fight us? All right, next naval invasion. That brought us to 43,000 points. Next naval invasion. Cochin, China, 21,000 tons needed. So that's the next false port, which is right here. Saigon, baby. We're going to Saigon. Best women in Indochina. They love you long time. Someone's going to report me for saying that. <laughs> but if they're going to report me, they have to report that play, Miss Saigon. Boys, once we take Saigon, you all get shore leave? Maybe. We'll see when the war ends. No, you're not talking Arvin rifles, you're talking Sarvin rifles. Arvin fought, Sarvin not so much. China wants to be my ally. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to have to think about that one. So We're taking Indochina, so you know you're next. China is attacking the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan. Hold on, what the fuck? China's attacking Tajikistan through Afghanistan.
I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it might be my memory failing me. It might not be, but I could swear to God from what I've seen, this entire area is nothing but one huge mountain chain that you don't want, you do not want to send anybody into at all. No, no. <laughs> okay, Cheech. You know what, V Man? Your new name is Cheech Jr. They're probably going to win, too. They'll probably win. Yeah, China's attacking with 786,000 men going against 93,000 Soviets. Yeah, when you have two nations that use the same tactics, fight each other, shit's going to get bloody. We're going to keep an eye on this one. And there was another fight over here. Yes. France is attacking out of Equatorial Guinea into Cameroon. It's like these numbers make more sense for the region. Leaving 42,000 men on the German side in Cameroon seems very high. They'll probably win that though. Yeah, Germany's logistics at 100%. France is at 100%. We're still only at 28%. Thank God the Soviet Union is distracted right now because they could take back everything we took from them. Like, Soviet Union wanted to, they could take Mongolia from me. And they could take Kamchatka from me. With no issues. But they're kind of distracted right now. Thankfully. And it's January 1910. Shit. It's time for the 1910 refits. Fuck. It took us that long to go to war. It took us that long to go to war again. Right. The voluptuouses have received their third refit. So they're not getting another refit. They're going to stay in service until they die. But they don't get another refit. So we're going to delete those. I probably could keep them in service longer. They've actually been doing very well against the Soviet fleet. <laughs> I should keep them updated, but no. I'm going to follow my rules. All right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have gotten two refits, so... Ninja Turtles get their third and final refit. It makes sense, but the number of soldiers they have fighting on both sides don't. Whoa, what happened here? Error on Mount 2. Does that fix that? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Turbine engines. That just dropped a lot of tonnage off right there. That dropped a shitload of tonnage off. You don't like Crypt 2 yet. Actually, we probably should have, but I wasn't paying attention to the timeline, so... I do my yearly out of stuff I want. Mm, let's keep Pickwick on my destroyers. I'm going to keep Pickwick on my destroyers because that shit's... That is the ultimate burn down ammo. Still a rocking coincidence to range finders, okay. 
Yeah, not much we can do to her outside of shit. Max out her armor, which is not going to weigh a lot. Half an inch of armor all the way around. 714 of 850. Spacious quarters, why not? 727 of 850. Can we get her to 32 knots? 736 of 850. Can I get 33 knots? 747. I feel like I'm playing on the prices right right now. We're not going to win. Uh, yeah, let's try it. 34 knots. Yes. Max her range. 829. How the hell do I have so much tonnage to play with? 829 of 850 tons. And we're still underweight. We lost weight and I'm adding so much on. This is a 35 knots and we can do it. I can't believe the game has let me do this. I've never had a destroyer with all the stuff I have on it coming it under that tonnage. Never. And at 35 knots. I mean, the four-weight offset sucks, but still. I get 36 out of her. I... I don't think the price is going to be right on this. Nope. Too heavy. 50 tons to it. But 35 knots. Consider this ship started at like 25 knots. She's now 10 knots faster. I am so happy with this right now. This isn't even a drunken design. This is just something I'm like ecstatic with. I am so ecstatic right now. This is a beautiful refit. That's a beautiful refit. I, I, fuck. I could have added more torps, but I'd rather have the speed. I, I, because I could have gone dual launchers down her aft, which would have extended the refit time. I'd rather her have the speed. That's speed is life for a destroyer. That is life for a destroyer. The faster they are, the harder they are to hit. Nobody else is doing 35 knots right now. Two hundred seventy-two thousand refit five two destroyers in one month. I'll take that. Okay, all of you. I have no minor nation allies, so we're just going to scrap everybody. We have no minor nation allies. Nobody's going to buy these. Waste of fucking money because we spent money to build them. And now we're not getting paid to build them. Make her do a feisty redhead. (laughs) 
All right, ladies of Paris get their first refit. Can we get something just as nice out of them? Now, this is the uh, dual launcher destroyer, so she's got six fucking torpedoes on her aft. She's a lady of power. She gives you the hot seat in your hot seat. All right, dropped a few tons off the bat. Those spacious cores. Yeah, that's going to put me overweight right now. For right now. Turbine engines under. The engines are what take the weight off. Going from steam expansion engines to turbines. That's a 300 ton weight drop. Oh, you get both of them. One's a hello gift. The other's a parting gift. Ultra steering. Still rocking Krupp armor. Four day. Now we're going to stay with Pickford Acid. Electric turrets. Still with 18 inch torpedoes. We didn't get the better range finders. 8, 10 of 1,000 tons. Max the armor, baby. Pitch and roll still suck, but hey, it has armor now. It has armor. Increase the length on these threes, make it more accurate. 843 of a thousand tons. Max out the range. Nope. She's got 31 knots, so I don't need to give her more speed. 973 of a thousand tons. Can I give her 32 knots? 984 of a thousand tons. I'm not going to get 33 knots out of her. I know that's going to be too heavy. Holy shit, we got 33 knots. 997 of 1,000 tons. Yes, please, and thank you. Ladies of Paris, you are doing me beautifully right now in this refit. That feels so good. Oh, no, no, no. You want your ladies to have a lot of pitch and roll. Otherwise, it's a dead fish in the water. Okay, I don't think the game likes what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Alright, now we get to do a new destroyer class. And Bremer, since you're here, you get to name it. Supposed to go to a fresh design there. What the hell happened?
You know, it's funny, Bremer. I there's eight people watching right now, but I think you're the only one who's actually awake. Everybody else has just left it on and fell asleep listening to my dumb ass. Oh, someone else is awake. <laughs> How are we doing, Mike? Good morning to you. Right, new destroyer. How big can we make her? 1,050 tons. The Stinky Fingers class. You fell asleep and woke back. <laughs> I figured as much. With how long I keep these streams going. How are we doing this morning, Mike? We're on funnel four. Do I give her? I'm going to hold off on the second funnel for now. Because we may not need it. The engines have gotten a lot better. Go with three inch guns again. This is where I can put on the arm tower. Once again, the game does not like what I'm doing, but screw the game. I play by my rules. Four ghoulies on the back. We're overweight, but that's fine. Eight torpedo launchers give you 32 knots of speed. Let's drop your range down. Spacious quarters. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going with that first name. We're going with that first name before I forget. I swear, you guys are going to get me in so much trouble at YouTube, but it's fucking worth it. If it wasn't for you guys, doing this shit would not be fun. So, it's worth it. Just like when I was in the army. If you're going to do it stupid, do it right stupid. Make it to a point where it's so funny, nobody wants to fucking get you in trouble. Uh, pick up acid because it's still a destroyer. High turrets. It's reload. 18 inch torpedoes. Still way under tonnage. Eight nine eight one and 1,050 tons. All right, we're not going past point five on the armor. So let's just armor up all around. Half an inch of armor. It might stop a 50 cal bullet in this time period. It might stop a 50 cal. Max length on her guns for better accuracy. 930 of 1,050 tons. Max range a little too heavy. 
1,025. I'm not going to get 33 knots out of her. I did get 33 knots. 1,030. Can I get 34? Let's go, Trebek. Give me 34. Nope. Ah, I bid wrong. 33. That's still pretty goddamn. 33 knots in 1910? Wow, my four weight offsets a hundred percent. With all this weight I put back here, my four weight offsets a hundred percent. The stack back. There we go. That's better. Roll still sucks, but the pitch is a lot better. I'm still press ganging prisoners to fucking run my destroyers and torpedo boats. So there we go. Well, the Stinky Fingers class, the first ship of the line, will be the Stinky Fingers, because that's the name of the class. Oh, uh, I do nothing cheap. My fleets are small and expensive, but pound the shit out of my foes. We're not playing the U.S. We can't pump out a lot of garbage and overwhelm with numbers. We have to pump out a lot of fine-tuned machines that sink anything they come across. <laughs> they got the matches in the officer's bunks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to build five of these. Go to Yokosoku. All right, I need names for the other four. So uh, one of them is Grimsby. I need names for the other three now. Wake up your alcohol-fueled alcohol minds and give me some names. I wish you could throw out mines during a battle, but you can't. Stinky Fingers class. The Grimsby doesn't really fit the class name. No, 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 no. We got to go off the class name. There we go. <laughs> Flounder. Okay. Yeah, remember, you have to go off the... When you're naming ships, it's got to go off the class name. The class name is a Stinky Fingers class. Oh, I know the perfect name for the last one. Oh, shit. No. No. You guys aren't going to get that. 2P1S. If you don't get the reference, you've lived a very, very sheltered life. <laughs> oh, I trust you. I trust you. Now, if you can guess the 2P1S... You got my respect. 
All right, Kragari class or the Warrior class gets its third and final refit. And we actually haven't even fought this class yet. We have not had a battle with this class. This is the belted three-mast cruiser, which is a new hull design. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, four point nine inch guns. Oh, really? All you guys? Really? None of you get that. You got to look at the class name. The class name is the clue. You know what? I'm, I'm going to type it in comments. I have a feeling if I say it out loud and somebody fucking hears me say it, they're going to report me. Now, I know I'll definitely get reported for typing it out. <laughs> I know you should have. All right, better engine. Got some weight off. Actually, she has all the modern goodies already. Or the powder. No, we're going to move her to Dunite and get her away from Pickwick because she's a cruiser. I don't need her cooking off. Exactly. And we actually didn't open up. There's actually not much we could do to her. We just dropped a little tonnage off of her. What's her speed? 20 knots. Can I get 21 knots, please? I got 21 knots. Can I get 22? Yes. Max range. A little too heavy. Drop that down. Still a little too heavy. Drop it down a little more. 4,847 to 5,000 tons. Armor, armor, armor. Oh, I got to increase the length of the three inches. All the way up. You know what? 10% now. 4915. Armor, armor, armor. 5.6 main belts. 4,935. Four weight offset 16%, so F belt it is. This light cruiser has more armor than my heavy cruisers do. 4,996 to 5,000 tons, and she has more armor than my heavy cruisers. <laughs> you gotta love it. I'm going to erase that comment now before I get reported. There it goes. I really like the way this ship looks. I just have not had the chance to fight her yet.
Problem is, none of these ships are at port, so I can't refit them right now until naval invasions are done. But after this next naval invasion, I should be able to call for a peace with France and get away with what I stole from them. Yeah, that's that's a that's a new hull design from the last update. I really like it. All right, so the Motley Crew class now gets a refit. Actually, are any of these, none of these are in port right now. Nope, none of them are in port. Motley Crew gets its first refit. I'm using Pickrit and my destroyers only. Destroyers only, because I don't care if the destroyers cook off. My destroyers are worth the same amount of money as the fucking Soviet battleships that we've been fighting. They're actually more expensive than the Soviet battleships that we've been sinking. So, only the destroyers carry Pickrick, because if they cook off, I don't care. Uh, we unlocked Dunite, so all my cruisers are getting Dunite. I want, I want the Pickrick off of them. Refit now, 6,495. How much weight we just dropped? 25 tons off the bat. Turbine engines. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a thousand tons right there. We just saved by changing the engines. Old girl just went on a vast diet, and I'm going to fill her back up again with junk food. Well, not exactly junk food, it's everything that we need. Everything I couldn't give old girl during the last refit, she's getting now. Five thousand eight forty-seven of sixty-five hundred tons. She's already at max range. Can we get twenty-five knots? Holy shit, we got twenty-five knots. Okay, armor. Rest goes to armor. We gonna go four point. The three mast belted cruiser, which is an older design, can hold more armor than the modern design. Does anybody else see a problem with that? <laughs> All right, let's increase the length of my casemate. Wait, where do I have a two inch casemate? Where the fuck is our two inch casemate? There should be only threes on here. Why is there a two-inch casemate there? That's a three. That's a three. Why the hell did I have a single casemate that was a two-inch? That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Pump out the length so we can reach out and chut somebody. All right, that put me overweight. 6,524 of 6,500. So we'll take down the belt. 6,490. 27.9. So F belt. A little too heavy. F deck. Too heavy. Okay. Not fully pitch and roll, not fully under control. Four weight offset still a little high, but better than most of my designs. So we're going to roll with that. Some <laughs> the 
Yeah, I'd like to know how I ended up with a fucking a single two incher on the original design. That just that added an extra month to the refit, but everybody's at sea, so it doesn't matter. And honestly, for the casemates, I could run 2.9s and save myself some weight. But that would have extended the refit. All right, now we get to design a new light cruiser. Adelan, you still with us? How big can we make you? 8,000 tons. All right, under max weight for that hull. All right, give me a sh give me a class name for the new light cruiser. Ten thousand, ten thousand, eight thousand, twelve thousand. There we go. The old heavy cruiser hull is now the new light cruiser hull. <laughs> Five knots, okay. Ah. I got to drop a letter out just in case fucking YouTube fucking has an algorithm running. Now, nope, remember, you got the name of this. You got the name of the destroyers. He gets the light cruisers. Let's drop that range down real fast. Cramped quarters. Let's make her a wide girl. A draft all the way up. Can I put our bets on? You? No, I can't put our bets on you. That sucks. All right, seven inch mains. That sucks. I can't put fucking barbettes on her yet. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. We're going, we're going, we're going to have an anime class and a hentai class, but we gotta wait for the battle cruisers. Those come out in nineteen fifteen. Big fucking tower. Okay. Dual funnel large right in the center. Honestly, I'm hating this right now because this is a very large hull for the guns that it's carrying. How many secondaries can I drop on this thing? Yeah, that, yeah, fuck. This is extremely a large hull for what it's supposed to do. Oh yeah, no, she's getting torpedoes because this is a light cruiser. It doesn't look like one, but it is one.
All right, let's add all the goodies in. Oh, beam's too high. Really? The fuck? So I couldn't give her that big of a beam. Okay. That's fine. For electric steering. Oh, I'm going to be able to drop a lot of armor on this girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Five thousand six forty eight of eight thousand tons, spacious quarters. Max out range, still under seven thousand tons. Let's run up to twenty six knots, seven thousand seventy nine. Beautiful. Five inch main belt. Oh, it ate the five inch main belt. Yes, let's give it an inch all around on everything else. Oh, that's a little too much on the aft deck. Okay. Seven thousand nine ninety two of eight thousand tons. Four weights under control, pitches under control, roll still a little high. But uh for the hull design. I think she's good. This is a heavy cruiser hull. That's being called a light cruiser is what this is. So we'll roll with what we got. When you find a ship that spreads destruction around, you can name. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I was inhaling my cigarette when I read that, Will. <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> Inhale and smoke and trying to laugh at the same time does not feel good. <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. The class will be the STD. The rest of the ships will be named after specifics. You got to remember, you got to go with the class name to get the specifics. The class name is usually generic in general for what you want the rest of the names to be. But uh, I like this. Wait, what's the invalid? Honestly, I should have named I should have named the the first ship of the class the history of the world and then gone down from there. People would get the joke. And I thought we left that name series behind in the last stream. Ugh. <sighs> 
Exactly, Monty's forever. Monty Python is a gift that keeps on giving. But, uh, it's a Mel Brooks themed movie. Biggest Dickus is from Mel Brooks. That's uh, History of the World. And he's another man that's a gift that keeps on giving. Let's build one of these. Yokosuka. All right, so the hangover gets its final refit. That rabbit's dynamite. Honestly, the best scene in the whole movie is when the guy at the bridge asks him the question, what is the airspeed velocity of a London lighting swallow? What do you mean? African or European? I don't know the answer. Ah! <laughs> That's the best part of the whole movie. I did a skit about that in the Boy Scouts. I actually won an award. <laughs> All right, we're at 8,997. Let's hit the refit button and see what we get. Drop 30 tons off. New engine. There you go. We're putting you on a diet, baby. You are now on a diet. Now I'm going to fatten you up again. Actually, and the second best part is she owns vast tracts of land. <laughs> now let's get the pick right off of you because I don't need you cooking off. Seven thousand seven ninety of nine thousand tons. We just took a ton of weight off of this girl. Let's increase her beam, get her more stable. Ten percent. Max her range. Nope, too much. Eight thousand nine forty nine. She's got twenty two knots of speed. I'm happy with that. Armor, 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 armor. Brenda, 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 Brenda. 9,127, 9,000, eh, a little too much right there. Pitch still sucks, roll is horrible. But she does the job. And she's already proven that in one combat, so we'll go with that. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled like elderberries. I, I don't have a French accent. I can't do one. I can barely pronounce the language, let alone fucking fake an accent. All right, I know all these ships are at sea, so there's no refits. But they'll be ready to go for refits as soon as they come back to port and I've Kick the French out of the Pacific. <laughs> but the Black Knight's the best part of that entire... God, there's so many parts of that movie that are so good. Black Knight scene, everybody knows it. The Rabbit scene, everybody knows it. I think the bridge scene is one of the best, but nobody really knows that scene. All 
All right, so now the Gaper gets their first refit. Honestly, here in America, I think some of the best parts of the movie, which went over Americans' heads on the comedy, but some of the best parts just went over Americans' heads. Not in today's day and age. I mean, you got to look at this way. Bremer, Monty Python is tame compared to Mel Brooks. But Monty Python is still tame compared to Mel Brooks. Because Mel Brooks didn't give a shit. He faced every issue head on and made fun of it. And that's what made his movies great. Oh, 11,040, 12,000 tons. Oh, I guarantee you, Mike, Mel's still alive. They would crucify him if they could, but he's untouchable. Everybody loves him. I guarantee you the day he dies or the day after, there will be hit pieces on him in every fucking newspaper out there. I guarantee it. Just like, uh, what's his name? The creator of Dragon Ball Z. The, the Dragon Ball Z. Creator of Dragon Ball Z has 20 years of storyline that for 20 years, this guy wrote that. Uh, actually, 30 years when you think about it. My cousin actually has the original mangas because he's uh, Japanese. But uh, the day he died... These fucking liberal shitheads were writing hit pieces on him. You can't compare the, the age that he grew up in, the, the time period, and saying, oh, he did this. And the shit they nailed him on was complete bullshit. They're like, oh, he, he wrote the best and worst black characters in fucking in manga. He was writing about black characters in manga before most Japanese had ever fucking met a black man. Give me 23 knots. 24. Yes. Twenty five. Nope. This North Star was good.
Yeah, I'm sorry. I went on a little... Like, it just pissed me off how he was treated. It just pissed me off how he was treated. It got, the problem is the way he was treated brought politics into it, and you guys know I don't like to, I like to try and keep that off the channel. But what they did to him, and that... It was only that one fucking paper that did it. And it's all it took for the other fucking major papers to pick it up. I, and the person who wrote that shit, I guarantee you, has never read a good manga in their fucking lives. Me personally, I'm not a manga fan. I prefer light novel. I read light novels. Eleven thousand nine forty three, twelve thousand. Yeah, a little more. Yes, I can get more. Give me more, more armor. Eleven thousand nine ninety five or twelve thousand tons. Four weight offset of five percent. Pitch and roll still suck. Engine efficiency is really down. With dual large funnels. Ghost in the Shell. I, ne I never read the manga, but that was the second anime I'd ever seen. The first one I'd ever seen, and it's... it's somebody, if you're older, you'll know the anime because it was like, it was big before anime was big. The Wolf Brigade. If any of you guys remember that one. That story is fucking phenomenal. I rewatched it uh, two years ago. My nephews they couldn't, they didn't get it at all. But being a child of the '80s, that story resonated with me. I think it's one of the best animes out. It's a one, it's a one shot wonder. It's not a full anime series. It's a movie, but it's one of the best anime movies out there. Space Battleship Yamato. <laughs> I gotta wait. If I'm gonna do something like that, I gotta wait until I can build a hundred thousand ton battleship. Then so you guys know that one. That's that is literally my favorite anime because it's actually it told the story. It talked about pop, but it didn't shove it in your fucking face. It did every, everything Disney wishes it could do right now. That movie did. It told a story, it entertained, it put a political message across, but it did not shove it in your fucking face. So sit around for another hour or two. I'll sober you up. Just don't open your bottle every time you hear my cork pop. All right. And the gapers are all at sea. Okay. So now we get to design a new heavy cruiser. And that was the point. Saitama is a that's a good view of this is here to entertain, and that's it. Nobody makes entertainment anymore. All right, what holes do we got? Hybrid? No, we're not using that. What do you max at? 
Yeah. Every cruiser max is 4,100 tons. No. We still have not unlocked the new Dreadnought hull. That's not good. All right, we could take this to 15,000 tons. What can I make? I can go 12.5. Apple seed's good too. You know what? Since we're talking about it, we're talking about it. This will be the anime class. Twenty-two knots. Spacious quarters. God, I hate this fucking hull. The problem with this hole is you can't put barbettes on it. That tower's gonna be way too big. Yep. You. Get you up a little bit. Control button is a great tool in this game. Uh, that tower's too big. Front tower four. We definitely fit it with that. There we go. We're not getting the best front tower on there. Well, we, we've been kicking the... We, they have no fleet for us to fight, so we're just naval invading them right now. It's the IGN and the fucking Marines. Because there is no fleet for us to fight from the uh, French because they're fighting a war in Europe right now. Triple funnel large. Yes, please. Nope, can't put barbettes on. Side guns? I'm not going to fit side guns on here. I know I'm not. No. Secondaries, five inches. Single barrel. Ooh, I could put five inch single barrels on. Can I get five inch casemates? Yes, I can. So all my secondaries are the same caliber. Yes. Yes. I still hate the fucking hull, but I'm happy right now. Because my secondaries and my casemates are the same caliber. I have continuity. It makes sense. You don't get that too often with this game. Now let's drop the funnel back in one spot to center the weight. Let me click on the fucking funnels, please. Why does it not let me click on the funnels? Weight centered. There we go. I'm happy right now. I hate I hate this fucking hull with a fucking passion. But I have all of my secondaries and my casemates in sync. I'm happy with that. Good morning, Rainy. Hey, as long hey, as long as people are in chat and we're talking, I'm gonna keep going. You know me. You, you've been you've been you've been on my channel long enough. You know me. As long as you guys want to keep going, I'll keep going. Mm. 
No, I, I already did a training session. That twelve hour that twelve hour live stream I did, or it came in a, a few minutes shy. That was my training session. So we know we we know I can do it. I worked all fucking day. Drove through rush hour, went to work all day, came home through rush hour, and still did a twelve hour stream. Now imagine me with a full day off. Oh yeah, baby. Twenty four hour stream, no issues. That in my fucking forties. I gotta get up and take a piss every fucking four hours when I'm asleep anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll be awake the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's still it's still not my longest. It's over nine now, yeah. So what what the hell are we at now? I started at six. Yeah, I started at 6 p.m., so. And yeah, I mean, in five minutes, we're going to hit fucking 10 hours, so it's not my longest stream yet. Honestly, I did think I was going to end this like two hours ago, but <laughs> we're <laughs> between the conversations and trying to start a war, it just kept going. I, I literally spent. I mean, Bremer, you're here for a lot of it. <laughs> I spent like two and a half, three hours with nothing happening. Just chatting away, trying to start a fucking war. And as soon as I got a new war with Spain. The fucking nation collapsed. Ten thousand two sixty two twelve five. Well, we got a fucking ton of weight to play with. We got a ton of weight. Max range. Twelve thousand one nineteen. Okay. Twenty two knots is fine for a heavy cruiser. Belt armor. Belt, belt, belt. This game is all about the belt. Twelve thousand four ninety one, a little F belt. Twelve thousand four ninety nine, twelve thousand five hundred. Yes, I will take that. That's how late it is when I start my streams for you guys. I kind of feel sorry, but I, I. I I do have to work. This channel doesn't really pay me anything, so I do have to work. So I, I apologize for that. I know, I know it's late. I know it's late in Europe when I do my streams, but a lot of you guys seem to go out drinking, then come home and watch me, and then drink some more. So I'm, I don't feel too bad about it. I know in some countries, the fucking nightclubs don't start popping off until like 4 a.m. And it's like, that's closing time here in America. I'm surprised you woke up with no headache. You had, what, five different whiskeys? I don't care if they were all scotches. But it was five different brands, which has five different ways of distilling it. That that should have given you a hangover. Yep. We're one minute away from 4 a.m. We're part of... I unless you 
Will, where, where on the, uh, just give a state. What part of the East Coast do you live on? Holy shit. I've almost killed this bottle. Fuck me. The whiskey that has no flavor. I've almost killed the entire bottle. That is not cool. <laughs> Let's start building one of these. All right, the battleships get their first reshit. The Karashi Rancon class. Okay. I'm a New Yorker myself, if you can can't tell by the accent, so. All right, I can add another turret on now. I'm not going to do that, because I think that will take too long on the refit time. Then Texas. A state I've never been to. No, I'm not kidding you. So I'm drinking uh, a Japanese whiskey called Kikori. It's actually uh, a rice whiskey. It's got no flavor. Literally, it has like no flavor. But it does have a burn at the back of your throat, which is the only reason I realize I know I'm drinking it. If it wasn't for the burn at the back of the throat, I would be thinking I was drinking glasses of water. But... I'm also buzzed too, so. But uh, as far as it's, it's a whiskey made from rice, there's really no flavor to it. The only thing you really get literally is a burn at the back of your throat. But then again, I've been drinking for so long. I, this could be my whiskey out of mind saying, yeah, this ain't strong enough for you. Though it's, uh, forty one percent. It's an 82 proof bottle. And I don't think I'm slurring too much yet. If I am at all. So, uh, yeah. You want to say if you want something to drink and sip at all night, yeah, this is probably be it. If you want something similar to Everclear without that 100% melt through the bottom of your plastic cup drink, this is probably your mixer. <laughs> oh, yeah, sake with a bigger price tag. It's like a $70 bottle. Port Huron. Damn. Oh, that place sucks in the winter. Kerosene. Holy shit. <laughs> Sneak up and chat. Where you been all night? First time I went to Texas, so exit like 1,000... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never been to Texas, but I've seen videos of the fucking highway. I'm just like, yeah, no, I love driving. I think Texas would take, would take my love of driving away from me. <laughs> like I said, no, it's, it's 50% alcohol by volume. So there's a burn at the back of my throat. There's not much flavor to the whiskey. There's actually, there's like, this is like Everclear light. Like I said, it's like Everclear light. It's like, it's like Everclear. It's a great mix. I would say it's a good mixer. If you don't want your mixer melting the plastic cup, you're pouring it into. <laughs> Uh, 
Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey. I highly recommend to everybody. Nika is one, literally my favorite Japanese whiskey. Rainy day. I haven't found a St. Patty's Day to kill me yet. So, <laughs> in every party I go to, I usually bring one to two bottles with me. So, well, yeah, it's a little cheaper for you where you live. Because it's distilled there. It's a little more expensive for us here in the States where it's imported. Like the uh, the 14-year-old bottle of Oban I bought yesterday was almost 100 fucking dollars. Yeah, get the kettle on. Get her her tea. Make her happy. She'll forget that you're sitting here watching me until she hears me speaking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. We got to finish. <coughs> you guys got me so distracted. I'm not working on the ship design. All right, let's do the refit. This is what I love about you guys. You guys get me you guys get me talking. We get a conversation going. I actually forget I'm playing the game. And I forget to move it along, which is, probably turns off some viewers. All right, so we dropped about 300 tons off the bat. Oh, I love Lagavulin. But I only I only drink it at <laughs> because of my position as a historian of the regiment of the 69th and my position in the historical association. I get invited to some very, very, very high end parties sometimes. And the only time I drink the log of Volan is at those parties because it's actually fucking free. Like I'm an invited guest to these party people. People pay fucking five thousand dollars a ticket for these parties, and I'm I'm there as an invited guest. I'm like, yeah, give me the Lagavulin, <laughs> and I don't pay a dime for it. Yeah, I mean it's a little cheaper for you because it's coming in from closer. Yeah, it's like uh, the o the Oban fourteen is ninety dollars, and that's uh, I was gonna say tomorrow, but uh, tonight's uh battle brew for the uh, GTCW screen. So uh, yeah, that'll be for tonight. Is the Oban. Wow, we dropped 3,000 tons with a new engine. That's, yeah. Oh, I think Torp 3. Pickwick out of her so she don't kick off. You got 2,000 tons to play with. 22 knots, please. Get you up to speed with the heavy cruisers. Mid range. A little too much. Really? 
there we go. 25,000, 26,636. Main belt's already at 12. Let's go up them on the main deck then. Get that pitch and roll down even more. This is still the most stable ship I've designed this campaign. Oh, a little too much. 27,465 or 27,470. 12 inch main belt. Her guns penetrate. Yeah, a thousand meters. Her guns penetrate four inches of armor. So uh, I think we're good. Let's save that refit. I'm not a fan of Suntory. I did not like it. I'll be honest, I did not like Suntory. And I've been buying a lot of Japanese whiskeys lately, looking to mix uh, the whiskey my unit makes, the Fighting 69th whiskey. I've been looking to mix it. I'm trying to find a good blend with a Japanese whiskey for the whiskey that we make, and I just have not found one yet. I live on an island in New York Harbor, so yeah, when it's cool, it's pretty fucking cool, but thank God we don't get lake effect storms, that's all I can say. Like, I had no idea what a lake effect storm was. So I went to Fort Drum for the first time. Holy shit. Fort Drum is right off of Lake Ontario. I was there. It was August. That much. I can't remember what year it was. But it was fucking August. I remember that much because it was fucking blazing hot. I was pissed off. I was supposed to be home all fucking summer with nothing to do, but I got orders to go to fucking Fort Drum anyway. And it was my birthday weekend, too. I was born in August. It was actually my birthday weekend. They sent my ass to Fort Drum. And we had fucking three inches of snow in fucking August because of a lake effect storm. And it was 90 degrees the day prior. All right, new battleship design. Yeah, literally kerosene. The 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 storms there are so bad and the wind is so bad. I I've been to Fort Drums multiple times in my career. There's not a single fucking straight tree in the region. They all grow at a fucking angle because of the fucking lake effect storms. None of them grow straight. They're all at a fucking angle. It's weird. All right, so we're still working with the same hull, but I can add more guns on now. So let's increase the beam. Get the weight up as far as we can. 27,470, 21. So let's go 22 knots. I can't believe we did not unlock another hull. Spacious quarters. Our bets. And guns. That's side gun. Center lines. 13s again. A 
we can do four center lines this time. Instead of three. Perfect. <laughs> Cheers, Rainy. I'm still going. You don't have to work till tomorrow anyway. Let's get our towers more centered this time. Looks like we still have the same towers. Round Funnel 3 should sit on both. There we go. We got centered weight. Secondaries. 8 inches. Dual barrel. As many as I can fucking fit. No. That did not sit right. There we go. Go. You got bad fire. Let's move you. There we go. Shouldn't have that anymore. Nope. Why are you showing me a bit? You got a good sector of fire. Why? There we go. It's gone away now. That's a lot of eight inches, baby. Yeah, I, normally I would have work off work on Monday, but uh, after what happened in Baltimore, we have to work. We're getting more ships than we normally do for this weekend. So, no getting around that. We got... Everybody was just told, yeah, we don't care how senior you are, you're coming into work. Which I have no problem with because, yeah, they got us working. I'm not working Easter Sunday, but Easter Monday is usually a, a day off for us, which is an overtime day. But they're going to pay me to work overtime all day. Yeah, I'll be there. This is really not happy. She's awake at 0800 on Saturday. Youngin is awake too. Eh. Well, you put the tea on, right? Uh, not too long. They'll get they'll get most of that mess cleaned up as quickly as they can. That harbor's got that harbor cannot stay shut down. So they're gonna get that cleaned up as fast as possible. The bridge is gonna be closed for Lord knows how long until they rebuild it. But they get the debris out of the water and the ship out of the water as fast as possible because they got to reopen the port. Well, the thing is, Kerosene, that bridge was the entrance to the port. The entire port is blocked. Because of that bridge coming down. That was the entrance to the Chesapeake.
Well, the pilots don't know that. Pilots have no idea about that. The way the, way the industry works, number one, people, a lot of people make a lot of assumptions about the way the industry works. And I hate to say that. The talking heads on TV are the worst ones about it. They go, why this, why that? Like, oh, it passed inspection in these countries, but it doesn't pass inspection here, but it's still allowed to dock here. Well, because it's called international fucking laws. And pilots, and once again, pilots have no idea about engine issues or anything like that. They're not informed of that. A pilot's job is, the entire job of the pilot is to put that ship in the channel, get it safely out of harbor into open water, and then get off it and go do it to the next ship. And from what I have seen reading the paperwork myself, that ship has passed inspections in countries that have very lax rules on passing inspections, but the U.S. recognizes those inspections. And it really should not. Yeah, she was, but the pilots are not going to be told about that. And and I'll be honest with you, it's actually normal. Ships suffering power problems, that's normal. What she went through was not normal, because when you saw all those lights go out, yeah, a power problem is a power problem. That happens on a lot of these ships. She lost everything. She lost her, She besides losing power, she lost her engines, which meant she lost her backup batteries, she lost her backup engines, everything went dark. It was the worst scenario that could happen, did happen, because even the backups failed. Uh, Basically, Bremer, that's the way it works. Well, yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers is going to handle the bridge incident. They are going to handle the bridge incident. That's in their purview. Because the federal inspection has got to get done. The the bridge that went down was an interstate highway, not a state highway, so that's going to be federally inspected. Twenty six thousand six eighty, twenty seven thousand four seventy. Let's give her a little more range. That put her overweight. Really? An extra thousand kilometers per her overweight. Okay. So I'm not going to get another knot out of her, but her speed is fine. Let's drop that down to 11. Drop that down, down to 11. 26,527. Now give me more range. Still too much. What can you... You now mark threes. A thousand meters, I need 19 inches. We're not engaging at that. So let's 
Let's drop that down to 12. Oh, drop it to 10. The backups are not what caused her to swing at the bridge. What caused her to swing at the bridge is that was a single screw ship. When the backups came on, the captain did what most captains would do. He ordered re full reverse. Problem is, that's a big ship with one screw. Now, a lot, I know a lot of you guys like naval history and stuff like that. Sh big ships, and you got to remember... A battleship from World War II has got fucking two screws. And a battleship from World War II is half the size of these container ships. That ship did not look big and she and it did not because she's old for her that that was an older ship, so she's got one screw. But she's still double the size of a World War II battleship and carried five times the tonnage. As soon as they hit reverse screw on that, if you understand the way ships move through water, as soon as they hit reverse screw, that caused the ship to oscillate. Drop an anchor, great idea. But there's none for that anchor to grab onto. So the ship's oscillating, the anchor's not grabbing. It was literally an unavoidable accident. But as you said, if she was having power issues before leaving dock, that's on the Port Authority. Whoever okayed that ship leaving dock is in a lot of fucking trouble. Is either losing their job or going to jail. But you won't see that in the fucking news. No, it could have been a lot worse. Thankfully, they got the May Day out. They got the Mayday out, which allowed the state troopers to close the bridge. The only lives lost were the construction workers that were on the bridge who couldn't get off in time. Yeah, ships are not designed to go reverse screw. In games, they go reverse screw pretty easily. And there's physics built into the game to simulate it. They don't simulate it properly, but they come very close. I, I mean, you're, you're talking about you're talking about an incident, and I know there's going to be a fucking raft of regulations that come out after this because of this incident. This is one of those once in a fucking lifetime, once in a hundred year incidents that's going to cause a lot of issues down the road for everybody because they're going to come out with a shit ton of regulations that don't need to exist. Well, whoever authorized the ship leaving the Port Authority definitely needs to lose their fucking job. My problem is right now is the the ship's owners are trying to use a very old law to mitigate how much they have to pay in the damages. But they're as much at fault as anybody else because they didn't want to repair their ship here in the U.S. because it's too expensive to repair here. You know, you actually have crews here who know what they're doing or paid the money they're worth, which means it's very expensive. And you're talking about these ships, captains. You know how these ships work. They're crewed by Filipinos and everybody from the Asiatic basically works on these ships and they pay these guys like $5 a fucking day. They don't want to pay to have an American fucking engineer team that knows what they're doing to come onto a ship and repair it. Because that engineer team, that American engineer team steps foot on that ship, it's probably sitting there for fucking six, five to six months because they're going to spot everything wrong with it.
Captain did nothing wrong. Captain did everything right. You have to remember, Captain follows orders. Captain is a captain of the ship, but at the same time, he's still beholden to the company. It's not the 19th century anymore. The captain's not really the captain of the ship anymore. Speaking of which, we <laughs> all this chat and I keep, I'm not moving forward. I did everything but put casemates on this thing. Now I got to drop more weight. All right, now we are three tons overweight. Okay. Drop it to 20. That did not help at all. Do we go glass cannon? I think we go glass cannon. I think we're going glass cannon on this design. Eight inch belt. Two inch deck. That's not helping. Let me drop. Drop this pair of eights. Twenty thousand four ninety one, twenty seven thousand four seventy. Oh. Let's drop you guys to ten. Actually, your casemates. Let's drop you to eight. Nineteen ten. Yeah, but they're trying to use this very antiquated law to uh, drop how much they have to pay. Problem is the law is still on the books, so they're not wrong. All right, we're almost there. 27,752. I don't want to drop any more secondaries. Can't drop her speed anymore. Standard quarters, guys, where we need to be. 27,400, 27,470. Okay. All right. Long time chatter in the comments. Kerosene. I would say rainy day, but you're getting a battle cruiser. Kerosene, give me a class name for this ship. Uh, it's still a little crazy looking. Waiting for the better holes. Call it the uh. I can work with that. Whatever theme you pick. Just remember, the class name is what the rest of the ships get their names based off of. So the class name should be the theme. <laughs> yeah, we've already moved past that one.
Come on, you can think of something. Now let me take a Warhammer theme. You're just getting named the class. Go for it. Give me give me the class name. You want to call it the Hammer Sigmar? Every every ship built of this class will have a Sigmarite name. Does the Sigmar class? I will work at that. I'll wait a few minutes for this uh few minutes for like the speech to catch up. So you want to call this the Sigmar or the Hammer Sigmar, and the next one would probably be the Carl Franz. Uh, that's 40k. He, he wants fantasy. Alright. You want straight Sigmar or a uh, hammer of Sigmar? Hammer of Sigmar. There we go. And save. So the next one in the class will be the call friends. You're lucky. I've been playing Warhammer probably longer than you've been alive. <laughs> I knew Warhammer before Warhammer was cool. Too bad Krieg isn't here right now. He'd love this. Rainy day. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you're giving too many memberships out. MGD, welcome to the grunts, Mr. Grilled Cheese. Yeah, okay, I'm still waiting for Kerosene and Mike to get. Right, let's build one of these. Okay, YouTube's starting to piss me off. I got long-time viewers. Kerosene, Mike Gonzalez, people are here for basically every live stream. We've not gotten a free membership. <laughs> new day, new memberships. <laughs> yeah, but YouTube's starting to piss me off with stuff, with stuff like this. Like, Kerosene... Dwarven Forge, I like that. But dwarves are not Sigmarites. 
So it's a hammer Sigmar, so it's got to be a Sigmarite name. So like Carl Franz is a good one. I won't do any Age of Sigmar. I'm going to lay this law down right here. Age of Sigmar, that shit's off the table. Because that is some bullshit what they did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Kerosene's here. Mike is here. And they're... I've, I've seen Mike at least two streams. Kerosene's been around a long time. I don't understand how YouTube hands out the gifted membership sometimes. Because I got regular viewers who have not been gifted... The memberships you're paying for, it just kind of pisses me off. Yeah, I'm gonna e I'm gonna email uh let me write this out. I'm gonna email YouTube about this crap. Boris Toddbringer, yes. All right, we got the new classes of ships. Being built. One of the new battleships. One of the new heavy cruisers. One of the new lights. Five new destroyers. Actually, how long is this battleship going to take me to build? 20 months. The Hammer Sigmar might be the only ship of the class. How much am I... Okay, we're under tonnage. That's actually good. 1910, so actually, let me pump money. This is actually the first time we're under our build tonnage. They'll get handed out. I don't understand why Kerosene and Mike didn't get them, though. Oh, we got to do Go Trek and Felix. We, we have to do Go Trek and Felix. Shit. I would paint it orange. If I if I could change the paint scheme on the ships, I'd do a Go Trek and Felix and paint it straight orange all the way across. Look out, bitches. Here I come. All right. Let's finish this naval invasion now, then get my ships back to port to refit. We're down to a 26% chance. How many ships do they have here? 2 heavy cruisers and one torpedo boat dropped us to a 26% chance, but they're leaving the area. Let's see what happens on the next turn. That would be nice. YouTube is not giving. YouTube is not going to give us the ability to do that. It's owned by Google. Google has all the power, and they don't give up power for nothing. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is actually a fight.
Happy hangovers, Brian. I can't believe the action, the computer actually gave me this fight. So my entire battle fleet's going up a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. Their heavy cruiser is a thousand tons heavier than my heaviest light. And their light cruiser is the same way as my oldest light cruiser. Okay. Let's go sink these things. Well, if we're going to load into the battle map and not find them. I know that's going to happen. One battleship, three heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and five destroyers against a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. Watch them sink my battleship. I guarantee it. Watch them do it. All right. Let's just put everybody into the same division. Battleship should be lead, so let's break him off and then attach everybody else to him. There we go. We only have a trained crew on here because this is actually their first fight. Yeah, it's over for us. Watch. The AI is going to have such plot armor, they're going to sink my entire fleet. And down to X10, so we're near them. Northeast, we're heading that direction. All right, X five, and we don't have them spotted. That's not a good sign. We should have them spotted at this point. Since we're here, I need a thumbnail for this stream anyway, so. Oh, we're firing. Ooh, I think that's my thumbnail shot right there. That's a nice, beautiful view. All right. Whoa. We're engaging them at... Got that to play. Eleven kilometers. Not too bad. Aldolin, thank you for the five gifted memberships. But, uh, I don't know what the hell YouTube's doing. They're not even handing them to people who are in the chat right now. 
All right. Aldolin. Rainy day. Well, I know Kerosene subscribed. Uh, Mike, are you subscribed? Yeah, I need. I I, I gonna. I'm gonna email YouTube about this. This is BS. So, I'm putting out a rule right now. No one's. I as much as I appreciate it, do not buy any more memberships for anybody. Until this is sorted out. Because this is bullshit. Mikey, not a subscriber. Why not? I've seen you on I've seen you in chat a few times. Hit that damn button, doesn't cost you a dime. And they get that one like cruiser with them. God damn it. Yeah, but people who are subscribed should automatically Kerosene, don't tell me you're not subscribed. For as long as you've been hanging around my channel, you should be subscribed. And if you're not, what the hell? I, I figured you were. I just had to ask. Aldalyn, please stop. <laughs> stop. Until I talk to YouTube, please stop. I, I, I fully appreciate it, believe me. I think between you, Sonar Bowl, and Rainy Day, I, th I think everybody, people who haven't watched the channel in a while are fucking members at this point. I mean, er earlier today, we had more members than people watching, so I, I got to talk to YouTube about this. It, this is kind of pissing me off a little bit. Not what your guys are doing, but how YouTube is handling this. And 10 gifted memberships. I, yeah, okay, another rule, don't tell Sonar Bull that's gonna make her jealous and she's gonna to try to outdo him. So yeah, don't tell her that he don't tell her that Adeline did this. <laughs> this is why I only update the members thank you page at the end of the month. get better aim speed this up a little bit I think this will be the last fight of the night coming up on 5 a.m. where I am and the AI wants to end the battle well, of course they do there's no way in hell they're gonna win but are we gonna let them no I want fried frog legs for dinner means everybody fires HE. HE only. I want fried frog legs. I want to see a cook-off. We have not had a cook-off tonight. And 
it's sailing away from us, so I don't think we're gonna need it. Yeah, I would like to say I want some French fries, but French fries are very American and not French at all. <laughs> There's a the heavy cruiser. Wow, she's way out there. Okay, let's go to flank speed. You can pass her by, catch up to the heavy. And just let our guns do their thing if they actually hit. Low fuel and flooding. She'll be an easy target now. I mean, I have a whole line of ships that still has to pass by this light cruiser, so... Uh, if somebody doesn't sink her... Somebody's getting fired. There she goes. And you're on low fuel also. What speed are you making? Oh, we can't tell yet. Not identified. Knots and we're gaining, so she's not moving. Forward. That low, that low fuel, that is such a debuff. about this stream is the lack of fighting that we had because we haven't done any. Basically 10 hours of nothing happening. Which is actually it, it shows you guys how much time sometimes you have to sit here to make a video. Boy, sometimes I don't get a video out because I just run out of time. Oh, uh, no cook off? Come on. Couldn't give me at least one cook off. Yeah, but at least in GTCW, you have a good chance of having a, like, uh, like, I, I try to keep the video shorter than I used to, but, like, uh, actually, good indication, like, the, the two past UAD videos, which were two and a half, three, three hours each, was literally seven to eight hours of gameplay. 
A lot of it was just waiting for the game to load its turns. And the GCW videos. I try to keep them to within an hour. Like, you still, sometimes you get a 40 minute video. Sometimes you get an hour, hour and a half video. It depends on what happens during the game. That's, that's five, six hours of gameplay even before editing. I'm not bitching about it. I mean, I'm doing it because I like it. I mean, I'm going to play these games no matter what. It's just sometimes with these games, you're just like, please kill me. You know, because there's hours of you're just sitting here going, next turn, next turn, next turn. You just want to fucking kill yourself and throw your computer out the window. <laughs> China is attacking the Korean Empire. Yay. So they're going to get stronger. Yeah. China's attacking with almost 3 million men against 32,000. Yeah. If I was controlling China, you'd watch us still lose. But, uh,. <laughs> I think I'm going to end the stream here. It's now 5 a.m. It's actually a little after 5 a.m. So we're going just over 11 hours. Adeline, if you're still here, thank you for the gifted memberships. Rainy day. Thank you for waking up and watching us again. And, uh, Pop it open some more to drink. Air of the dog, baby. Kerosene, Mike Gonzalez. Anybody else still around in chat? Or is uh, everybody else who's watching asleep? Remember, I know you're not watching anymore, but if uh, you come back to watch the end of the stream, thank you for hanging out with me for so long as you did. And uh, tell your wife I'm not sorry that you had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so once again i planned on doing a six hour stream and here i am five hours past that six hour mark <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> Actually, I'm surprised my husky's not banging on the door asking me to walk him. But he's probably still asleep. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to end this one here. So, uh, once again, if you're a new viewer, return view. If you're not yet subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button. If you do, remember, hit that bell icon to alert the next video comes out. Follow the series you've been enjoying. It. Don't forget to drop an AP shell into that like button and HE shell into that comment section. Get the algorithm working in our favor. And I will see you all. At the next episode, stay grumpy. Kerosene, again, plenty of practice if you want to hit that thousand subscriber mark. Oh, something else I forgot to mention. When I hit a thousand subscribers, I will be doing a 24 hour for charity live stream. So if you're interested in seeing, in seeing me do a 24 hour live stream for charity, and we're going to vote on what charity the money goes to before the live stream, hit that subscribe button. Sit down and watch this. Watch me for 24 hours <laughs> if you can. All right. Now I got that all out of the way. I'll see you all at the next episode. Stay grumpy.